Good afternoon and welcome to day three here at the IPA UK Championships at the Cedar Court Hotel here in Bradford where we're going to be bring, bring, bringing you action all the way through today for the conclusion of the Open Amateur and Ladies events. If you were with us yesterday you would have seen Ross Fernie take the title in style uh, against the pro number one Liam Dunster. Delighted to be joined by Scott Anderson. Scott you were in the commentary box a fair bit yesterday. What did you reckon to uh, Ross's performance yesterday? I thought, well I also played him. I thought it was the most focused, he, he broke well, he played well, and I think he deserved the pro title. And he's going to add more, many, many more titles in the future. Yeah, like that. I mean, he's won three titles now in pretty quick succession. You know, in 12, 18 months' time, where could he get to? Well, I think the main one he wants to win is the world title now, and that's the, that's the big aim for him now. He wants to get his legacy sorted, or, you know, generated anyway. He wants to get, he, he needs the big one now, you know. And then add more titles. Yeah, well, he's certainly going the right way about it. And um, so coming up today, we've got the open event, which again has got all the amateurs and the, and the professionals in the mix. And uh, yourself, we're going to be seeing on the stream later on. You're looking forward to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to playing Clint. Um, third time in about six events. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how that one goes. <laughs> Uh, and in the rest of the draw, obviously, Liam Dunster, pro number one, world champ, he's, he's in the draw, he's going to be there or thereabouts by the end. Mark Farnsworth, all the usual suspects, but there has been quite a few big names already being knocked out. Yeah, look, there's a few pros already dropped out, and uh, fair play, it's, amateurs are getting stronger, and that's what, that's what you want, isn't it? So, um, it makes the tour stronger, you know, and it makes the, us pros play even harder, and to improve our game even more. And the first match coming up today, um, one of the legends of the game, former world champ, uh, Gareth Hibbert, who just seems to keep getting better and better and better, up against one of the new pros, one of the rising stars, Charlie Begley. What do you think we can expect in this match? Well, Charlie needs to, um, well, he's a young lad, first year as a pro, and, uh, you know, he, he needs to get breaking well in this game. And uh, Gareth, well, you know what Gareth does, he just gets better and better with age, doesn't he? <laughs> So he's like a fine wine. <laughs> yeah, he certainly is, and uh, just keeps adding silverware. Obviously, won the Champions Cup last year as well, and uh, various other titles, Grand Final, Island Man. He just, uh, like you say, he just seems to keep winning title after title. Yeah, he seems to get. Uh, every time I see him, he seems to get better and better. Like uh, the World Final, for example. I mean, him and Liam, that's probably one of the best finals I've seen in a long, long time. And uh, I'm expecting Gareth to play well again here. Uh, if Chelsea Charlie on paper is the underdog, but we you know we all know how good he is. What's going to be the key to success in this match for him if he's going to uh, turn the tables on Gareth? His break. Like, like, like I said in the comments, it's always about the break at this level. And um, Charlie saying he needs to keep his head and get the break going. What do you think, uh, so, so for people who are just seeing these plays for the first time, maybe just tuning in for the first time, what do you say the, the strengths of these two players are? Gareth is his potting. He just pops off in the shade. And Charlie, um, same again. It's his potting as well. He, you know, he can, he can, whack, he can. What's the word? Uh, can get frame after frame. Mm. And that's what he needs to do here against Gareth. So um, I'm looking forward to this game. Yeah, I think it's a fascinating matchup. It's the experience against against the young hotshot, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. So uh, yeah, an experience against experience this one. So it's, it's going to be a good match to watch. Yeah, it's a great way to get things underway today. Well, we're going to be with you throughout the day. So uh, settle back, enjoy the uh, entertainment we're going to be bringing you, and uh, let's get over to the commentary box and Dan Fairway. This last 64 match between Gareth Hibbert and Charlie Begley. As uh, Kev and Scott alluded to there, this is very much polar opposites in terms of age of our competitors. Charlie, I suspect, but I don't know for certain, is the youngest professional. And I suspect that uh, Gareth is certainly in the top two or three of the oldest. So youth versus experience. Referee for this one, Darren Maidman. Okay, hey Jim, just laying down the ground rules. No kicks, no rabbit punches. And the two players will lag to decide who will break first. That will be Gareth Hibbert to start us off. Two players known for their potting. Two players also 
with very, very strong abilities from the break. Gareth is well known. Charlie, in an interview I did with him at the previous event, told me that his break was the strongest area of his game. So, as long as the table's playing ball, expect to see plenty of dishes in this one. This is, of course, a last 64 match in the Open today. We're just coming to the end of the last 64 stage of the tournament now. Most of the matches are in running. Although we will be showing you Scott Anderson versus Clint Ianson immediately after this match, and that will, I'm sure, be the last match at this stage of the tournament. Gareth is starting us off with the worst possible result then. A foul from the break. A wonderful early opportunity for Charlie Begley. Just going to break apart the red and yellow. And then these reds really should be child's play for the young man. Lovely controlled cannon on the black to start him off. That's a nice settler of a first shot. Charlie, a terrific money match player. This is his first season as a professional. I guarantee you it won't be his last. He's a terrific talent. I think he's going to make waves in this game. victory on the board in this one would certainly make a sizeable splash as Gareth has been in scintillating form for the past certainly half season stretching back to the grand finals in the Isle of Man last year scratch of the head. He is slightly out of position here. The yellow just to the right of the red nearest the left centre pocket. It's a slight cause for concern for Charlie. That would be his ideal ball to get on the black but because that yellow's there he's going to have to leave it quite thin so he wants to be able to see as much of that red as possible just to give himself as much control of the cue ball as possible for that pre for that last shot. Well, I thought he was just going to drop that in dead weight but he played it confidently. He's not quite in perfect position. He's either going to have to clip this in this red into the center and the cue ball is going to be running a little loose. He could take it long. But that also brings the in-off into play. Well, he tried to punch it, but he was never going to be nicely on that red playing it that way. Gareth here, but I'm sure, just shifted his feet onto his toes. Very likely that he'll get a chance at the table, but Charlie's got a double on. In the end, that's a little wild. I believe this is Charlie's first time playing under a 30, se 30 second shot clock, rather. So that in itself won't be helping. Really would make you feel rushed on your shots if you weren't used to it, as Charlie isn't yet. But as he progresses through the tour, it will become something that He will feel more at home playing under.
Gareth, on the other hand, hardly a, hardly a match goes by when he's not on the stream table now. He's been in that good a form. Light work of this clearance. Charlie Begley unable to capitalise on a foul break from Gaz. That would be a disappointment for Charlie and one he's got to put behind him very quickly indeed. Gareth looks pretty relaxed here. Both these players have, I believe, already played a match this morning. Gareth, a 7-5 victor over Aaron Watts. Charlie made short work of David Pollard, winning by seven frames to two. Starting to populate the, the third round draw as well. We've got some, some great matches, matchups in that. Liam Dunster will play Robert Stephen in the first of those. Yet to be, yet to see whether that will be streamed. But um, oh, oh, that break from Charlie Begley. That red looked like it was coming straight back out, but it fell in, and one followed it in to the same pocket. So uh, an opportunity for Charlie to put that previous miss straight out of his mind. It's not the easiest table to come to. The red on the right hand side certainly doesn't pass the yellow. Yellow's probably a slight favourite here. I think you could get onto the one to the left of the black spot. Clip one of these thin into the left centre and try and break out the, the yellow on the right hand side as well. Mm, not convinced about the way he's played that. I think he needs to play that with a fair bit of pace to to get those yellows out. In fact, he's made life worse. He's got another yellow in that big cluster. I think he can just squeeze this yellow in up to the top left. May play it off the red. Oh, that's a nice recovery because that's a, a clean pot. And he does have a an angle now to top into that cluster. He's looking at exactly what's to what he wants to do here, but probably trusting to luck a little bit. Ideally flick that first yellow. Missed the yellow, but he's caught the red full ball, and that is a great shot and a very good result for Charlie. All the yellows go now. He's just going to have to find that one killer positional shot to get nicely on that yellow down the right-hand cushion. I think he might have been trying to get the cue ball through the gap to move it then. <laughs> Hasn't worked and he's running into trouble. Can pop that yellow on the left hand side of the table. But it was very close to the red and he's taken his eye off the pot. Wasn't a great positional shot either. 
he's been stuck in no man's land. So Gareth Hibbert comes to the table and he's eyeing up the skill shot. If he can see that yellow that's right over the pocket, full ball with that red, this is actually quite simple. Just needs to make sure he gets that full ball contact. Decent pace, cue it in. And the red will follow the yellow. But he's, he's had a good long look at it. If he fancied it, he'd be down on that. So clearly, the left hand of those two yellows. That's just causing a problem. Means he can't catch that yellow full ball, can't guarantee the skill shot. He's giving himself an angle to go into it now. Oh, he's punched it round, but the, the red stayed up. And he missed the other red as well, so. Potentially a blessing in disguise that he has missed that one. Because otherwise that yellow that red would have been in no man's land. But he has turned the table over to Charlie. And Charlie, you feel, has to take these out. That is a nice, confident opening shot with the visit. Didn't just dolly it in and hope. Made sure that yellow sprang right out into the centre of the table to make life easier for the next couple of shots. that will make Charlie Begley feel much better. Both players have an opportunity in that frame, but it was Charlie who got himself over the line. They say that the first, first frame is the hardest one to win. Well, we're at one all, so they've both got that one out of the way. Charlie there, well supported by his friends. Very popular young man. Very funny young man. Got a, got a wicked sense of humour as Charlie and a terrible taste in music. If you don't understand that reference, pop over to the IPA Facebook page and uh, watch our latest instalment of Meet the Pros. As Charlie's pre-match music is um, an interesting choice, to say the least. Gareth Hibbert this time with a much better break. Keeps the cue ball on the island. And they have split gloriously. I think his hand is probably going to be forced into yellows here. You can make an argument for either colour set, but opening red's a bit tricky. convinced that cannon on the red was intentional just limited his options with the yellow to the right of the black now will only really go to the bottom left but the other yellow he's left near that bottom right that's a perfect ball to get there there's going to be a couple of Tricky positional shots coming up. This one's the first. Needs to get the right angle on that yellow down the left-hand side. Anything near straight should do him. Now just needs to run this cue ball through off the cushion for the perfect angle to drift that yellow into the bottom right and well perhaps he had to pinch it a little bit to get the angle but either way it's he's taking his eye off the pot there Gaz and Charlie Begley gets an unlikely excursion out in this frame similar problem facing Charlie just that 
red there next to the black. There's half a chance he's on that now to the right centre, but I don't think so. So realistically, he's going to have to leave that till last. Down to the bottom left. He's going to try and get on it now. He's played that with a lot of side. He has got on it just about. It will clip back. Kubel's probably running quite safely into those two reds near the left centre if he did want to take it on. He's going to save it for later. It's not the worst option because it's it's a nice ball to get on the black, so... Just needs to come down table, ideally finish a fraction low on it, so I can stun it in, in what, four or five shots time. But this table has played particularly quickly this weekend, so the more distance the cue ball's going to have to do on that shot, the tougher it becomes to control. I don't think that was his intention, but he's going to have to take that red now because I think he's come a good foot too far there. Fairly certainly would have wanted to take the one in Bork next. The finish is still on for him here, but... Just doesn't look quite as if he's settled into the table yet. Slightly awkward bridging over the yellow. And that shot clock was ticking down. Just wonder whether those beeps got to Charlie slightly. A small hand of apology there because he's got away with that one. Hasn't left Gaz anything easy. I think there is a cutback on the right hand of the three yellows. Yeah, Gaz found it and he use that other yellow to control the cue ball and to knock it out into open play because now it goes but he's not on anything easy here might have to take a double on took on the very tough cut to right centre. You can see why. He's played that as a bit of a shot to nothing. Hasn't left Charlie anything on and he would have had a, a decent chance at his final yellow had that dropped in. But there is a pretty comfortable safety here for Charlie. Once that red to cover the yellow in the centre of the table and it has done perfectly Gaz might be able to see a feather edge of the yellow on the right hand cushion but there's not a huge amount he can do with that from here definitely advantage Charlie at the moment Gaz just slow rolling into the yellow, just essentially, that was all he could do. He just said to Charlie, well, if you're going to take him out, you better take him out. Well, 
Nice shot from Charlie. Just overrunning it again. Would have loved to have been near enough straight behind this red, so he could just drop it in and hold to the corner. Might play this a bit firmer now and come around the angles. And that is very nicely judged indeed. Been a very scrappy frame. Quite a scrappy start to this match, actually. But after three frames, it is Charlie Begley who leads by two frames to one. Good to see the young man smiling. I'm sure he wouldn't have been smiling after that miss pot under the shot clock pressure, but fortunately for him, Gaz let him off the hook. Right behind Charlie there is his dad, Darren. Fantastic player in his own right. Wouldn't be surprised to see him enter the professional ranks at one stage or another. But at the moment, it's... Uh, the younger of the two Begley's doing all the all the damage on the IPA tour. <laughs> Talking of doing damage, if Charlie Begley hits those any harder, he's going to break them. What a split that is. You'll see why he thinks his break's a big asset. That's enormous. headed thinking from Charlie there using his extension if his shot goes well he certainly shouldn't need it for the rest of the frame perhaps he's uh, no, thought he was opting against the plant for a second but the plant is certainly the shot here Played it firmly with the intention of bringing the yellows nicely out into open play. Hasn't come out particularly well. Tricky yellow in the centre of the balk line into the right centre. So he has pushed the yellow to that right hand cushion as well. Surprised at the pace Charlie played that shot. I can see why. It would have afforded nicer position on the next one, but I feel like he could have just dropped that in, taken his medicine and taken the yellow over the right, uh, left centre as his next ball. It's yet another miss pot in this match. Neither of these players has really got going. Tom Barley in the professional event. He put down two or three good early chances against Gaz. And boy, did Gareth Hibbert make him pay. I doubt Charlie Begley would have seen that match, but... Um, I do just wonder if we're going to see a similar thing happen in this one. Guys using all the pocket there. Just 
showing his intention for these last two reds. Going to have to move that one off the cushion. Needs a nice contact here. He's missed the pot. He's taking his eye off it. This is not the Gareth Hibbert we are used to seeing. Steely-eyed missile man normally. Possibly missed more pots in this match than he has all weekend. Clock's ticking down. Charlie using every available millisecond there. But he did get shot away in time. Charlie ideally would leave that yellow over the left centre for last. Tons of re reverse side on that one. Is it enough? No, he's very straight on the middle of the three yellows. If the cue ball were two inches further to the left, he could punch across to the one on the rail. But he might have to leave that till last now. So he needs to screw this back and leave himself an angle to be able to screw back from his last yellow. Back down table for the black. I think that's just okay. I think if he deep screws this, he probably nudges into the black. So he almost needs to punch this off the side cushion. Possibly a bit bottom right. Oh no, he cued it in a dream. Lovely shot from Charlie and he's going to take a 3-1 lead. And in a, a match where both players have had a good chance really in each frame. It is surprising to see Gareth Hibbert put so many down. By no means done and dusted just yet. Gaz is capable of turning his game on at the flick of a switch. But Charlie looking very, very relaxed there. Gaz already up out of his seat, itching to get on with it. Itching to try and put that poor form to bed. Hibbert responding to Charlie Be Begley's last break with a hammer blow of his own. And, uh, looks like Gaz is just speeding up here a little bit. Possibly trying to play himself into some form. Not a fantastic opening shot that, but it does open up that red for later on in the frame. All those yellows are just getting right in Gaz's way for perfect position. And as such, he's decided to let Charlie have a go first. He has left him an opening shot here. That sort of second yellow away from the left middle. He can cut that back in there. Uh, right middle, rather, sorry. But Charlie does have a problem of his own. Actually, he's going to take this right-hand one down to try and cover that bottom right corner pocket. And that is expertly judged. Does 
could stop Gareth winning the frame at this visit, but it certainly makes it more difficult. Gaz now is going to have to find a way to move that red, uh, yellow. Oh, wow, that was wild. That was wild from Gareth Hibbert. And the yellows are a good sight more inviting now. Charlie will spend most of his time from this point on, I suspect, considering the best course of action for the black. Two options, really. One is try to move it. And two is leave it for a double. And that yellow closest to the right centre is perfect to leave it for a double. Just depends how confident Charlie's feeling. Would love to top this one through a, a foot or so. It'd be nice and straight on the yellow in the top half of the table. Nope, that's not his not his plan. Of course the yellow closest to the bottom right as well. He's quite a nice shot to leave for black for a double as well so I s strongly suspect that's still his plan going to have a reasonably big area to get that cue ball in to be nicely on the double in a couple of shots time Needs to screw back anywhere, really past the line of the red, so that he's got a full view of the black. Anywhere between there and really the middle pocket would be good enough. And that's right in the heart of the gap I mentioned. That's just about ideal. little bit of a cut back adds slightly to the difficulty but Charlie should be getting this and he does in off the near jaw but they all count Charlie Begley opens up a 4-1 lead in a race to seven over Gareth Hibbert and with Charlie to break next as well things are looking very rosy for him at the moment It only takes one shot to turn a match around sometimes. And Gareth won't be too perturbed just yet. He will have come back from situations like this in his past. Plenty of them, I'm sure. Frame six, Charlie Begley hasn't quite got that break working as well as the previous one. And he'll be very relieved to see that cue ball cannon away from the top left pocket. It's a good half chance from this split though. If not slightly better than that. There is some traffic on the table, whichever way he goes. Really only one problem, red. And that's the one that's almost sat on the black spot. That's going to take a very delicate positional shot to get nicely on that one. Charlie 
screwing around the angles. Where have I done that one a, a touch? A little bit of adrenaline in the Q arm. And the opportunity is still there for him. Not fatal just yet. Kind of the polar opposite with that one. He's uh, not come far enough. So now he's looking to top this red through long into the bottom left. think he's got his cue quite through that. Would have wanted to be a lot straighter on this red. There is some real travelling for the cue ball to do now from here. And he's missed the pot. He didn't get the position either. He's always chasing that finish, Charlie. It was all about that red on the black spot. He just he overhit his very first shot and he never recovered from it. And now Gareth Hibbert has a great chance to gain a real foothold in this match once again. Yellow on the cushion. I might see a change of plan here now from Gaz. It's going to be difficult to screw out from that one. Got to get that cue ball down into the bottom left quarter of the table from here. Lots and lots. The screw, a little bit of right hand side. Cued it in nicely. Where's the cue ball? Oh, just off the jaw. A touch of fortune for the godfather. That was mighty close to the centre pocket. he got the cue ball far enough here? Is he on this black? Used his extension straight away, so no, he isn't. Is he going to play this with a swerve? He is. Not really an easy double on. Not really an easy kick off the rail, so the swerve is probably his best option. He's got to get some late movement into this cue ball, get it round that red. Oh, miscue. Big miscue. Perhaps tried to do just a little too much. And the cue ball slides off Gareth, tib Gareth Hibbert's tip. And leaves Charlie Begley a wonderful chance. To shoot into what would be a an unlikely 5-1 scoreline, you would have said before the match. Charlie won't care, he's just going to get down and pop the balls. The thing is, if you, if you weren't watching this game, if you were just watching the score come in, on Q score, you would think that Charlie Begley was playing out of his skin to be 5-1 up against Gaz. 
and whilst he hasn't played badly by any stretch of the imagination, he hasn't played anything like the level that he knows he can. Gareth Hibbert is having a very rare off day here. Charlie Begley is the <laughs> willing beneficiary of that. Just wonder if there's a little bit of tension starting to creep in there for Charlie. This would be a big win for him. Would be a big result. He knows he came into this game as the underdog. Not a massive underdog, but an underdog. It would be a big scalp for Charlie. My eyes deceived me for a second. That's a dry break. I'm stunned. It, it, Gaz hit those so well. I was sure something had dropped. But no. Charlie comes to the table. Couple of balls hanging over the pockets. Yellow's the likely shot. Yellow as it is. I thought he might have taken the tricky rope there. The yellow just below the ball glided into the right centre. Would have got him nicely onto that one in the balk area early on. And then he could have worked his way quite comfortably down the table. Now he's got to go back down and back up. That is a very nice shot. Much better than it looked. Because now he's cleared an opening for the black. That makes the finish considerably easier. Charlie just springing to life in this game. Big grimace there from the man they call Beef. Which apparently, if you're wondering, is because of his love for, I think, Beef Hula Hoops. I, I, that's what I've been told. I don't know how true that is. I sort of hope it is. Charlie would have liked to have been either straighter or had a bit more angle on this yellow to the right centre. Uses extension, so needs to hurry up. He was just about able to hold the cue ball on the red. Now this is another one of those shots where pace control is important and that isn't something that Charlie's dealt all that well with in this game so far. Oh, that's good. Good but not great. I think he can pinch enough of the pocket just to screw straight back roughly to where he is now. Yeah, he could. Very nicely done. Charlie Begley, looks like we're going to have our first dish of the match as long as this black drops in. And it puts him within one frame of a remarkable scoreline. And a fairly remarkable victory as well. Gareth Hibbert is going to have to win 6-0 from here. And he, as good as Gaz is, you can't see that happening. Certainly not the form he's been in in this match so far. Possibly the worst I've seen him play. Right, let's see if we can get some more scores and, and third round matches, last 32 matches. What have we got to come up? 
Dunster v Stephen, mentioned that one already. Lindsay Davis will be taking on Simon Ward in the last 32. Lindsay, a talented Welsh player up against another talented Welsh player in Simon. Corey Rees through safely to play David Compton. 2020 world champion John McAllister will take on Liam Roberts, a distinctly Welsh feel to the top half of this draw at the moment. As Charlie Begley gets his opportunity to break for the match. Gareth Hibbert may not see the table again yet. Charlie Begley would love to win the match at this visit. It would be a perfect way to win a game. I think the odds on that happening have just <laughs> tumbled somewhat. Awkward, awkward looking table. You look at the reds and think, yeah, okay, they're not too bad, except for that one that's completely alone and completely covered down by the bottom right-hand pocket. And then you look at the yellows and you look at the one near the cue ball, you look at the one on the rail on the opposite side of the table. This is... Yeah, it's a nasty finish. In some ways, I think the ideal start here for Charlie would be to play a skill shot. If he could pop the red and the yellow up to the top right, it would keep his options open. But Charlie's not going to go for the game. I can't blame him. He's turned the table over to Gaz. Said, I can't see a way out here. Can you? Hmm. A little bit of cat and mouse going on here now. <laughs> Neither of these two wants to have a go. You can't blame them. An awful looking table. Have a look down the rest of the scores as Charlie Begley plays a very nice opening shot. It's not come out too badly either. That red still passes to the top right. I thought it was going to go awful, but there is a way out here for Charlie. I think he needs to move that red near the bottom right with this shot. No, no, he's not, he's not taking this on, is he? Doesn't want this in, wants it to cover. Oh, and it has, that's a terrific shot. A terrific shot from Charlie. Now that the colour sets have been decided, Gaz knows what he needs to do. His yellows are in all sorts of trouble. Got one potential opening pot. And actually, that yellow over the top right. If Gaz could play his one on the right side cushion onto that later on in the frame. And play a skill shot up to the top left. There is a, there is a way out here for Gaz. Not easy by any stretch of the imagination. And he may not go for it, but there is there is a route out. Time running out. Gaz has taken that shot. Oh my word, what a pot that is. That is an exceptional pot from Gareth Hibbert. And that makes that route out I was talking about a lot easier, because... No need to play a skill shot on that one to the top left. Now the only question mark that remains is that yellow on the right hand side. Perhaps it didn't go up to the up to the top right to play the plant. If 
fairly certain it doesn't go off the red into the centre pocket. So Gaz is going to have to move that ball. Unless he can get right in behind it. I think it might just pass down the rail. Tough to get the cue ball into good position for that though. But Gareth Hibbert is a master of coming out with improbable finishes and this could well be one of them. Because he has got an angle to move that yellow now. Full ball contact here would be great. If he could leave the cue ball on the cushion, he'd be very happy. Just like that, because I think he can now see... I think he can see enough of the yellow near the pocket. And he's got enough middle pocket with that to the right centre for the other yellow, but perhaps he can't see it. Needs to avoid the reds. Just a natural angle to drift back across for the black. Wiped its feet, but it made it. And Gareth Hibbert keeps himself alive in the match. It's 6-2 now to Charlie Begley. Shouldn't quite be enough to put Charlie into a, a tailspin of any kind just yet, but I do wonder whether Charlie will regret not having a bit more of a go at that frame. Gareth to break next up. So it could be 6-3 before Charlie sees the table again. And if that break is dry, it could be the start of a big shift in the momentum. But uh, it's going to have to be a very big shift as far as Gareth Hibbert's concerned. Dry again from Gareth Hibbert. Got lots of balls moving, but nothing heading towards a pocket. Charlie with a second bite at the cherry in terms of getting over the line in this match. Again, it's an awkward one. It always is when you're trying to get over the line. is an opportunity here on yellows. It's quite similar to the frame we had a couple of frames ago where there's that one ball that he needs to get onto and it's the one right in the middle of the table. There might just about be a window. If he can get nice and straight on the one closest to the left centre, top centre from this angle. If he could stun that in, he might be able to find the gap between those two reds. With the pace of this table, that is a vanishingly thin area he's got to get it into. Arguably this next shot will determine whether he's got the chance to do that or not. Got to be reasonably straight on that yellow nearest the left centre oh that's nowhere near and neither is the pot and Gareth Hibbert comes to the table once again to try and save his tournament
fairly sure that Gaz was trying to cover that pocket. He has succeeded, just about. Uh, that red did look perilously close to dropping in. Only problem here for Gaz is he's left quite an easy skill shot for Charlie. Just needs that perfect contact between red and yellow. And the, the yellow will follow in. That's the one. Charlie just pointing the tip of his cue. The angle he wants on his penultimate ball. Tricky to control these coming round out of the out of the corner pocket. But that nice little bounce off the cushion means it's enough. He can probably just pull the cue ball back an inch or two. Leave himself on the final yellow. Choosing the longer, harder pot first, and that is confidently done. A right shot from Charlie Begley. And surely now... He is going to book his place in the last 32 of the IPA UK Open Championship. Very, very well played from Charlie Begley. Gareth Hibbert well below par by his high standards. And Charlie was there to capitalise. Not his absolute best, but... Certainly good enough to beat Gaz this morning, this afternoon rather. And he will be delighted to get past such a tough and seasoned opponent. This time it's youth that wins out over experience as a very smiley Charlie Begley strides off to the interview area. And uh, that is where he will be joined by Kev Barton. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks for lockdown. Uh, I'm delighted to be joined by Charlie Begley. A uh, big win there against uh, Gareth Hibbert. Charlie, tell us about that. Oh, Fantastic well, performance. Yeah, it's a, it's a good feeling beating Gareth. Obviously, Gareth's a great player. Um, he's one of the best in the world. So to beat him, not only beat him, but beat him on the stream in front of loads of people is brilliant. It's a good, good feeling. So talk us through the match. Um, I mean, Gareth did, he did miss one or two. Yeah, he, he did. Probably didn't expect, yeah. but at the end of the day, he's still going to take the chances. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You're playing in the arena that you know you, you've probably not played in yeah. that many times yeah, being right, a new yeah. pro. Yeah. So, um, I think the first four frames, I had I had the best chances. Uh, well, I had most of the game. I had the best chances anyway. But the first four frames, I had some unbelievable chances, and I missed a couple. But then he missed a couple back, and I thought, I've, surely I've, I've got to have him here. And then I started to hit the break well, and I dished a couple. I think he went dry, and I dished. And then uh, I broke dish, and I had a couple of dishes in a row, and got a quite healthy lead, and which really did settle me because obviously a man of Gareth's calibre can come back from anywhere. So yeah, it was it's a great feeling beating Gaz on that table. It really is. Obviously, never played on that table either. Um, it is quick, but I've, I know if I cue the ball well, I can get the white on a string, and it, it did play really nicely. So obviously, glad to get the win as well. Yeah. Yeah. So coming into the arena for the first time, it can either make you a break. Yeah. Or <laughs> yeah that's uh, right. Obviously, yeah. we know it, what which way it went for you. Yeah. It was how? how, how Quickly, did you feel at ease and getting used to the shot clock um, and, and, and the conditions? Yeah, I was good. I'm quite a fast player anyway, so I don't really. The shot clock wasn't really. If anyway, it sort of helped me out because he's got to speed up as well. He's sort of got to play at the same pace. Um, on an outside table, it could have been a different story, but I did. I enjoyed the shot clock. It obviously put a bit bit more pressure on, but I was queuing, I felt like I was queuing well, so it, it didn't really put too much pressure on me too much. Uh, and when you were sort of clearing up the last two or three balls, um, what was the thoughts uh, going through your mind? Just, just make sure. It's obviously the skill shot I had to play was quite a simple skill shot. I get it most of the time, especially on that table, because if you hit the ball nicely, it's, it's going to. It was definitely going to follow through. Um, so yeah, just as soon as I played the skill shot, I thought this is your, this is my chance now. I've got to take it. 
and I, pl I played this shot over the old quite controlled, left myself an option of two. Um, I was happy to take the ball that I did play at the top because that would just made everything a lot easier. Once that went in, I thought that that's it, just don't leave yourself hampered on the last black, that's the last thing I wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah, great finish. And um, so uh, you, you are a new prom this year, yeah, and it's, right, yeah. uh, being new, it's always difficult. You're always yeah. going to get one of the big names. Yeah, that's in, right. Yeah. Early on. So, um, what what are your sort of expectations coming into this um, year? I, uh, generally, it's just to enjoy myself. I like I like I love the IPA coming to the IPA weekends. Obviously, we've got five or six lads from Swindon who come here as well. So I always enjoy the IPA. I said to myself, I was just dying because I've got my sponsors. I'll get my mic out of the way so they can they can <laughs> see it. Um, Obviously, they paid a lot of money for me to get on the tour, um, so it is good to get on the stream and get their get their badge shown as well, their logo shown. Um, I've had a, I've had the first the first pro game I played. I played Steve Thompson. He beat me eight 0 I thought it was going to be a long year, and then we played. We, I drew him again, and he beat me eight seven. He broke the, the decider. Um, but I obviously shown now I can hold my own with the pros. He's one of the guys, one of the top pros, and I've obviously shown now I can I can definitely hold my own with them. So hopefully, I can go on and. Just keep winning. Yeah, yeah. Do you know you've got next? Are you, are you a draw um, watcher? I am. I kind yeah. of am. Yeah. I've well, finally, win. somebody who admits to yeah. the two. I well, I just, I just <laughs> like to look. Uh, I had a winner, Mark Pickworth and Scott Pope. So I don't know who won that game, but that was six five last time I looked. Was to it? A Scott. Was it? Uh, so yeah, I've got the winner of that. Been yeah. that last, in this frame. So yeah, absolutely fantastic form. So thoughts on on the year and the uh, you know, does this. Does this victory? Does it act as a launch pad? You know, does that um, set you up now? Is it hopefully, you? yeah. Hopefully. It, sends a little message as well to show I can compete with the top pros um, obviously Gaz like I said a few times he's one of the best in the world like he's he's just an unbelievable player and to, to beat him is, is brilliant um, and hopefully I can kick on now um, get a few more wins under my belt in a professional event I do want a deep run in a professional event because first away if you if you break in well you can beat anyone so that's that's the break is so big in this sort of level so if I'm breaking well which I have been I can feel like I can beat anyone. So. Yeah. And enjoying the conditions and the atmosphere. Yes, it was of, of good. The yeah, the, the, the stream table played lovely and just even the carpet surroundings. It's good to be on the stream, yeah. everyone watching you. It is a good feeling. It's a, it's a very good setup. Hopefully, the phone might have gone a little bit mental then in, yeah, in the last Yeah, it might too. Yeah, it's switched off. I might keep it off. <laughs> <laughs> well, well played, Charlie. Cheers, uh, mate. Great victory. Thank you very and much. Good luck for the rest of the tournament. Cheers, mate. Thank you, Kev. Nice. So, Charlie Begley, a yeah, big win there against uh, Gareth Hibbert, former world champion. And. Um, yeah, how far can he go in this tournament? Well, uh, we're just going to have a, a little chat with um, one of the pro players, another new pro on the tour this year. Sadly been beaten, but um, had a great weekend. Wade Morley, Wade, loving the top, by the way. Um, just a word on Charlie there and that victory over Gareth. That's a big win. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, Charlie's uh, another new pro, up and coming. He's improved a lot over the past couple of years. Um, I'm not shocked. He's won. You know, mm. he's been in he's been in good form the last few weeks, playing in local competitions and stuff. So, you know, happy for him. You know, I'm happy for any of the new pros that are coming up and beating the big boys. Because it's always hard, isn't it, for the new pros? Because you are going to get one of the big names in either your first or second match. So it's it's always difficult to get any any run going in the first year. Yeah, I mean, um, when you go through the amateurs like me and Charlie did last year, so you go from being in I don't know the top 10, 15 amateurs to being at the bottom of the pros. Mm. So you're not, you're, you know, you're not expecting anything. So I had a chat with Charlie yesterday, and we both pretty much want the same thing from this season. Mm. Just get used to playing with the top boys. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you yourself, you had a good win against uh, one of the top boys, Craig Marsh. Good win yesterday. Pleased with that? Yeah. Well, I went five one up against him, and he and then he brought it back and went six five up, and then went to a decider. So yeah, that was a good win. Obviously, I also beat JJ Fall in the first round, yeah, and then Luke Sanjay's well. in the last sixteen. So really yeah, yeah. good run. Um, I set, I set myself a little target before the season just mm. to get a last 16 mm. um, and obviously the second tour have um, done better than I expected so I'm happy. Yeah I mean those three players that you've said there, I mean Will JJ we all know uh, his rise to form over the past um, sort of three four months, world championship semi-finalist, Luke Sanji's one of the um, hot shots, very very good play, got to the final of the um, pro event I think or the open yeah, event. Um, uh, the first one. Yeah, um, I think he just lost in the odd frame to Gazi, but I think... I think so, I can't remember. Isla Manica, yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's been uh, for a long six months. Um, <laughs> yeah. But a great play nonetheless, so th those victories must give you confidence to know that you are at this level. Yeah, you know, I take a lot of confidence out of this weekend. Um, I felt comfortable playing them. Mm. I thought I'd feel really nervous, but I just genuinely felt like I was... Um, like last season, when I was coming through the amateurs. So, like I say... I, feeling comfortable I know I've done the right thing by taking my pro status you know see what happens this year and mm. hopefully there's more things to come
Okay, your nickname is The Blade. You want to tell us where that comes from, where that originates? Uh, so, obviously, I grew up with Craig Lakin, and uh, when I was 14, 15, he used to call me Wade The Blade, right. just because it rhymes and it's just stuck, so I've kept with it. Very good, very good. Well, uh, Wade, thanks a lot. Glad you've enjoyed the weekend, no and uh, thanks for your time here. No problem, and, thank uh, you, And no doubt we'll catch up uh, at some point again in no the future. So, thanks a lot, Wade. Uh, now, our next match is going to feature the pro number two ranked player, Clint Ianson. And uh, he's, as we know, over the last few months, he has been in some sparkling form. And he is up against another of the new professionals, Scott Pigeon Anderson. What can he do? Can he upset the apple cart again, just as Charlie did against Gazi? But only, win, only one way to find out. Over to you, Dan. Cheers, Kev. Thank you very much. Scott Anderson, Clint Ianson. As Kev said, another new professional looking to upset one of the established in Clint. We have seen a big upset in the previous game. Are we going to see another one here? Two players sharing a laugh and a joke before the start of this match. Our referee for this one there, the man in black, Rick Lloyd. And I'm sure be making all the correct calls. This isn't Scott's first taste of the stream table here on the IPA. Was involved in a pretty spectacular amateur final last year in the Isle of Man. Beaten by the odd frame by Michael Tomlinson. Clint Ianson will get us underway in frame number one. And uh, fresh from the interview area <laughs> comes into the commentary box Wade Morley. I've got some company for a change. It's quite nice today. Good afternoon, Dan. How are we doing? Yeah. Pretty good. Good first game. Did you did you see any of it? or uh, Charlie's game? Yeah. Yeah, I was sat watching it. Um, do you know what? Charlie's been playing very, very well of, as of late. It's not. I'm not shocked to see the result, to be honest. No, I, I'm not shocked to see Charlie win. I think, but firstly, when you get to this level, anyone can beat anyone. We we all know that. Um, I think what I was shocked by was Gaz's performance. He yeah, Gaz wasn't his usual self, was he? No, he was poor, um, and you can't say that very often about Gareth Hibbert. But uh, do you foresee another shock here? Because it would be a shock to see Scott beat beat Clint, wouldn't it? A little bit. Uh, li yeah, a little bit, but again, Scott is in very, very good form. You know, he had a um, good first tour event. Yeah, I was just saying as well that unlike um, Charlie in our previous game, Scott has had experience playing under the shot clock before because he uh, made the amateur final last year in the Isle of Man. Yes, he did, yeah. So this won't be a new experience to him, unlike Charlie. Charlie got caught out certainly once in a big way by the shot clock um, and nearly got caught out a couple of other times. I just wonder whether that experience from last season might give Scott a bit more confidence playing under these conditions. Yeah, as well, um, I've watched a lot of Scott play and he plays quite quick anyway. So I don't think the shot clock will actually, you know, I don't think it will change his game at all. No, I think it's just those moments where you're not quite in perfect position, isn't it? Where you've got to work out your pattern, that's when you need it. Yeah, I mean, they've got the extension as well, haven't they? So can use that yep one thirty second extension per frame Clint's been playing well as well into this weekend yeah he has I, uh, I was in commentary with Luke Sanders yesterday and he suggested that he reckoned Clint was going to win one of them this weekend right well I watched his game um, was it yesterday morning against Snakey Steve Thompson yep <laughs> he won 8-0 and uh, 
Snake has had three dry breaks and got kicked in off on one of them. Oh, that, that was it. <laughs> this is a horrible game at times. <laughs> now, this is the last of the last 64 matches. Dr. Anderson versus Clint Anderson. How have you done this weekend, Dan? Any good? Let's let's not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to be fair, I came <laughs> I came into this tournament with an injury. Um, I hurt my back a couple of weeks ago, and then after putting up lights, my back still hurt. <laughs> um, it has it has recovered reasonably now, but when you get down on a long, you know, you've got a reach or bridge over anything, it's really painful. So you need to be comfortable in pool, don't you? Especially with back injuries. Yeah. Yeah, it's hurt my chances, but then my ability hurts my chances as well. So, <laughs> so Scott breaking off in the second frame. Yeah, Clint with the break. Breaking dish in frame number one. Oh, oh that, yeah. Mm. It's a little bit unlucky, that yellow popping in there, isn't it? Covering that red. Yeah, I think it'll just force them into playing the yellows, which aren't too bad themselves. No, just a... A little bit of a tricky opener. That one's quite close to the rail. I don't know whether it's um, the players or something, but I have noticed this weekend, um, when you're trying to pump them into the down the rails on these stream tables, they have been spitting out a little bit more often than usual. Yeah. Has, th has this table recently been re-cloughed as yeah, well? Yeah, has, yeah. They, they've been rolling in very nicely. Um, Possibly a little bit too nicely at times, but yeah. <laughs> but um, where where, players have, where players have tried to punch them in, I have noticed two or three that you sort of think probably would drop have spat back out. So that was a nice shot from Scott. Who's missed that? That one was not though. <laughs> so, but he has pushed that yellow on front of that red pretty sure that Clint will probably try and go into this early on. Yeah, I thought he would. I sort of expected him to go up table first and use the one over the pocket to break that out. Yeah. But leave the one he's just potted and the one that it looks like he's about to pot, so he's got some insurance. But um, I think he might screw across to the, um, you see, you know the middle bag where the yellow is? Yeah. And try and leave himself an angle to go into it there. And then he's got the insurance of the red over the top right. Because the black pretty much only goes in this bottom left corner, doesn't it? As we look at the two, uh, right yeah. bottom right as we look now, yeah. Yeah, it certainly looks that way. Bottom right, or I suppose at worst top left. But um, the fact that he's taking this one out now, he's not going to be playing into the top, top left, left, is he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's gone the opposite way as onto the. I don't know about this. I mean, you're right. He's he's using. He's leaving the one nearest the bulk line as sort of his insurance ball. But he's over screwed it, hasn't he, by a couple of foot. Yeah. These tables are so reactive this weekend, they're playing absolutely beautiful though. Yeah, I mean but rapid. And it's caught a few people out already. Yeah. I um in the last sixteen of the pro late yesterday played Luke Sanji's. He's cut a black in. <laughs> and the whites just rolled and rolled and rolled. And literally, probably an extra four foot than it usually would. Yeah, mental. Yeah. Now, Clint didn't break out that red as he wanted, but he has left it on as a double. Straight and up. No. I've seen that a lot as well. I've seen a lot of players missing doubles on this table this weekend. I've not actually played on the stream table, that, but I've played on the outside tables, which have also been re -cloughed. And uh, because you try and judge the slidiness of the new cloth, yeah. you kind of underdo it. Yeah, uh, that's exactly what I've seen, actually. I've seen a lot of players underdo it. Do, yeah. you, do you think there might be sort of a, a difference, maybe with the roll of cloth we've used this time, where it doesn't slide as much as we used to on a new cloth? Yeah, yeah. I. Um, so even like little shots like this, he's going to cut the yellow into the bottom right corner, and these are coming off a little bit different as well. Yeah, it's just... I, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't be missing that, though, really. No. But yeah, you are right. It's not um, a new cloth. Always plays that little bit slidier and that little bit more reactive. And we've got that reactivity, but I haven't seen that slide that we no. used to. So. 
Uh, Clint's left this a little bit thin. Again, this is just a pace shot. That's on the side cushion, that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he, he's on the black, but that has run and run and run, hasn't it? And that's exactly what I was just saying to you yesterday about Sanji's. Saying that, he needed that to run, because if that ha hadn't run like that, I don't think he'd be on this black. That yellow's tight. Yes. He maybe caught it a bit thicker than he expected. That's a lovely shot. It's been a scrappy second frame. And it's Clint Ianson who falls over the line in it. He leads by two frames to nil. He's got Anderson still waiting to get off the mark. But he did have the chance in that frame. And he'll be disappointed he put it down. Because actually he had a couple. Really. He had a couple of chances there, yeah. And I didn't expect him to miss the second one. The first one was a little bit tricky. Yeah. But that, you know, that missed to the bottom right corner. I didn't that expect him to miss that. that yeah. cool. I think he was just perhaps overthinking the cue ball on that one trying to get positioned maybe again not use the table yeah i mean you, you can you can try and play them a little bit thick because you're scared of how quick the table is yeah so you don't want to go thin and go too far up yeah so try and play it into the left hand side of the pocket just yeah well, clint to break in the third frame i love clint's break yeah what's his key is he, has he got a carbon break it's here? a carbon fiber one yeah unusual um, isn't it you don't see a lot of them no but i love the way he, he hammers them doesn't he oh yeah he has like a, a different stance when he when he addresses the table for his break. I've never seen anybody else do that either. Yeah, that carbon key. I had a carbon key once. I used it for one frame and then sent it back. It sounded <laughs> awful. Clint's though is going to sound like a gunshot. It's dry, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> You've been picking him up, Wade. That's. That's just the standard commentator's Absolutely. curse. Absolutely, yep, there we go. We had to get the big book of cliches out at some point and commentator's <laughs> curse. You've, uh, you've opened the door. He's left a little bit of a tricky table here though, Dan. Yeah, that that cluster up Is it a free top. Can he plant it? I think he can plant the uh, plant the yellow off the red. Yeah, there we go. Actually, great chance now. Yeah, I didn't I didn't think it was a plant from here. Yeah, it's a clever a opening chance. shot, isn't it? Because in There's that one shot, what looked up. like a horrible table is now very gettable. Yeah, if he takes the right order here, I can't see him missing them. It's all about your route from here, I think, Dan. He's tried to come. Yeah, he's, he's not played the pot there because of where he's put the white. But I I'm very shocked at that. I'm just looking at the two yellows um, nearest the right centre and wondering if they actually plant nicely. If you, I think he's got to play that quite thin, and if he dropped it in, he'd be pushing the yellow to the side cushion. So maybe he's just thought, do you know what? I'm going to have a massive amount of control in this frame if I play this shot. To be honest, yeah. I agree, but I think I'd have still been going for them, because you yeah. might not get a better chance a than that. Absolutely. I, I'm of the opinion, certainly it's different for you because you're at that level, but if I get drawn against a Clint, a Gareth, I'm going for near enough everything. Unless I can guarantee they're not going to take it out, yep. I'm taking it on because I know that I'm not going to get that many chances. Well, it's interesting you say that because I dare say that last year in the amateurs, when Scott was in the amateurs, if he was playing another amateur player, he would have possibly gone for them. Yeah. And again, it, that shows that the plant didn't go unless... So he's played it that intentionally. Um, I just wonder whether he's left this double on for Clint. Very tight to the cushion, but it's a big pocket. It's just so whether he can get through to it, isn't it? Looks like he can. No. He's just tried to bring it off the cushion into a potable oh. position, but I don't think he has, has he? No, and I think he's left, yeah, he has. He's left Scott on the yellow as well. I think he was trying to cover that yellow as well with that yep. shot. Yeah, slides that one in. He's got another chance here. He has. This is... If he's not on that one in the middle, this is very awkward queuing. He's going to have to... Might have to get the step ladder out for this one. He's not the tallest, <laughs> he's not lad, the tallest lad, is he? He's having a good look at it. He, he had to play with a bit of side, didn't he? Yeah, trace the side just to push it out. And again, he's, he's 
nowhere for position. I think he's okay here. I think he'll take the one over the top right corner as we look and just drift out. You know, if he plays the line just past the red on the top cushion. Yeah. Just got to mind the reds. If he hits it too thick, he might hit one. If he hits it too thin, he might hit one. That's lovely. Yeah. That's sort of Goldilocks, that one. He is a little bit short, though. Well, we just said that about the stepladder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice That's, shot. Yeah, very, that is, very good. Well, that is quality. Now he's in prime position. Yeah, lovely angle just to play it dead weight and drop it through for the black into the middle. He'll feel a lot more in the match when this black drops in. Yeah, when you're playing against some top boys, it's always nice to get that first one on the board. And that is exactly what Scott Anderson has done. He halves the deficit to just the one frame. And it's Scott to break next. It is Scott to break next. And his first break was actually pretty good. Um, arguably should have done better with the chance he gave himself. As I mentioned earlier, this is the last match in the last 64. It's uh, last 32. It's just got underway. And there are still a few matches to be completed in this round. After this frame, we'll get you some live scores. See if there's any shocks, any thrills and spills. It's got full on down the middle. Caught hold of those really nicely. And he throws his arms up in disgust <laughs> because none of them have gone in. Yeah, that was unlucky. That was a hit them really well. And these reds are all there for Klimt. Yeah. Yeah, it was one of those where, you know, you look at it and you think, how how have I not made a ball? You see you see players do that a lot, don't you, where they, to be honest, it's not the best break, but they sort of throw their arms up and, oh, yeah, how's nothing <coughs> dropped there? But that one really was a very good contact. It's usually the ones when people, you know, hit the rubbish and yeah, then yeah. they get a couple of balls. Yeah, that's why my break is terrible. <laughs> I don't think he wanted to flick that there. I think he tried to miss it. No, he didn't. And Cause now you is. see he's coming away from his work. Yeah, I think he's going to be forced into taking this one in the right centre as well, which means when he does come back to that one, because talking about the, you know, the balls down the rail spitting out a little bit earlier on. He's going to I have think to really he might play the that. one in the top left corner um, and nudge the yellow out the way so the black goes into the same bag. Yeah. And then he'll be on the one to the right middle as well. Yeah, there we go. He's still going to have to play that one with a fair bit of pace, though, to get out of it. That one on the rail. At some point, whenever he plays it, unless I suppose he's got the one in the middle where he could just drop it in. I think he'll drop this one into the middle now and then possibly play the one in um, the red into the top right corner and drop on to the one on the side rail. Ooh, That's this in. is close. That's this in. is close. Wow, that is harsh. Do you not think? Mm. I think I think when you find it from that angle, you'd never take a pot on from that angle. No, it is, but I mean, I don't want to criticise Clint at all. Oh no, go for it. If he's taking that line, make sure you're away from the middle bug. Yeah, fair enough. But yeah, I do I do often think when you see them going from that sort of angle, you know, you're never ever taking a pot in from there. No, but that's why I said I'd have dropped it in and then played the one to the top right corner. Yeah, but you know, well, who am I? Best. <laughs> Clint, Wade is available for coaching, <laughs> if you're watching this back. <laughs> Great chance for Scott. Didn't want to be yeah, he's just landed a little bit one. straight there, though. I think he'll be okay. He wants to get past that yellow. Yeah, that's lovely. I actually really enjoy watching Scott. You know, he flows around the table. He's got a nice temperament. Nice guy as well. Yeah, he's lovely. Yeah. Very chatty. Actually, one of the uh, when when we did the uh, the meet the pros, 
when Scott did his. One of uh, the better ones. Yeah, <laughs> but, but a lot of people um, named him and you, actually, as the nicest pro. So what? there were quite a few that said you, quite a few <laughs> that said Scott. Um, well, you know, that, you know me, Dan. I enjoy playing you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the nicest because it's a nice draw. <laughs> you know me, I speak to everybody. You know, yeah, I'm always absolutely. around the arena table chatting away. It's the way to be. Yeah. Is that from Marshy? I don't think Marshy's too happy with me this weekend. Oh, really? <laughs> what have you done? You got a big bit of bad luck in the decider against me yesterday. And then I uh, used the Snapchat filter and took a photo of him on the oh, board. I saw outside. that. <laughs> <laughs> you know the oh, one with the... Scott oh, Anderson. Scott. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. But <laughs> Sorry. He shouldn't be missing that black. He, he overran the previous one, didn't he? He wanted to be able to come To drift up, up the table, table yeah. yeah. Um, but Clint would be rubbing his hands together there. Absolutely. And he's left a nice angle just to drift onto the side rail there, yeah. Yeah. And he doesn't really have to do too much with this. No, see, this is one what you was on about earlier about when you punch them. But the way Clint strokes the ball, he won't hit this hard at all. No. And it'll just come up free foot. How soft is it that, you know? A lot of players would have probably tried to punch that. Yeah, not, not Clint. Including me. <laughs> <laughs> Have you not got that cue action? Mm, I might have miscued it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did see your Snapchat filter of Marshy, though. Yeah, it was funny. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it made me laugh. But anyway, Clint Ianson takes that frame to go 3-1 up. And it's Clint to break next. Again, it's just... What results have we got going around? It's another big missed opportunity for Scott. That. And this is perhaps, you know... The difference between the previous match and this one, you know, new pro versus experienced pro, yeah, is that Charlie was taking out those second bites at the cherry he got. You don't get many of them, but you have to take them. Scott yes. hasn't taken his yet. Kevin Kirkman is 5-4 up against Luke Sanjis. Richard Swaffield against Rob Hilliard is 5-5. Five five. Dunster's 3-0 up against Robert Stephen. Another good player, Robert. Another new pro. Absolutely amazing. Very yeah, impressed with him. I, I said on comms yesterday, actually, um, I think if there's going to be one new pro, I don't take this personally, but if there's going to be one new pro that wins a tournament or goes really, really deep this season, it'll be Robert. Yeah, I, I agree. I um, remember seeing him for the first time last season and I said to a few of the lads, I said, he's something special. Him. Yeah. He's top 10 pro. Standard. Yeah, he blew people away at the champion, the first Champions Cup we did. He blew people away, and no one quite knew what to expect from him. I don't want to speak about the Champions Cup. Ah, oh, fair enough. I don't like well, that. Well, I'm going. <laughs> you can. <laughs> I'll go to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he was he was so impressive in that. Um, he had a really good run in the first event, and he took out a lot of big scalps. And even though it's only a race to four, you could just tell he had it. Yeah. What are your um, ambitions for the season? Do you? I've done it. I've done what I wanted to do. I just wanted to get a last 16 in the pro event. Oh, fair enough. Um, Have you, yeah. Are you going to upgrade those ambitions now that you've made your... You know, you've still got three tours to go. Are you now yeah, thinking, well, actually, I mean, maybe a quarter? Uh, well, I lost in the quarters. This, oh, uh, okay, this one, semi so. Let's say semi. I'll go for a semi then yeah, for you. Yeah, of course you, you do. <laughs> just for you, being so you that. said. I mean, it's hard for us new pros this season because in the draw, you play a prelim match and then you drop onto a top 16, yeah. and then obviously it doesn't get any easier then anyway. Well, that is a very deft shot from Scott Anderson. Looks like, oh, a bit lucky there. He That's does look like he's put that previous frame out of his mind straight away, but not easy to get on the black from here. And I wonder whether that previous missed black, which was quite similar to this, in the last frame will be weighing heavy on the Scotsman's mind. Oh dear. Oh dear. It was a tough shot, make no mistake, but... One that I expected him to get. You've got to be taking those at this level and that's two in a row. Yeah. Um, Again, it, last season, if he's playing against an amateur, he, 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 get, he gets that nine out of yeah. ten, maybe ten out of ten. Yeah, it's the pressure. It's just the pressure of playing these top boys. 
and that's what I'm using this season for to get used to playing the top, you know, at the top level. I mean, I suppose that's the same for all the no pros, really, isn't it? You know, you are you're finding your feet at this level. Yeah, I mean, Charlie seems to have found us. <laughs> well, absolutely, and, and and Robert and yourself, to be honest, like you say, that run to the quarters that was exceptional. Yeah, I mean, I played JJ in the first round. Marshy World in the second. World champion, semi-finalist. World champion. Yeah, and then Sanji's in the last 16. You know, he's always running deep, isn't he? Yeah, Sanji's is one of those. That Cause it's frustrating. No he needs to win one, doesn't he? Yeah, so? he does. And I think when he does, then you'll start to see more of him. Yeah, floodgates might open a little bit. Well, <laughs> Scott's mm, it gone was for going. a wild lash. And that black looked like it was running close at one stage. And... Uh, as soon as the cue ball stops spinning, Clint Hansen can get on with his visit. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is going to very quickly be 4 1 done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you, you start to feel like the writing's on the wall for Scott now because it, he's missed. He's two had two chances. Very yeah, good yeah chances he could have been like free to up here. Yeah. He, he could even be better than that, to be honest, because even in the second frame, he had a decent. Uh, certainly a half chance yeah I mean he had half chance in the second frame and he's missed two blacks so no, he could could have been talking about possibly 5-0 yep <laughs> but in hindsight you know Paul it's a strange game he's just uh, I think the, the problem Scott's had is he's been a little bit careless on his shots to get on the black Two shots before the black, that's when he's made Poss a bit yeah. of a hash of it. So his route of getting to the black, he could have gone a little... Yeah, exactly. I get what you're saying. Clint anyway. won't care. <laughs> Clint's just going to mop up. Mr. Consistent, isn't he, Clint? Oh, yeah. Scary how consistent he is. He's, he's just too good at times, isn't he? Clint Ianson. Yeah, who beat him in the pro? That's a good question. Um, <laughs> I'll have to look it up. <laughs> say that I think I commentated on it which is um, embarrassing I did it was Gav Robinson in the last 16 and Gav um, was oh a bit yeah, of a yeah, machine in that match yeah I watched it actually so I don't know why I asked but it wasn't Clint's best to be fair yeah, he missed a few didn't he he did Liam Roberts is four to up against John McAllister that is yeah that would be a I do like the open. I do like seeing the amateurs take on the pros. Yeah. You don't see it in many sports. No. Nope. Um, but I do like that. <coughs> Talking of Luke Sanchez, he's at five all with Kevin Kirkham. Still, unless my uh, my phone hasn't updated yet. John Herridge is four one up against Jake Newlove. That's a good result for John. Yeah, if he can get over the line, it would be. Charlie's two nil down against Scott Pope. Maybe a little bit of the uh, after the Lord Mayor show for Charlie Begley there. Must be difficult to come on. I mean, realistically, the biggest win of his career so far. Yeah. And then go straight back on. On, on the stream as well. Table. Oh, the blacks in. <laughs> He's crunched them as well. A little hop, skip and a jump there from Scott Anderson as he realised the black had flown in. And he sits back down to let Rick Lloyd rack the balls up again. Gives us time to have a little flick through the scores. Robert Stephen trailing Liam Dunster by three frames to nil. And uh, in the all Welsh battle between Lindsay Davis and Simon Ward, they are going toe to toe. That is three apiece. Have you seen Lindsay Davis play? Seen who? Sorry, Lindsay Davis. Uh, second match down. Uh, I've, se I've seen him earlier on. I've not seen him play. Yeah. Watch out for him. <laughs> Played him in the world, and he's phenomenal. Is he? He is phenomenal. He is. He will be a pro next year. He's in the. Um, I'm sure of it. He's in the semis of the amateur this time. Still to play in that. He's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Simon Ward at the moment. He won his match this morning, I think, 7-1. He is quality. Definitely one to look out for, then. Absolutely. That's a nice cut break. Yeah, that's almost Mark Boyle level, actually. Yeah, he's, he's hit really them very well. Then. He's got one tricky ball on the, on the side rail. Yeah. Either way, actually, yeah. Yeah. I think we'll see him take reds because the first yellow is a bit tricky. Also, I think it's probably easier to move the red off the side rail. I think there's more more options to do that. You can leave that red over the pocket as well as a bit of insurance if the Oh he's I don't think he had I think I think oh, he's called a the extension. bit of a technical 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm just wondering whether we can play that red onto the black to kick the black into the red on the side rail and the red into the middle back. There we go. Oh, oh that is fun. Fantastic. Yeah, he's okay. He's all right. He's, he's still okay. on the one over the. It's over not the ideal. He's been unlucky. Yeah. Um, because now his issue is he's going to take the red over the bottom le uh, bottom left corner. It's getting on the next red. Where does the next red come? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so far over to the left-hand side of the pocket, I sort of think all he can do is maybe try and screw back up table. But he, oh, he's on this one. He's on the one to the top top left. Nice. So not the end of the world at all. No. Who are we? <laughs> Don't ask. Those are not questions you need to ask in this commentary <laughs> box. I don't want to jinx him, Dan, but <laughs> will he get down to the black and miss it down the rail? If it's in his head about the last two blacks. I just think my worry here is his positional shot from the one over the pocket. Because um, surely he's not leaving that till last to get on the black. No, you've got, you've got to take it now. Yeah, that's what y you've got to take it now. And it, even if he took it, you know, when we were talking about him being forced to take it a couple of shots ago, it, in some ways that might have been the best time to do it because as long as you get yourself back up the table... You're, you're likely to have a shot, whereas now you need to be precise off that, and that's very difficult. Yeah, and I think he's had a little bit of run there as well. I don't think he tried to screw into that yellow, and he's still on the red to the corner. And now for me, he's just got to screw up the side and just leave that red into the left into the left middle. See, I think play it with a bit of. Oh, I, don't, I don't like the shot. I don't like any of these shots. Good pot, great pot. Oh. That is a touch. <laughs> that is a serious touch. If he didn't clip that, he wasn't on it. No, he was in no man's land. By no means is this easy, though. This is a tricky little delicate shot on this cloth. Mm. I think he will take that. I think he will, but like you said, he's missed two blacks in this match already. But he's only got to roll this in, and, and like I said, they are playing quite generous if you're just dropping them. Yep. Good shot. Good finish, Scott Anderson. Scott Anderson takes out the finish by hook or by crook. He gets around the Reds and pulls back the deficit. That was a big frame for Scott because 5 1, you really do start to fear for him. But good break dish. I think I answered my mind. He'll be sat in his seat quite comfortable. Marsh is steamrolling. It's being Cole Bedford 4-1. It was 1 or 5 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's quite capable of doing that, <coughs> Marshy. Excuse me. Is there anyone in the draw that you're particularly looking out for at this point? Yeah, so um, one of my best friends, Darren Cook. He's uh, This is his first tour. He's a very good player. Practices I mean, at my house. We're halfway through the Sunday and he's still in, so he's definitely a good player. Yeah, he is a good player. Um just trying to find him now. He's currently 1-0 down to Andrew Whitfield. Yes. But he, long uh, way to go. Long way to go. He beat Fernie this morning. Oh, wow. 7-3, I think it was. To be honest, not to take anything away from him, but if you're going to play Ross Fernie... It's the, the day after. after it, yeah. <laughs> the morning after I at 9 I said to him this morning... Title. I said, I don't want to take it away from you, but you <laughs> wouldn't believe how many people win the pro event and then go on to lose in the first, well, the one to eight of the Open. Yeah, it's very rare, very <laughs> rare that you see someone um, go deep in both. It's vanishingly it's rare that you see someone win win both. Yeah, it's like the, um, the World Championship, you know, whoever win the Worlds don't seem to do Curse very good. the World Champion, that. as yeah. I call it. <laughs> it, it's tr I mean, Gareth Hibbert is the only World Champion who's won a tour event in his year as World Champion. Is he? Yeah. The only one. Um, Are you going to bet against Dunster doing it this year? Well, this is the question, isn't it? Because the thing is, everyone I've asked that has said, no, Dunster's going to do it. But you would have said that for Farnsworth. You would have said, Mark's definitely going to win an event. And he didn't. Um, you would have probably have said it, certainly at the time, for Ben Davis, Craig Marsh. Yeah. Um, John McAllister. And none of those great players have managed to do it. No, I mean, John McAllister, when he won it, he went right off the boil after, didn't he? He didn't win. Yeah, and that's it. But that's, uh, so did, so did um, Farnsworth. Yeah. 
I just think Dunster made a final or two, which was better than. Oh my word! Foul! Didn't touch it. Clint, Clint, presumably is going to say that it rolled off. I don't know whether it did or not. I didn't have the best view of it. But to be fair, you don't expect Clint to, to move the ball, so maybe there was a mark on the table of some kind. Maybe. You know, these blue cloths, they do, you do get a few chalk marks and stuff. Yeah, yeah, they do pick it up a little bit, don't they? And with them being so fine and put on so well and so tight, if it does go over the chalk, it does throw them off. It's the only downfall with these blue cloths. Scott Anderson with eight. I mean, if he can take these out and uh, be back to 4-3, I think he'll be very happy. Hey, oh yeah, Especially absolutely. after the two blacks he missed. Just wonder if... I just wonder if he's thinking about taking that. I think he was trying to cover a pocket there. I'm not convinced. He's, yeah, he's not. He's not going game yet. He That's a nice shot. Game. That's a very good shot. He's pushed the yellow onto the side rail, and I think he's took that corner back. Mm. Ooh, it's borderline, isn't it? Uh, Clint doesn't think so, but looks things. <laughs> not borderline at all. No. He's been a little bit unlucky there, actually. He's covered the yellow into the middle bag. I think Clint would just take the bag here anyway. Yeah, he's just covering back, isn't he? Hmm. Interesting situation. Sort of 50-50 at the moment, this table. They've both got one pocket completely covered. They both have six balls on the table. Yeah. Scott just trying to get his red out here. Who do you favour in this position? Having a good look at the table. I think it's 50 50. Yep. I don't think there's very much in it at all. Um, I would. I think I. I mean, even even before that shot, I think I slightly favour Red. I slightly favour Scott. Although. The re my reason for f slightly favouring Scott has just gone. I think Clint will play the skill here. Yeah. Shot. Oh, that's a great shot. It's not a bad result. The reason I was going to say red was because the, the red and yellow that are near the black now, um, that's actually not the not the toughest skill shot if you get right behind it. Well, he can knock the yellow onto the red anyway now. Exactly. And push the red out the way for the black and the yellow will stay over the bug. Yeah, so this is a big shot. If Clint's taking this on. Definitely a hint of uh, hint of movement on that yellow. <laughs> Chalk mark, Dan. Chalk mark. <laughs> oh, Scott. I'm just wondering if he can take this one to the top right as we look now and then the red to the top of the two into the corner bag because I think it's a big bag. Can he push the second red in and play the skill shot? Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at that as well, but I'm wondering whether he can play the bottom of the two reds straight and go into the big bag and then go into it. Yeah. Because um, if you play the top one, I don't think you're mo or the left one from this view, I don't think you're moving that red enough. To Did be honest, I don't know if he's gone for the pot there or not. It's that far away. He must off because it's a bit of a nothing shot, if not. Yeah. Why, why would you know? I don't see the benefit of him pushing it into open play. So Clint's going to pot this one in bulk and then he's going to look at that three ball plant. And to be honest, if this comes out well, and I can't really see it going all that wrong as long as he doesn't leather it. Um, Might even pot them both here. You can only see one winner. There we go. There you go. Ooh. It's all right. <laughs> that red has just moved far enough. But it's, but it's an awkward angle. Yeah, because he's going towards that red near the black spot with the white. And the cue ball's going behind those reds if it hits that. Yeah. Do you know what? We might see him go for another skill show, yeah? Well, it's on, isn't it? So it, it's definitely worth a go. If you catch that, catch the yellow full, um, it will probably track through. Big shot. If this doesn't go, this this could turn out tricky for Clint. He went for the skill shot. He yeah. did. Has it? Has it's it come out? No, it hasn't. He can't see it. He 
Is it Alan's got Anderson. Yeah, nothing more than that. Scott Anderson, here is your moment to get back to 4-3. Bad luck there for Clint, or...? Uh, no. No? No. I think um, I, I called that the... Sec the red, sorry, the yellow he was hitting could have gone in as well. Yeah, I'd have probably played it a lot softer so to it guarantee it stays. Yeah, because he he just limited his options there straight yes. away, didn't he? Yeah. Kind of play it dead weight, Dan. No, just to leave the yellow over the bag. Yep. But well, Scott Anderson won't complain. No, he brings the deficit think. back to four three, and Scott to break next, I believe. Scott to break next. Yeah, he will be very very pleased. Scott Anderson to be at 4-3 down. Well, he's 4-3 down. He missed a chance in the second frame, so that could have been 4-3 up. And he's missed two blacks. We could be looking at 6-1 you know, here. If you're, if you're Scott now, is that the way you're looking at it? You're going, well, it should, uh, I should be smashing him at the moment. Or are you going... No, I'm thinking, I'm I've missed these balls the and yeah. I'm still in the game. It, it's there for the taking. You're a very glass half full person, aren't you? Pardon? You're a very glass half full person. <laughs> very optimistic. You know, like like you know, he has missed balls and he's one frame behind with the break. And if he breaks anything like he did last time. Yeah, I mean that last cut break really was something to behold. Another good contact. But there's nothing been put away, so Clint Anderson can come back. That red and yellow to up to the top left of your screen. Well, it was up to the top left of your screen. That's uh, making life difficult for Clint at the moment. Oh, that's no, a that's very <laughs> lovely little touch. But, well, he's on one to the to the centre. Charlie Begley's now 4 0 down against Scott Pope. Wow. That is. Is yeah. he all pulled out? Yeah, po quite possibly. He can still go home very happy with his weekend's work. Yeah. Marsh is 1 7 1 against Cole Bedford. Evan Parry Williams was 5 4 up against Mike Rowland. Uh, well, he had a spectacular win in the previous round. Evan Parry Williams. Yeah, he, uh, he turned over Dan Davey by 7 frames to nil. Nice. Yeah, not bad. Is that why Dan's not in the commentary box? I think Dan's gone home. <laughs> I, uh, I did message him and he said, um, Yeah, I'm in the services. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> He's left us to it. Dave Compton's up at. Uh, four three up against Corey Reese. Liam Roberts five three up against John McAllister. Clint Anderson is not a happy bunny. He did not want to pot that yellow. Luke Sanjees and Kevin Kirkman six all. So they've gone to a decider. Still go that is a long game. That started at five to one. So. So we're getting on for two hours. Yeah. For a race of seven. Yeah, they're just getting the money's worth. Absolutely. Oh, Clint. I, f I think that's okay because I think the bottom yellow of the two will move the red out of the way. Yeah, you might be right. Actually, I thought the red would. I thought the red was a bit more central than that. But um, from this angle, can he see enough of that yellow now? It looks like he can. Yeah, and I think he could drift through the gap here for the yellow to the middle. Ooh. That's a foul, or that. This is close. Ooh. Either way, it's put Scott Anderson in a much better position because now he really has got control of that pocket. Whereas before and all these reds are on, Dan. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm, I I'm not sure I'd have, have gone this way. I'd have possibly gone the red down the bottom rail first and then the red over the bottom left in front of the yellow. Yeah. And then gone up the table. But now he's going up, down, up, down. I think it might have been a bit of shot clock that last one from Clint because, in my opinion... I think he was always catching that back yellow a bit too thin to play that shot. Yeah, and he's landed straight on this. He's not landed very good at all. No, I think Clint sort of convinced himself that it went. 
The only thing Scott can really do now is... is I'd be dropping it in. through now and going the red in the corner. Yeah. Because yep. also, as long as you catch this... The yellow. This, exactly. You, you know, you play this half ball, you, you run into the yellow. You're perfect on the next one. Yeah, anything but straight. Yeah. It's concussion first. Wow. That's a delicate little shot, and he's played it really well, actually. It's perfect. Absolutely perfect. So lining up that ready. Passes. What do you think is going through Clint's mind right now? I mean, he's, you know, Scott's missed his chances earlier on in the match, and then Clint just keeps handing him more chances. Yeah, I mean, it was a bit like yesterday in Clint's game, wasn't it, on the stream against Gav? Yeah. He, he wasn't the normal Clint that we see. No, absolutely. absolutely. Totally agree. You with know, that. he's usually Mr. Consistent, and, you know, he's got Scott five or six chances here. But it's 4 0, and Clint to break next. Yeah, Scott Anderson has leveled the scores, and three frames ago, I think we both sort of thought that Clint was about to run away with it. Tim Scott missed two blacks. You know, he, he looked a bit all over the place, did Scott. Now, it looks like he's in the ascendancy. How's your mate getting on? Uh, he's 3 0 down, mate. That's Andrew Whitfield. Good player, Andrew. Funnily enough, he's just knocked out my mate. Has <laughs> <in> he? <the laughs> previous round, yeah, Sam. <laughs> So we don't like Andrew today. No, no. <laughs> horrible man. <laughs> oh, Marshy's absolutely run riot there, hasn't he? Yeah, seven-one against Cole Bedford. Seven-one in well less than forty minutes because that was forty minutes ago that match started. All right, let's have a look at this break from Clint then. Oh, he's not caught that very well. He's gone to the cut break there. Ooh, it's unusual for Clint. And actually, that wasn't his break cue. So he's changed to uh, cut break with his normal playing cue. Yeah, I do that. If my yeah, front break's I, not I working very well. I can't break with my break cue. It's, um, yeah, it doesn't work the same. That cue is just built for power and speed. Yeah. Can't break, you need a bit more finesse. Right then, Scott, how's your look? Could we push in this and use the other yellow over the middle bag as like a bit of a blocker? Because yeah. he's going to have to play it hard to get the white out as well. Doesn't want to catch that yellow full. That's spot on. Um, I think he's on that. Oh, maybe he's not. He did catch that yellow I was talking about a bit too full. If he caught that half ball, then the, the cue ball pops back out towards the centre of the table. Is he on this red? Um, no, he's, he's taking the cut red. off. Cutting it back. He'll take that. Yeah. Still at the table. Chasing it, though. Yeah, that red over the middle bag's not gone in a very good position for him, to be honest. I wonder if he could take that and actually screw off the yellow. And Whether it'd be worth taking that now. Well, obviously not. He might go into it, yeah. Dead straight. The one thing that I don't like about watching Scott in this game is I think when he's had a difficult shot, he's done a bit too much where he just gets down and rolls it in. Yeah. That shot was one of those. You know, you had to commit to that. He left himself a thin edge of that red here. No. no. But if he can land d literally in line with both middle pockets here. No, that's too thin. And again, he's, he just rolled that. You know, it's one of those. He's gone, oh, it's a difficult shot. And I feel like he's, he's seen that it's a tricky shot, a bit of a yeah. long ranger. And he's just tensed up a bit. Yeah, instead of dragging it or something, he's exactly. just literally rolled it. Clint's just going to move Total that snooker? Red. I suspect so. Should be. What's he done there? He's threw his arms up in disgust. I think he's got away with it. It's, it's hell of a swerve. He's well, going cushion first. Cushion first for Scott. Got it. Is he on the next red? Yep. Yes, he is. Needs Just got to be a little bit careful. Yeah, here. a bit of conviction on this one, I think. Get that yellow out of the way. Oh. How's about that then, Scott Anderson? Wow. Comes out absolutely peach. 
on the black and Clint Ianson can only stand and stare and Clint looks very frustrated at the moment. He is not going his way at all. Yeah, I think what frustrated Clint a little bit as well is um, Scott's not kind of took the right routes and he's still got them. So he's run out of posi- you know, ran out of position a little bit. It's really annoying to watch. Yeah, <laughs> Clint will be sat in his chair thinking, Oh, I've got another sniff here. Yeah. And he'll still get them, so he'll probably be frustrated about that. Yeah, it is extremely frustrating to watch. There is the trophy that these two are playing for. Well, one of them will hopefully be playing for <laughs> <laughs> in a few hours' time when uh, when most of you are getting ready for bed. And the team are taking down the entire arena, lights, tables, everything. Are you, are you staying tonight as well, Dan? Or? No, I will be driving home at around midnight, I imagine, for the five-and-a-half-hour drive. Where do you live, Dan? Eastbourne. Nice. Yeah, the... The Sunshine Coast of England, as it is officially known, <laughs> we get the we get the most sunshine hours um, per year in the UK. Certainly on the mainland, anyway. Yeah, they're only an hour and a half away from this event. Well, aren't you lucky? Sunny Hartlepool. <laughs> sunny Hartlepool. Is it sunny? No. <laughs> it's not too bad, you know. It's by the coast. It's some beautiful beaches and stuff. Yep. Yep, there's nothing like sea air in the morning. Or oh, how's that cube will stay down. <laughs> Think you'll take that? If you're going to break dry, that's the way to do it, isn't it? Clint's got very little on here. Liam Dunster's on the hill against Robert Stephen. Yeah, Six two. Go deep again. Can he finally break through that Lindsay Davies is on the hill against Simon Ward you was just on about him weren't you yeah, yeah I, I seriously one to watch seriously one to watch I was four to up against Simon and lost seven four well, they don't call him boomerang for nothing do they no it's a good touch there from Scott and it had to be I think he's finished touching ball here but no cover set chosen yet in this frame this could be a long frame so um Got any friends and family you want to give a shout out to? <laughs> <laughs> no, I oh, haven't. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Nicest man on the tour and you haven't got any friends. Unbelievable. I'd be here all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just think they're going to play a bit of cat and mouse here, Dan. Could we see a rear rack if they keep tapping up to this yellow? Nope. Not as far as I'm aware. I don't think that's in the rules. No? Nope. Not even if both players agree. Nope. The table looks lovely, doesn't it, in the camouflage wrap? It does. I love that camo wrap. It's interesting as well, isn't it? Because from different angles, you, you I mean, I know it's camo, but there are angles you stand at where you can't see it at all. And there are other angles where it looks completely different colours. Yeah, it's if really you stand at table 10, it's invisible. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's Lucky uh, we've got the very blue cloth good. on it, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it does look really good, yeah. Give a shout out to the streaming company as well this weekend. Yeah, they've done a great D job. Yeah, first, very good. Very first impressed. Job. You know, we had a couple of hiccups, didn't we, on the Friday? We don't talk about that. But they got sorted out <laughs> straight away. Yeah, no, they've been excellent. Yeah. Um, and the picture quality has been superb. I've seen Brilliant, a couple of comments yeah. on the stream about that. And very, very good. And it's the sort of thing that hopefully will, you know, only grow better and better being the first event. Yeah, I mean, well, I must say, this streaming company, it's the first ever time they've done pool this weekend, isn't it? Yeah. So I think they're doing a fantastic job. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough sport to pick up the nuances of straight away, isn't it, if you don't know the game. Yeah. And you do need to know that. Whatever, whatever you're doing, really, you do sort of have to have to have that kind of that feel for it yeah i mean even down to programming the shot clock you know all that they didn't, they didn't know anything about a shot clock before no i don't think scott wanted that yellow in i think he's just going to play yellow off yellow and try and cover the pocket 
Sunderland have done that massively. So. Is it, oh, that's disaster. He's left him perfect here to it's go into that. Bad really red. bad shot, to be honest. Oh, a flurry of scores just came in on my phone. So I'm, I'm surprised. I thought he'd left the perfect angle there, but cle clearly didn't. Because I am, I am, and not. So Clint probably showing his class here by shutting shop up, not chasing the finish, waiting until he gets a better opportunity. Oh, how's that stayed out? That's twice now in this frame for Scott <laughs> Anderson. He is living on the edge, literally. <laughs> That's a shever, uh, clever shot by Clint there, just pushing his bad red out, leaving Scott with not much to do. Yep. And I feel like we've seen this shot, shot before. <laughs> That's a good return, though, actually. It's, mm. Clint's really only got that red to play at. Could just drop onto it. Yeah. Yep. Scott could probably do the same back. I mean, if he drops onto that yellow on the cushion, leaves Can't him. leave him wedged this time, though, can he? Well, he can leave him fairly wedged. If he if he put him right where the, the red is the yellow, yeah. yeah, he's not. I don't think Clint's going to have anything to go at. He's left it, him the top one. He's trying but to he's cover that. That's a good That's, shot. Yeah. Yeah. Clever. He almost left himself a three ball plant as well, but not quite. Scott Pope now five one up against Charlie Begley. I hope Charlie's not too disappointed if he does win that match. He should be proud of what he done on, on the stream table this morning. This yeah, afternoon. exactly. This afternoon. It feels like morning to me. <laughs> <laughs> These weekends are so long, it always feels like morning because I'm always tired. Yeah. Clint's you don't get, get much sleep here, do we, either? Especially you guys. Absolutely, yeah. Jake Newlove's gone 5-4 up against John Hedridge. Final frame decider, Evan Parry Williams, Matty Rowland. All these games in the, the sort of middle of the draw there, they're all going pretty close, aren't they? Not a lot between anyone. Mark Boyle, he's he's through. He survived a scare early. He was 6-5 down um, in his previous round to Dave Walker. And he's come through that 7-6. And Dave Walker was the man who knocked me out this morning. And, um, he took out some nice finishes, to be fair, but honestly, I thought Mark was going to crucify him the way he played. <laughs> thing is, Mark was on the table next to us, and he won 7-0 in 20 minutes. Like, yeah. Uh, you know, he just looked absolutely bang on it. Um, whereas me and Dave played a played out a 7-4 where we were both sort of scraping over the line every other frame. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a good shot there by Clint to give himself a chance now for the frame. Yeah, all the other uh, reds finally in a position where they go so Clint can actually attack it he's done hit that. this he's on the one down the rail but it's not what he was playing on I think he might just play a safety here yeah. yeah had to be a good one as well and it was because if he'd underdone that that yellow closest to the left centre I think that would go past that red up to the top left yeah just wondering whether it was uh, nil and nil he had gone for that there Oh, probably. Yeah, yeah. I think I I do wonder if Clint's confidence has been knocked a little bit in this match. Maybe yesterday losing to Gav has knocked his confidence a bit. Just doesn't look like the player who even started this match, though, does he? It's a nice effort from Scott, but it was always odds against. He got good contact. He was trying to make it in the centre. There was a, a reasonable chance of a big pocket there, but has Clint got a nice angle now to move that black? Because ideally, you'd like to shift that into open play a bit more, wouldn't you? Yeah, I was just thinking that myself. I was thinking, what you know, what pockets are you going to take the black into? It's still got a chance to move that now. I'd be tempted. I'd be sorely tempted to. I don't think the black goes if he does move the yellow. You on about moving the black? Well, I'd, I'd move the black, but you're the pro. <laughs> you tell me. I'd probably look at moving the yellow. You know, the yellow just to the right of the black as we look. Screw into that. Yeah. 
and then it opens, it opens up, it up to a couple yeah. of pockets, doesn't it? Yeah. This is better angle. I think he's going to move the black now. Yeah, just clip off it, maybe quarter yeah. ball. And yeah, you just want to nudge it, just nudge it out into the middle of the table. Yeah. Just got to be careful not to push it onto the other red. No, that's fine. That's a good shot. Yeah, I think he's <coughs> pinched a bit of the bag there because he's, um, he's flicked the yellow on the way past. So I think that was an intentional flick. Is he a bit straight there? I think his land come too far. He's going to have to play it into the middle bag, I think. It's not too bad, is it? It's just want to get right behind it. You want to have your pocket in your eye line when you're taking this on. Oh, he's punched it and he's, he's missed tried it. tried to pinch too much. For me, Dan, he's got down in it that yeah, he's not it, took it, his time. You, you were talking about um, the ball down the rail earlier where he cued it in. He did not cue that no, in. No, he got down and hit it. Yeah. You can't do that, you know. Especially he's if you're trying to pinch the bag. Scott <laughs> Anderson, what a chance this is. He's handing this match over at the moment. Um, Clint was 4-1 up and well on top. Scott was nowhere in this match and Clint just keeps letting him back in. I think Scott wanted to move the red then. That's why he's played it so hard. He's left himself a tricky little planet. I mean, yeah. it's very makeable, but he didn't want to be on this. Just awkward, isn't it? Just... He's not got a great angle here. He's coming away from his work, I think. Lots and lots. Of, I mean, he's got a big pocket for this. But he has to move the red. Yeah. Unless he sends the white up and down the table twice and lands on the black to middle. Do you go cushion first and move the red? It's come round the back of it. Oh, this is unlucky. <gasps> that is so unlucky. If he avoids that jaw, he's there. I mean, uh, treble? I Treble's so. a big bag. Double. Double. Oh, oh, my word. Scott Anderson. Wow. What a shot. And that will hurt wow. Clint. Clint, yeah. Clint, his usual calm demeanour is there for all the world to see, but I guarantee you inside that man is going to be absolutely raging. Shake In fact, you can see up. that he's yeah. absolutely raging. That he doesn't much show much emotion either, usually Clint, does he? And you can see there he's fuming. I mean, he shook his head, so yeah. we know he's annoyed. <laughs> Wow, Scott Anderson, Scott's one of the back. next three. Yeah, I mean, Scott's coming back in a big, big way. And like you say, race to seven. It's not like the pro event of yesterday. If you caught up with that, that was, of course, a race to eight. But this is a race to seven. And that, at the end of the day, if you're Clint, you're sitting there watching that double going in thinking, oh, really? But actually, do you know what? He's missed an easy red. Yeah. He's missed an easy red. There was you can't just give away a, a, an opportunity like that and expect to come back to the table. However, the your opponent messes up the finish, which Scott did, if we're being honest. Yeah. It's a good break from Clint, but you know, a cup, but both colour set have gone a little bit tricky. You've got a problem ball for each colour. It's not the break he was hoping for, is it? He's happy to he'd be happy to have made a ball. He's still at the table, but it's yeah, it's, this is tough. Does it pass to that corner? I think it might, actually. From the overhead, it... Ooh. It's one of those where if you catch the near jaw, you just graze the near jaw, I think it just nudges the red out of the way. Well, these cloths are very slidey as well, as well aren't they? But then we did see Clint miss one, very similar to that earlier. He's not hanging about here, Clint. He's doing a lot more uh, moving of balls than I expected him to. It's almost like he's just trying to play himself back in now. He's trying to get his arm going again. Yeah. Can he just drift down and land on it? Oh, this is good. Oh, a, bit, a little bit more would have been nice. Or a bit less. Yeah, either way, really. Just Yeah, he's going to have to give this some now, isn't he, to get the cue ball back out of there. I think he can drop it in dead weight and use the red as a little cushion and play the one to the top right corner. That's a great shot. Shut up, Wade. <laughs> well, no, I, I don't think you were necessarily wrong. But I think <laughs> it was a bit risky because if he caught the red half ball, I think he was behind the other one. Yeah. 
a couple of deciders, um, Lindsay Davis, Simon Ward, 6 0. Interesting to see Clint roll that one in as well after he's, you know, he's not been entirely happy with the table, but he trusted it enough just then. Well, he did have a look at that other one he fought, though, didn't he? Yeah. And he had a few shots, so probably the first two or three didn't roll. Yeah, absolutely. It's just one of those, isn't it? It does happen sometimes. Them chalk marks, Dan. Yeah, but it's not <laughs> we just, keep going you know, back to them. Yeah, we do, but it's not exclusive to black ball either, is it? You know, you see it happen in nine ball occasionally where you just get a, a phantom roll. Yeah. Um, Clint Ianson making light work of that frame. An excellent breaking dish. And he's just piled it back onto Scott because this will be Scott's last break. I think the pressure is on Scott here. Massively. I don't think Clint's going to be under pressure at all. No. No. The way this game has gone. The thing is, Scott's recovered from 4-1 down to 6-4 up. He's won 5 on the bounce against Clint Ianson. Now it's about whether he can get over the line. It's not like Charlie Begley in the previous game against Gaz Hibbert. Charlie was 6-1 up. And flowing. So, yeah. Confident. Yeah. Confident. And he knew that he was going to have two or three chances yeah. regardless of what happened. He knew that he was going to have breaks. He was breaking well. Scott knows this is his last break. Not forgetting he's missed two blacks in this match, so he should be home and dry. Yeah. In his head, you know, he should be on to, he should be out speaking to his friends, getting ready for his next match. Just noticed the match in the top left of your screen. That's um, Liam Clark, Ryan Clark's younger brother. Breaking Very off. good player, Liam. Very good. I think that's an amateur semi-final. And we will be, I'm sure, broadcasting the amateur final later on. I don't want to say that 100%, but I'm saying 99 Mm, a little bit tricky here. Not the, it, it's not the break Scott wanted, is it? I mean, that yellow next to the cue ball, that's causing a big problem. Because even if you go red, it's got to move that yellow, really, to have any kind of shot at the black. Yeah. I mean, th this is one of them breaks where you probably don't want to pot. You don't want to be in control here. You want your opponent to go for it. Clint's probably sat in his chair here thinking, I hope Scott goes for these. Yeah. Because is it, is it worth, in your opinion, Scott just rolling that yellow onto the black? Just going Possibly, yeah, there we go, Clint. You have a go. Yeah. It's so difficult to do that, though. You, you, you've broke off, you've made a ball. This is your chance to beat Clint Ianson. I can't blame Scott for going for this. No. And do you know what? He's got one shot to play. But if he drops this through now, nah, leaves a nice angle, he can go he's into it now. it now. Oh, no. That's that's not the time to go into it. No. Oh, cue ball's in. <sighs> that was, you're right, a shot later. He's, yeah, dro he's, drop it in. And then it's just literally playing ball, doing nothing with the cue ball, just let it run into it. And then you had two yellows to play into this corner bag. The pressure has told on Scott Anderson there. Could that be his last shot in this match, Dan? It's possible. I mean, th this happened to him as well in the uh, in the amateur final he played in. He was, I think he was 6-5 up, first to seven. And uh, he did have a chance against Michael Tomlinson. I just wonder where that's oh, going on Yeah, night. the Isle of Man wants it, that one. Yeah. It was a really good game, actually, the two of them. Michael Tomlinson played one of the um, one of the shots of the tournament, which I, at the time, called as a fluke. <laughs> <laughs> but on watching it back, I uh, I saw him line it up. I felt quite bad for that, to be fair, because it really <laughs> it was sort of four cushions, ridiculous can, shot. Can you remember my fluke against Morgan McKins in the Champions Cup? I've got out the snooker and it's flicked off four balls and went and no, he was commentating was on, was on it. On. Yeah, okay. someone no, sent me a video because he was laughing at what you said. You'll have to show <laughs> me later. Yeah. I've got a vague memory, but yeah. <laughs> I've watched quite a lot of pool in the last six months, to be honest. Do you sit at home commentating yourselves? <laughs> Just watching a money match commentating? No, I don't. But oh, I did for the Champions Cup. That, was, that is what I was doing. I was at Working home. from home. Yeah. Yeah. You did a good job, mate, on the Champions Cup. Thank you very much. No, I quite enjoyed working from home, actually. It was quite a bizarre experience in that um, I'm sat in, you know, sunny Sussex, and the tournament's happening in sort of Leeds, and my co-commentator's in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> was there any time delay? You know, any lag any on the commentary? A tiny bit, but it was pretty good, actually. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think you could tell watching it back there was, you know, a fraction of a second, but there wasn't really much more than that, and it quite impressive yeah Clint's making a hash of this he's yeah plant, he's making it hard for himself he's oh, going for the snooker clip off it behind the reds this is risky dangerous yeah if he leaves one on here for Scott 
That red needs to travel. I don't like that. Well, I think he's left him on. He has. He's left him on the one nearest the bulk line, that's for sure. I'm, st I'm really surprised at that. Clint had that plant on. He still could have gone for those. He's covered the pocket there, Scott. Has he gone for the pot, or do you think he went for cover? The pace he's played it, that's a cover, isn't it? Because I think so, yeah. Either way, on. it's a great shot. He, he's Yeah, it, but he's in no man's land with the cue ball, really. Mm. Um, it is a very good shot. I think we'll see Clint try and uh, snooker him again, yeah? He's also got the plant. He could play the aggressive shot. Do you know what? That red knocks... It's a big bag in that it top does, corner and knocks it yeah. black out. It does. This is a chance for Clint Ianson. I, I wasn't looking at that top corner. He's got to get that right, though, because that's quite a thin contact. So that the red... He'd be looking to play the red off the yellow into the top right as his last red, presumably. Yeah. That's quite a thin contact on the yellow. He's got to get a lot of power on that I to was get the black out nicely. Yeah, I was going to say I'd be playing it now. He's playing and it And then now. you give yourself an option to get onto the black. The it's only th thing here, he could, be put, he could push the black into the other yellow. This is what I'm saying. He's, he's still relying on a bit of luck, even if he gets himself on the last red. He's still relying on a bit of luck. There we go. Let's push it onto the yellow. Yeah, but he caught it too... I think he was trying to play it a bit too thick because of that. Yeah. Um, and actually, it was probably a, a good good thing he missed it. Like you say, he's pushed yeah. the black totally safe now. He'd have, been, he'd have been nowhere at all. Whereas now, he's at least asked Scott the question. I'd have been swinging that off too into the yellow and black. Natural angle. <laughs> I think he's just going to take the bag here. Yeah. Tried. He played that far too close to the pocket to take the pocket. That that's, is trouble. That's Well, I think he's just going to flick the... He's just going to leave Clint a difficult shot at this red, isn't he? Is that a foul? Yeah, he called it on himself as well. What on earth has he done there? I, I Caught the black first. That's unforgivable, isn't it? That's awful. Was it a foul? Yeah, he called it on himself. Immediately went, yeah. um, put two fingers up and said two shots. Oh, my word. That's that's a really, really big misjudgment from Scott Anderson. I'm stunned at that, actually. Maybe the shot clock? Because he just got down and hit it quickly. He was having a good look at it, wasn't he? It's true. It, it could have been the shot clock that that's done for in there. But either way, it looks like Clint Ianson's going to get away with one here. Evan Parry Williams has beat Matty Rowland in that decider. Mm. Well, this drop in black for Clint Ianson to take us to a decider on the stream table as well. It drops in. It's going to be a single frame shootout and it's going to be Clint Ianson to break. Break dish? What do you think? I'm going to I'm going to put you on the spot. I don't think it's going to be personally. Dry break. Mm -hmm. Scott Anderson chance. Miss Clint dish. Okay. There we go. Fair enough. Yep, fine. That is very specific. 66 to 1. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a pound on that. If, you <laughs> <laughs> if you're offering. Scott Anderson. Got to get that last frame out of his head now. It just got to focus. This is a single frame knockout a place in the last 32 of the IPA UK Open Championship. But he may not get a shot. Clint with his playing cue breaking off. Cut break. Makes a ball. So Where's that's it. my pound's gone. Where's that white going? My pound's gone. You're 66 to 1 in the state. <laughs> and these reds are absolutely lovely. They are just. Uh, can he stun up table for the one nearest the black now? Because I don't think that passes the black. Shaking his head a little, Clint. 
he's not as happy as you are <laughs> with the brakes. But then it is a little bit easier from in here, just a fraction. He's got yellows. I'm surprised at that. I don't know if I am. I think the yellow. It, it's a tougher first shot. Yes. If you make the first shot. Why? <laughs> I really, I, I thought he was taking that yellow long. Um, the way he's played that, he's just, just nudged into the balls and he's relied on luck. And he has actually got a bit. He needs to move this red out of the way now. And then as long as that goes somewhere not in his way. That's come out nice. It has, but it's, it's sort of all over the place, isn't it? This isn't this isn't a Clint Ianson finish. No. This is a me finish. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll see him take these out now, and I think we will see the normal Clint that we're used to. Yeah. Um, now he's got himself in a position, you know, he'll be working his route out, and don't think we'll see any more mistakes with his position. Yeah, the, the, those first couple of shots, it was, um, yeah. He took a little bit of a liberty with, with the pool gods, and... They have repaid him handsomely, to be honest. You have to be a bit careful getting across the table here, but yeah, I think he wants this one. to leave the one in middle to a last, don't he? Yeah, that's nice. Good shot, Clint. Yeah. So just drop this in dead weight, leave himself straight on the yellow to middle, and Clint would have got away with one, I think. Massively, massively got away with one. Um, I feel like you need to do that if you're going to win a tournament. Your, your level's going to drop at some stage. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if Clint went on to win it after this. Yeah, yeah, because... It happens a lot when you get away with one. Mm. To these, not us. <laughs> True. <laughs> Scott Anderson, not going to be happy about this one. No, but he should be proud of his efforts. He's had a good run this weekend. Yeah, definitely. And so Clint Irons from Potts. Oh, sorry. Clint Ianson is our victor by a single frame over Scott Anderson. He is through to the last 32. Scott will be disappointed with that. He had his chances to beat Clint in the end in what was a pretty scrappy, topsy-turvy match. Clint there just chatting away with the referee and he will be chatting to Kevin Barton in a couple of minutes' time just while he makes his way over to see if we've got any scores. Have a look at Third round. Is <laughs> We're almost into the last 16 now the time that game's taken we haven't got too many games left so i can tell you the next game on the stream table will be david adnall versus chris Bowram. but before we watch that one we'll hand over to kevin barton who's with clint nianson thanks a lot dan and uh, i'm joined by uh, clint who won that match clint not your best performance but you found a way to win yeah i mean I thought it was okay at the start, went 4-1 up. I know he missed a couple of blacks, but I punished him for that. And then, I don't know what happened. Wheels <laughs> fell off a little bit. Um, yeah, lucky, lucky to get over the line, really. Probably not convinced I deserve to win the match, but I'll take it and move on to the next one. Yeah, I feel sure. like I feel like when my hand's on the table, I'm actually playing well, but I don't know, I just... Wheels fell off there a little bit. Well, if they fell off, you certainly managed to get them back in that last frame. I mean, it was. I noticed on the, the break on the last frame, you used your normal cue and not that uh, black carbon thing that you uh, you cart around with you. What yeah. was the, uh, you thinking behind that? I just thought cause it's, it's easier to control the white with the cut break, so I didn't want to go in off. Um, yeah. So I just thought use the use the cut break and. Hopefully, pop one. Mm. It was Luckily, a, I did. It was a tough clearance in the end. I mean, it was the first shot was obviously the big shot of the, of the, to set yeah, you up. Yeah, it was. The, it was the first shot that. I mean, it, I didn't know if I, I knew it was going to be close to going. In, the white was going to be close to going in off because I had to thin cut it to the middle, and I know I was cannoning to the other yellow. But luckily, 
White stayed on the table and managed to clear up. Yeah, it's good clearance in the end. To be fair, yeah, it was. Yeah, the yeah. no, it was. Yeah, it was decent clearance and uh, fair play to uh, Scott for holding up to the foul in the second to last round. Yeah, I mean that's synonymous really with you know the pros and the players here. You know, there's that level of honesty and in, in integrity. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Which is always always good to see, uh, yeah. even in the you know the fiercest of battles. Yeah. So um, obviously into, coming into this weekend, um, obviously fantastic event um, last time out. Um, where, where do you think your game's at compared to then? Do you think you, you're still at, the, at those levels? Yeah, th I'm, yeah, I'm playing well. I feel like I'm playing well. Um, it's just consistency, I suppose. I think that's why Liam's probably number one because he consistently plays well. Um, a, few, a few others are like Fonda, if he's consistent, and I'm, I think I'm getting there. I mean, I know that weren't pretty to watch that, for that match, but uh, like I played. Um, I think I lost to Gav Robinson in the pro event, but didn't really do too much wrong in that. He played well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just getting that consistency. That's, I suppose that's what all of us try and work on, really. Yeah, yeah. Up to number two in the rankings. Obviously, pleased with that. I know when we spoke to you last time out back in Cov, you're, uh, you've got your sights set, obviously, higher. A bit of a journey to go, because obviously Liam's yeah, you know, streets ahead. He's but, at the um, top by yeah. a, a country mile, to be fair. Um, but he deserved it, because he's the most consistent player. So, um, yeah, I think... If, if I can have a good run today, get to the final, win it, then off a chance. So it's putting that consistency over a period of time into it. Yeah, know. exactly. Yeah, it's it's when there's when you come to the IPA, there's that many good players. Like doesn't, sometimes it doesn't matter how good you play. Like I've I've played, I've played brilliant and lost, and I've, I, but then you get you get matches where you don't play so well. And you end up winning the competition. I don't know. That don't make sense. But <laughs> it's a crazy game, anyway, like a, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's Loving the red top, by the way. Yeah, um, we, <laughs> from the same supplier. Um, yeah, on board. Uh, red must be the colour today. Um, I don't know if you've seen the draw, any of the results. Obviously, not whilst you've been playing, but um, uh, obviously there's you and Liam opposite end of the draws. You could yeah. meet in the final again. Yeah. Um, a lot of the big names have been out, uh, been taken out. Mark Farnsworth, I'm John McAllister. Oh, really? Uh, I knew, Ross I knew, Fernie, I knew Mark lost because he finished just before I started. But I didn't know John had lost. Who did John lose to? Uh, Liam Roberts. Oh, okay. Uh, no disrespect to Liam, but he's a guy. He's a cross between James Wade and um, Ed Sheeran. I don't know if you've seen him. I'm not Fantastic sure who he is, kid. to be honest. Great play, great dish up in the last. Well, he um, must have played all to on. beat John. Yeah, yeah. So the draw's really opening up. But at the end of the day, it's you. Know, Whoever you play next has earned the right to be there, and you've still got to deliver. Yeah, um, I mean, it's, I table. think it's last thirty-two next, isn't it? No yeah, idea. I, I think it's last thirty-two. So oh. it, it's, it's going to be a tough draw, whoever you get, really, because lots of good players. But if if I play well and I feel like I can win it, so just plod along and see how it goes. <laughs> well, you keep plodding, Clint, and uh, hopefully we'll see you later on. Well Cheers. done. Well done, Clint Anson. He um, he's now just going to leave us, even though he's, he looks got really comfy in that chair. And uh, it's a welcome return. Where, where have you been, Mr. Pickwick? Well, I've been playing, haven't I? <laughs> I've been playing and I've uh, just, got, just got freshened up, ready for our late night pool. Oh, hopefully it's not too late now. It's been, it's been it's a long, late enough, long it? three days. Late enough. But yeah, um, I mean, you probably didn't see much of that game, but it, Clint, who's 6-4 down, but you know, found a way to win and that's what champions do. Yeah, I was watching a little bit of it, just while I was in my room upstairs, and uh, Scott took his good finish out to mm. go 6-4 up. Clint does what he does, and he's just never, never out of it. He didn't get too flustered when he was six four down either. He had a bit of a shake of his head, but and uh, he's, let, he's let Clint in, and that's what you can't do with these top players. They'll come in and they'll they will really hurt you. Mm, and as we're saying to him, he's at the bottom end of the draw. Liam Dunster is at the top end of the draw. You can sort of see where this might be heading up. Yeah, you could do. It could be a repeat of the uh, Coventry Professional Final. It really could. Um, Clint, he, he wants to add to what he won last in, in Coventry, and uh, he's playing well enough. He, I think he was uh, a little bit unlucky not to make it through the professional event. He caught Gavin Robinson on a, a very good day, beating him 8-4. Uh, but yeah, Clint's back, he's, uh, he's here on the Sunday, still batting, and uh, he's in the next round. Yeah, and uh, as I was saying, there's been quite a few shocks already uh, in this tournament. Uh, Mark Farnsworth uh, has been beaten by his good friend Chris Boran, who we're going to see next uh, on the stream table. Um, John McCallis has just been beaten as well. Last night's winner, Ross Fernie, he went out in the first round this morning. Um, 
It's, it's, an, it's an absolute bloodbath out there. Yeah, I saw Ross Fern, he lost uh, to Darren Cook, and Darren Cook's new on the tour this year. Uh, Chris Bogon, he was playing on the next table to me as I was playing, and he was 6-5 down against Mark Farnsworth, and took out two monster finishes really? to beat him 7-6. So he'd be really pleased with that, and pleased to be in the next round, and got an opportunity now to uh, produce what we, we I mean, we, we call him the dancer. He's, he is the bazooka, but he is the dancer, because he, he has all the dance moves, and uh, really excited to see him on this uh, stream table. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. yeah and, and just about John McAllister, I mean, I think he was about... I think it was quite level, about 4-4, weren't it? It was a tough game for him, that was. Yeah, went to the decider. Uh, the John and uh, Liam, who played him, played in broken condition in the last frame, so, you know, fair play to him. Um, yeah, so, uh, coming up, Chris Boren, as we said, um, the dancer, the bazooka, has probably got a few other nicknames as well, uh, but he's up against the manxman, David Adinal. Um, what can uh, what can we expect from this one? Well, David's been pretty quiet this weekend. Mm. Didn't really see a lot of him in the professional event. Um, he was pretty much on this TV table all the time in the, the Isle of Man, back in January, uh, because he was doing really well. Um, again, he's here again, in the latter stages. This is going to be an interesting matchup, and I, and I think in it, I think this this uh, quarter of the uh, the draw it's opened up a little bit mm. with all the upsets that have happened. Mm. It, this is anybody's now. It really is. Yeah, the quarter final and semi final line. We could we could see a few new names in there because some of these amateur players, um, and obviously they're amateur because you know, they're either the first year on the tour or they've not got high enough in the rankings. But we know the strength in depth, and I think this could be the event where we see an amateur potentially get to the semi, get to the final, maybe even win it. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure the reason for that. I think the reason is is for that is because the amateur ranks are so strong. Everybody's been practicing, playing. Playing. There's so many competitions around the UK now. You, you can near enough be playing each weekend, and this is what a lot of these players are doing now. Because they know how 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 much black ball has moved on. That they're all playing because they want to be part of this exciting project that we're trying to do here at the IPA. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that's enough excitement from us. Um, I think it's time for the players to provide the excitement. So uh, let's get over to the commentary box and Dan Fairway. Good afternoon. It's not quite Dan Fairway here on the commentary. It's Mark Pickworth. I've just uh, come from the studio and uh, he's going to be with me. Very interesting matchup here between Chris Bowron and uh, Aaron Adderall. Just trying to do a, a few sort of adjustments to this. The actual table, and also the uh, the carpet, such great quality. I think it's just moved a little bit. So it might be time just to go and get a quick cup of tea. But uh, we'll be right back with you shortly, as soon as we can.
I'll just while we're waiting for the uh, table technicians just to uh, get this table in tip top condition and give you uh, a few latest results. Um, just looking at this uh, last 32, some games still in action. Wayne Fryer against Steve Thompson. Wayne is currently 3 2 ahead there. Wayne Camp against Rob Sim. Rob Sim's looking in great form. He's 5 4 up there against Wayne. Mark Boyle, JJ4. JJ4, remember, world semi finalist this year. And Mark Boyle, he won the open event at the last tour in Coventry. That's currently locked at five frames apiece. Can Mark do a back to back open? Rob Donkin against Sean Fox. And Sean Fox has been playing well this uh, weekend. Oh, he's currently losing 5 2 to Rob Donkin. Then we've got Kevin Kirkham. He's a man in form at the moment. He's playing Kieran Kay. And he's 2-1 ahead. And then Clint Ianson, who we're just seeing on here, beats Scott Anderson, 7 frames to 6. He's playing Richard Swafield now on the outer tables. Oh, looks like the uh, the table's ready. The players are ready. They've just lagged. David added up. He's going to be breaking first. So, players in the last 16 already. Liam Dumpster. Playing Linz Davis. Corey Reese, he's going to be playing Liam Roberts. Remember, Liam Roberts beat John McAllister. John Herridge, he beat Jay Dylan Newlove. Even Parry Williams. Scott Pope, he's waiting in there as well. We've got Andrew Whitfield and Craig Marsh. So far in the last 16 is six amateur players. Just proves the strength in Deppy at the RPA. Alright, back to this match. Or the start of this match anyway. David Allen to break. Mr. Ashwell there, just not that red in. to see that drop. Just had enough room for that yellow just to sneak past. So it's the yellow's in play. Probably this hardest yellow, probably the one just above the black. Right at the black of your screen now. So I'll probably take this one into the right centre next. And he can just come on and off the cushion. And then the ball is directly behind now. I don't think he's got the angle on it yet. Or does he? Yeah, I think this is the right shot. to have a pretty good angle there just to drift down and then the yellow is closest to after he's potted this one got a few pockets and options Apologies there for a little bit quiet. Oh, fixed here now. And now David added up. He's going about his work nicely. Just overdone that a little bit, but uh, he wanted to make sure he's definitely on this yellow into the left centre. Black then. 
little bit more difficult than he wanted. Well, shouldn't be any problem here for David Adenault. And there you see it. Great break and clearance there from David Adenault. It's a brilliant start there. So this is our first look of uh, Chris Bowon, the bazooka. My nickname, the dancer. He had some dance moves and uh, on sporty stuff TV in the Champions Cup. David Adenau, all the way from the Isle of Man. A couple of teammates there in the background. Steve, who helps us in the IPA there on the left. Puts in a lot of work, Steve does. Great events in the Isle of Man. Anybody not been to the Isle of Man? And even if you want to play pool, have a look at our dates online. IPApool.com We'll be back there. Brilliant hotel. A little casino there as well. Makes a bit of a weekend of it. So then, our first look at the bazooka. Get some acute action into that. Really gives it his all. He's got a reward there. A little bit of a last roll of a yellow. But he'll take it. First glance, it looks like the table's a little bit untidy. In either colour set that he goes for here. They've both got the difficulties. If he does take reds, he's probably going to have to take the red he's closest to now. But the, the yellow is the easy option. It's an easier starter. But what has Chris worked out now? From M1's in that left-hand corner. So I think he, what he's going to be doing, just dropping this in, coming on and off the cushion, playing that red, oh sorry, that yellow below the red, into the left centre, and canning out his other yellow. It's a big shot. He's queued that nice, so he's going to have a good chance at this to try and get a bit more pace into it. This is all about how much of the red ball he can, he can make connection with. Oh, he's played a double. Fantastic double. A bit of good news and bad news. I think the, the yellow dropping into that top left hand corner is not a problem. But what is now a problem is going to be a, a tricky shot. A delicate little one. Just got to nicely roll this in. Yep. Good pace. Got away from it a little bit there from the yellow. This white ball is going to be travelling around. Right after this match, it's going to be the ladies' final. It's going to be Danielle Randall against Harriet Haynes. That is going to be a terrific match. Well, and while we're waiting for the ladies' match, Chris Bowron has potted his last yellow. Now, this black is very tricky. This is all about the timing. What a great clearance that was from Chris Bowron. He's returned the, here uh, the favour what uh, David Adenov sent to him. And it's one frame apiece. Brilliant start from both players. Yeah, we're going to be doing the ladies' final after this one. There's also going to be the amateur final at some point today we'll keep you up to date with that one remember this is a, a last 32 match of the IPA UK Open
Bob Sim, Mark Boyle, Bob Donkin there, one frame away from getting into the last 16. I'll keep you right up to date how that goes. And the white ball's gone in. That is a disaster. Chris Bowen, what an opportunity here to go 2 1 ahead. tell you in one of the amateur semi-finals Wayne Parker is playing Liam Clark Wayne Parker from South Africa he's leading four frames to one against Liam Clark from the North East he's going to be the first player into that amateur final the other semi-final will be contested between Wayne Fryer and Linz Davis Keep you right up to date with uh, how the matches pan out. But at the moment, Chris Bowen going about his work here. Mm -hmm. He looks in prime position here. Needs to draw this back a touch. Needs a bit of an angle. He, he, he doesn't really, because he can play that yellow into the top right-hand corner. He'd like to have got a little bit closer to it, but it shouldn't cause Chris any problems. there from Chris left the white ball on the cushion this is a little bit more trickier than he wanted it and where will the white ball be heading does it just miss the middle pocket does it cannon into the red first things first concentrate on putting the black he's there 2-1 ahead punish David added all that Curry's in off that's what normally happens at this level, especially at these black ball rules. That one free shot after the break, really crucial. So a little bit on the uh, the ladies' final then. So Danielle Randall, she beat uh, Beck Sweeney in the semi-final, six frames to one. And uh, Harry Haynes, uh, she beat uh, Amy Bichamp, six frames to three. There's some brilliant matches in there. And uh, Daniel Randall, she beat uh, last uh, tours winner, Alexandra Cunner, by six frames to five in the quarterfinal. So she's in a little bit of form now. And deservedly in the final. There you see this big break from Chris. Where's the cue ball? And that yellow has just dropped in. Look how many balls are on this side cushion here. they've all gone to the side but I don't see a lot of them are all open to go into the middle pocket a tricky opener on either set I think the, uh, the yellow is the easiest opener is it into the right centre if it passes I think it does Bottom 
center as uh, you see it on your screen. Yeah, as it is. So that's your control there into that gap. Well, this is far from easy clearance now for Chris. Looks like he's going to leave himself this tricky little plant now. Yellow onto yellow. The only problem is with this, the yellow will be going away from the pocket. The one that he's uh, going to make contact with first. Can he control it in any way, shape or form? I don't think he has. he got a pot on now? Can he cut this back? Can he clip the one into the left centre? Doesn't look easy. I think all he's got is this cut back. The white is going to be travelling. Is it going to be travelling into his uh, difficult yellow on the same side cushion? Oh, he's missed the yellow on the side cushion, but he's going to have a shot at this. I think that the way that he played that, because he played it with a trace of uh, running side, and uh, I think that's the way that he uh, intended to. He just missed that yellow. Big pot. Oh, is it there? Is it going to drop? It's not. I think it was just a little bit too pacey for it to drop. That would have been a huge clearance there for Chris in a race to seven. To be 3-1 ahead. But now, can David level this match up? It's an opening pop. Still not in prime position here. Is he going to play the uh, the cut back on this red? It's a bit of a fine one. Oh, it's travelling. I think that's a bit of a bonus there. Yeah, he's landed on the cushion, but he's removed that black so we can see this red. Okay, this white ball's travelling. We'll be cannoning into balls. Oh, he's just glanced past it. Don't want to be straight. do a lot with that red just have to drop it in David just trying to keep it as simple as possible it's not been a, uh, an easy clearance this oh he's missed the red though just tried to power it in too much. Now, uh, what can Chris Boron do here? Can he pop? Well, he can pop the yellow quite easily. But he needs to make contact with the black to clear the pocket. Can he draw this back? Can he come off a jaw and make it reverse back a little bit? What's he got? Yeah, that's what he's tried. Try to come off the jaw. It's under a bit of shot clock pressure there, though. So he's just gone second favourite in this now. All depends on this shot. Don't look like 
there's any touching balls down there. David using his extension quite wisely. I think he's, he's just got to tap this onto the side cushion. We just hope that Chris doesn't fluke the black. He needs to get as close to the black as possible to. Yep, he's done enough there. He don't want this to be touching ball though. Shot clock ticking down again. He's gonna have to make a decision. So playing a bit of a cock tap. Look at that white ball spinning. We should see now David level this match up. see it two frames apiece that was a chance there for Chris to extend his lead to 3-1 but the first four frames they've been shared and it's 2-2 two -two. so let's we'll see if uh, anybody else has uh, got through to the last 16 if you, uh, if you do want to keep up to track with any of your favourite players you can uh, follow our links on ipapool.com all the uh, the latest scores on that. Yeah, let's have a quick look. So, Mark Boyle beat JJ four seven five. Rob Sim he's safely through. Beat Wayne Cam seven four. Currently seven amateur players into the last 16. There's definitely going to be eight because there's two amateur players playing in the last 32. We have seen that before at our first talk. So it just proves that these amateur ranks are very strong. Little shot there from David, putting both balls. So, this is going to be the key positional shot now. Set the one on the bottom cushion, drift up table. It's all about getting the pace right. There is a couple of reds that he can play on. But he needs to be very pacific here. He's left himself a shot here. He'd love to punch this in, but I don't think he can. He's going to have to roll it in and just roll the cue ball through. But where he's got his cue. That's where he needs the cue ball to be. Has he gone? Oh, he's just come off the far jaw. What sort of angle has he got here? Is he straight? I think, is he going to have to just roll this through again? And he screw through the gap. Has he got a bit of an angle? He's got a bit of an angle. He's perfect. And how extraordinary how these matches just can turn around at a flip of a coin. What 
was looking like Chris was going to be 3-1 ahead. He's now 3-2 down. So, latest 32 uh, scores. Kevin Kirkham against Kieran Kane. He's 5-3 up. Kevin is. Richie Swaffield playing uh, Clint. That's locked at two frames each. And then the re remaining last 32 match, apart from this one. Dwayne Fryer, 5. Steve Thompson, 4. his break here just gives it his all it's quite effective though he's, he's had a ball off every break So this one's given me a little bit to think about with that black tied up. He's going to be getting it out here. First shot. Opening them all up. Is he lucky? I think he's okay. Gonna love that yellow just to bounce off of the cushion a little bit more. So a nice little shot there from Chris Byron. And again, that's a nice little nudge there. Put his hand up in apology. As soon as it flicked that red, it just tracked back absolutely perfect. And now it's making these very simple. Not going to have to do a lot with this cue ball. I think somewhere below the mi middle pocket will be fine. They didn't have to do a lot with that pot. So stun it in for the black into the top left hand pocket. Just needs to make sure he lands on the cushion here. Overdone this, has he? Well, he's overdone that by two foot. What has he done there? I don't think he's got anything on here now. What can he produce? Has he has he seen something? The clock, though, it's ticking down. Trying something outrageous. And oh, what a double that is. It is absolutely bang perfect for the straight black. Brilliant shot from Chris Bowen. That that reverse double was so hard. He, he couldn't even have all the pocket there. Fantastic shot. Three frames each. What a match this is. There you see it. The puff of the cheeks, the look up to the heavens, the shake of the head, the drink of the water. He's got it all. He's had a laugh and a giggle with somebody watching. And uh, I think David, he's still smiling to himself, just as we are. No doubt you are too. Yeah, cool down a bit, David. Very calm, David is. Very calm indeed. Well, 
Three three. Best of seven now. Balls are flying in everywhere now. This table, after that double, is just surrendering in itself. Yeah, once again, I mean, David is going to have a choice at either colour set here. It's depending on what he th feels that's the best. Selecting the yellows. Just into that yellow, it's not perfect. But he will be able to, uh, if he can get behind it, he will be able to play on that other yellow that's over the pocket. But how can he get there? Yeah, David just took his extension. Feels like this is probably the important part now. You get into that a lot. Well, he can nudge into the his difficult yellow now if he wanted to. But he could push it up near the black, he could push it up near the reds. I think that's why he's elected not to cannon into it. I'm thinking now he's gonna be leaving it for his last ball. An angle. I don't think he's has he got one. Not the angle he wanted. I think he's overdone that by a little bit. Can he come on and off the cushion? The bottom cushion that is, or does he have to come off the side cushion? Looks like he's playing it with top. He's pinched a little bit in the pocket there, and how well has he played this shot? Brilliant shot there from David. Add it up. He missed one of these, David has. He's not made the same mistake this time, but is he on the black? Is he okay? No, he just gets straight down and pops it. That could have gone wrong there, but it hasn't. 4-3 now, David adding up. Black's down, it's going to be a re-rack. You saw that cue action that Chris puts into his break. It's really extraordinary, it really is. So much body movement. breaks again. Again, a lot 
lots of power. He's got a ball. First glance, reds don't seem that bad. Into oh, he's played the big pocket there. I was just wondering if it was that what he played. Because he weren't guaranteed to be on a red day playing it like that. So now he's not on the next red. It's more of a difficult pot. These could be big moments now. Just left himself a little bit too much to do there with that pot. And he's got a bit of insurance with that yellow that's tied up with that red. Oh, David, he has got a ball in the top half of the table. So he will be able to get it out with. He just needs to decide. the right time to try and get it out is he going to just drift through that gap now now it's all about this angle here but nudging that yellow just to stop them from being potted into the right centre now in that now has forced him into playing this awkward plant so he's got another yellow ball in the top half of the table but oh, that yellow is still tricky behind that red to get it out of this shot what can he do here has he got enough angle trying to force it oh and he's doubled it very fortunate there from David I know I'm not sure how that's doubled across still at the table so going to be cutting this yellow back white ball's going to be travelling it's going to be canning into oh he's just missed the red and again it's another nice kiss for David Adenault that kiss is just held nicely I mean if that misses that red it drifts up the table and Probably gives David no shot. Now, he's landed perfect. Just drops it in. Drops it in at a nice pace. So, this black. The first time to open up a two-frame lead. He just drops it into the bottom corner. 5-3 now to David Adenault. And Chris, that would hurt him, just sat there watching and getting the rub of the green.
Looks like Chris has got a little bit of a smirk to himself. David having an ultra break. Chris is getting a, a bit ahead of himself there. He thought it was his break. Different styles on the brakes. I mean, David, he, he does give it some power. He keeps down on his shot when Chris is up. Both been effective, though. And it's David that's leading this match 5 3 now. Two frames away from getting into the last 16. This match will play amateur play it. Evan Parry Williams from Wales. He's had some good results this weekend. Evan has. Oh, David Dyson with death there. The Manx man. That middle pocket. Oof. Tricky little pot there. Let's let Chris back to the table now. I'm going to say, though, these are far from easy. So, Wayne Fryer, he's 6 4 up now against Steve Thompson. Remember, why Wayne Fryer is in the semi finals of the amateur event as well. He's playing well in for the Open. Kevin Kirkham, Kieran Kay, 6-5 now to Kieran Kay. He turned that match around a little bit. One frame away from getting into the last 16. Richard Swaffield, Clint Iansom there, locked it four frames each. They're into a best of five now. See who can get in the last 16. Chris is playing the double. Looks like he's played it really well. Great shot there from the bow run. The bazooka bow run. Some latest last 16 results so far. Linz Davis, he's beating Liam Dunster three frames to one. Corey Reese, he's beating Liam Roberts three frames to nil. Scott Pope, he's beating Rob Sim two frames to nil. Mark Boyle, three nil up against Andrew Whitfield. And Rob Donkin is two one ahead against Craig Marsh. Keep your eye up to date with all them scores. And Chris, he's potted that, but where's he left his cue ball? He's going to have a difficult shot here. And that yellow that's on this right-hand side cushion is really difficult as well. Made a bit of a containing shot there. can David do it? I don't see an, an obvious safety shot for David. Yeah, that's a clever little shot. Just, just finally nicked that red that it was next to. And then pushing his red into the open. Clever shot from David Admiral. He has now freed up this yellow, which Chris did have a problem on. He's only got a small window for it to, to get on it, but I think he, he's really got to take the ball by its horns here. Oh, he's just he overdone that too much. Well, pot this in the top right. Looks like he's going to nudge into that red. It'll leave him a shot. is a bit all or nothing. Oh, it's Mr. Cannon. Can 
he get through to the red into the bottom right hand corner? If he can, this is a chance. Can he see enough of it? You can see some of it definitely, but how much can he see the potting angle? Oh, that clock ticking down again. He's used his extension. He's digging deep here. Try to swerve it a bit. He's got the pot. But what is he going to do next? So is he is he looking at playing the double? But he's going to play the double. The white ball's going to move the black, and that'll open up the the pocket for the yellow ball to trickle in. Is that right? No, just a trickle, just a safety shot. Yeah, quite like that shot. <coughs> it's given David something to think about. Don't think we'll see David with any heroics at this visit. Okay, that clock ticking down. Oh, he has gone for it. Not sure about that selection of shot from David adding up. I mean, luckily he's not left this. He was a long way off that pot as well. So I think we're gonna see possibly another containing shot from Chris. I don't think this drops in off the far jaw to see it just drop I don't think it does no it doesn't now he's pushed the black into a safe position exactly what he not wanted or he didn't want I think he's opened up the middle pocket for that red to go as well yeah, there you see it it's opened up this frame now Looks like David Adnall, he's going to get to the hill now on seven. One frame away from getting to seven. make sure he doesn't leave himself any hampered queuing. Leave this as simple as possible. I would have loved it to be another foot and a half across, but this is all he's got. Should be okay. himself the uh, the longer black now but he'll back himself to pot this one to put him one frame away from the place in the last 16 oh it's wobbled in <sighs> wow he'll be pleased to see that drop any harder and that misses Chris Beaumont needs the remaining four frames now to get into this next round. Legendary big break from Chris Bowron. <laughs> Balls are smashed everywhere. Oh, that felt a little bit awkward again.
that's another mistake there from Chris. He really wanted to be canning that red. So he pushed the yellow out. And it's going to be pretty difficult now to get that yellow out. Unless you can do it from putting this in one into the bottom right hand corner. Screwing back on and off his cushion. And dislodging them out. He's going to have to make a decision. That clock was ticking down. No, it looks like he's putting all his eggs in one basket here. This is not the time when you're getting down to the last few balls, trying to get your hard ball out. Needs an angle. I think he's got one. There's no guarantees of being on a yellow after he makes contact to dislodge it out. Far from perfect. What's for the side? Well, he's going to have a shot. It's turned out okay. It's not easy. does he do here? Does he try and stun this in? Leave himself a double on the yellow? Or does he run it through? I think the shot is to try and run it through. He's trying to run it through, but he's missed the pot. Yeah, he's under a bit of shot pot pressure again. Chance now for David to get this match finished at this opportunity. To be a little bit shorter pace, but should be okay. Just got to drift past this yellow off the cushion, just below the middle, you know, the the blue spot, just below that. It's got a nice little nudge off the yellow. He is going away from the black now, though. I think he's got to come off the top cushion and back down. Might bring the uh, the middle pocket into play. Played this lovely. And now this simple black into the right centre to get his place in the last 16. And there you see it. The Manx man, David Adenall, safely in the last 16. 7 3 winner against Chris the Bazooka Boron. Didn't see the best there from Chris, but uh, I'm sure we'll see him back on our screens at some point. He's not had a bad weekend. There's our winner, David Adder all there. He'll be happy there to beat Chris. And I'm sure he's going to be having a few words with Kevin Barton. So I'll probably just go silent now for a little bit and uh, we'll head over to the studio and where Kevin Barton will be talking to David Adder. Thanks, Mark. And I'm here with David after that uh, oh, workmanlike, would you call that performance? Yeah, very much so, yeah. Uh, been struggling a bit with my form recently, so uh, it's, it's just pretty much, yeah, just sticking in. Um, it's just waiting for the chances. I uh, didn't know if they were going to come early doors, uh, so it's just sticking in and just waiting for the opportunity. Yeah, well, you certainly finished the match off in style, some, some nice positional shots there, so you, do you feel like your game's coming together a bit? You know, a few more matches, so you, you know, you're getting into the latter stages of this tournament? 
Yeah, I definitely feel as, as further you go along the tournament, you know, you get more match practice, which is always good. Um, you know, the, the, the more of that I get, I feel I do get a bit sharper throughout the tournament, whereas the first round is always <laughs> a bit of a banana skin. But um, and obviously, with the, every match being such a tough match, then, you know, you can go out any stage. So. How do you um, find yourself playing in the arena and the shot clock? Because, you know, it doesn't happen every day. Do you, do you think do you feel like you adapt naturally to it, or is it a bit of a struggle? Tell us your thoughts on that one. I think it's on the day, to be honest, how you feel on the day, but I personally love it. Uh, um, I'd play every match on there if I could. You know, won't guarantee I play well all win, but it's, uh, but yeah, I'd, I love being out there and you know to have the opportunity to be out there is brilliant. Uh, and word about Chris, obviously, um, you know we all know what a great player he is, and just wasn't quite his day. A few things just didn't go for him in that match. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, yeah, he played some good stuff. Um, it was just the odd fraction, the odd positional shot that that caught him out. Um, Bit, bit of bad run as well and I got quite a bit run at the crucial times as well and I feel that made a difference really. Did it help having a few of your fellow uh, Manx men uh, uh, in the corner supporting you there? Yeah very much so yeah it's uh, after, after coming here on my own for so many years from the Isle of Man it's nice to have uh, a few of us now you know seven here at this event so it's, it's fantastic to see them come and having a go themselves and, and uh, more people representing the flag. Yeah, it's like an army of, uh, of uh, coming over from uh, from the island now. It's great, and obviously shows the impact of the Isle of Man going over to the island, uh, the IPA going to the island for the for the grand finals. I certainly hope so. Yeah, I mean, when I, when I when I come on the tour, you know, I was I want to try and put the Isle of Man on the pool map, so to speak, and uh, you know, I hope I've done that in some way. But to to have the the actual event come to the Isle of Man is just that was just. I couldn't believe it, but so it was fantastic, and and how everyone has received that event as well, because uh, I wasn't sure if it was going to go, you know, the extra travel for some people, uh, but everyone's took it on really well and, and really enjoyed it and been really positive about it. Yeah, and I know people have already booked the flights, so they're already talking about uh, you know November and the grand final, so um, yeah, a lot of excitement uh, coming up to that event. So we can't wait to be there, David. Well played. We'll let you get off and uh, catch your breath for five minutes, probably before your ne your next round. Thanks. So uh, hopefully we'll see you later on. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks a lot, okay. David. So, a good performance there from David. He uh, takes his place in the next round. Probably not his best performance, Mark, but he got the job done. And um, he's one of those players that could just spark into life. And that could be just be the thing that to make that happen. Yeah, he had a, a very quiet Friday uh, in the pro event. And uh, things like that, some things was going his way in that match. And Chris got a little bit frustrated with some of that. Uh, but, he's, you know, he's had some great clearances as well. So we can't really take that away from him. And he's got over the line and got a good result against a very good player in Chris Bowron. Yeah, and uh, all you can do is get the W. He's in the mix, he's in, uh, he's in the next round. But was that putting him in the last 16, I think it does, not it? Yeah. So, um, yeah, only three or four matches to go. And, uh, you know, he could be lifting the title. Could he, could he get his first IPA title? Yeah, I mean, he's going to have to play a little bit better than he has against Chris there. He's played OK, but it's, it's not good enough to be lifting the trophy. Um, but sometimes players can be like that, start off slow and then build yourself up and, and produce some brilliance as, when you need to and uh, Dave is more than capable of doing that he's, he's been on the IPA ranks now for three four five years and uh, is a very experienced player very experienced professional player and uh, there's no reason why he can't go deep in this tournament who knows he could be lifting a trophy at the end what what improvements do you think he's got to make in, in the next round and if he wants to lift the title uh, come tonight? Yeah, I think it's about taking his finishes out quite easily. Uh, sometimes he, he was trying to get on balls and he, he never got onto the right way. That he, he, he nudged into too many balls for me. Uh, you know, I did commentate on it and um, I think it, it's about making sure his positional player is really A1. Otherwise, he's going to struggle against these top boys. Well, we'll be uh, picking up the uh, open event um, after our next match and we're delighted to be bringing the ladies final that's coming up next uh, between Danielle Randall and the current ladies world champion Harriet Haynes. Um, tell us about this match, Mark, what, uh, what are your expectations? Well, Danielle Randall, she's been to two finals already. Unfortunately, she's lost on both occasions, but the ladies game is just so strong at the moment. Harriet Haynes, she's used to winning this. She's all, already our current world champion as well and uh, it's going to be really tough for Danielle Randall. But she's had some great results here already, Daniel has. She's beaten Alexandra, who, got, who, who won the tournament in Coventry. 
Um, but she's playing a very experienced Harriet Haynes and uh, it's going to be a really tough nut to crack, to be honest. Danielle's got to be at the top of her game, but this is going to be a sensational final. Yeah, I think Alexandra Good was beaten in the final by Harriet yes. um, oh, at Coventry. Oh, 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 um, but Harriet is the dominant force in the ladies' game at the moment, isn't she? Yeah, she is a current IPA world champion and uh, she seems to just be picking up title after title and... Uh, She's a very attacking player, really great to watch. But Danielle, I think everyone's chasing Harriet to be the... Obviously, she's going to be the number one player, possibly, at the end of the season. I mean, she's going to have to accumulate a lot of points to, to overcome Vicky and all the other people that are up there. But Danielle's doing the things right. She's getting to finals, and they're all chasing. They're all, they're all, they're all really gone to another level now, this ladies' game, and it's going to be a really intriguing final. Yeah, as you say, the strength in depth. Can, can Danielle be third-time lucky? Can she get over the line? And if so, what has she got to do to beat uh, Harriet? Well, she's got to be on top of the game. She really has. She's going to have loads of following back at home in Ireland and uh, around the UK. Everyone wants Danielle to win this. But Harriet Haynes, what a superb player. She needs to be on top of the game. This is going to be some final. OK, Matt, thanks a lot. I think it's time to get the action underway. Over to the comm box, guys. So I've made it back again from the studio. This is going to be the ladies' final. Daniel Randall from Ireland against Harriet Haynes from England. Can Daniel Randall upset the odds here? It's going to be a huge task for her, but she's more than capable of getting this title under her belt. She's just got to relax out there, just... Uh, Try not to think about it too much and just take her chances. A great player, Danielle is. She'll be looking forward to this. Really will. I think this is going to be a terrific final. It's not a best break there, a little bit loose, just slid off the side. Not open up too kindly either. So this would be a, a very tough clearance for Harriet. in the legs very attacking player as I said in the studio how he is so she'll be taking at all opportunities here Shot there. I think it's just opened up nicely now. Can she see enough of this red to make the plant? Looks very tricky. Oh, I was trying to pot it. 
Oh, she's missed. Danielle is back to the table. A little bit earlier than she expected to be. Look at that bottom left-hand corner. And two yellows, they're blocked in there. Maybe three yellows are blocked. Clever shot there from Danielle. Just covered that pocket, got a bit of an advantage down there. So Danielle Randall, she's back at the table again. This frame's turning to be a bit of a scrappy one. I'm delighted to be uh, joined in the commentary box by our number one ladies player, Vicky Lomax. Vicky, thank you very much for joining me here in the comms box. And uh, I know it's a shame that you're not in the final to be playing this match, but uh, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, I know you know plenty about these two ladies, don't you? Yeah, no, I, 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 I don't, to be honest, I don't deserve to be in this final. These ladies have been class this weekend, I've not. So, I think Har Harriet's coming in as massive favourite, but I have a feeling this is Danielle's time. Yeah, well, uh, well I just said in the studio to Kevin, I mean, she's been in two finals now. She lost one to you. And uh, she lost one to, I can't remember that other lady's name, back in Bournemouth last year. Uh, she came from the uh, the other tour. And she had, she'd only been the one. Oh, so Kelly Denton. Yeah, yeah. And she Kelly won Denton. it that yeah. time, didn't she? Kelly, Kelly was class that time. Brilliant, yeah, so. brilliant player she was. And Danielle, she came up, uh, unfortunately, against two class acts and one of them was yourself. So, but as you said, you played her back in the Isle of Man, didn't you? Mm -hmm. In January. Great final. But... She's going to have to produce some great stuff here to be Harriet. Harriet's definitely the informed player. I, mean, I played Harriet in the last round of the winner's qualification, and I played very well. Very, very well. Harriet was just better. <laughs> so Danielle's going to have to be on it. Yeah, and I said that at the very start, just before you come in, that Harriet Haynes a very attacking. She's got a very attacking style. With Danielle, she can play a little bit tactical at times, but she has got an attacking style of her own. Yeah, and, and I think that's the key to beating Harriet. Harriet will go, go, go all the time. So if it's there, she's got, but there is a few errors sometimes because she's so attacking, but then you've got to punish her, and that's the key for Danielle. If she can punish those odd mistakes, then she's a chance. Yeah, and we've already seen the a mistake already in this frame from Harriet. Uh, she didn't get the right position. Plus, she was probably a bit over attacking. But again, this is going to be an attacking shot. I think she tried to screw that along the cushion, trying she to open to up it. that pocket. For me, I, I'd have played a more control on taking on the skilly. You know, because because even doesn't come off. She's still in prime position, but. Anyone that thinks that Harriet, you know, doesn't care or is too gun co the way she's playing this frame means she wants to win this match. Yeah, it's a very cagey start from both players here. Now, is this a chance that Danielle needs to probably take? It's not going to be easy to get back for the black. 
you get this pot here down the cushion. It's got this a little bit of trickiness about it. But how do you get back from the I back? I don't think she can get out from the back. You've, you're going to have to welly it. <laughs> just a bit of luck, I think. Yeah, and you need to hit that bottom cushion and just glance past that red to hit the side cushion to have any chance of getting back. But you've just got to hit it so hard. But Danielle, she looks really confident out there. I, mean, she, I think she's just got to play positive. But again, she just, she she's just a like container it. shop. There's not, there's not a lot wrong with that. And I don't blame her for that at all here. Well, it's going to give Harriet a chance now to really... Harriet's just going to cover this now. Yeah. yeah. Double, though. Big double. Play it hard. Hold for a bit of luck. It's what I'd be doing. Yeah, I like that shot. Great call there, Vicky. One double. And as I say, play it with pace. Yeah, because you, you, you nudge it off this bottom red. She's probably going to stay over the back. She's just about the white. It's just, just the white. Yeah, she's second. For, oh, I don't know what it is. Because she's second favourite for this frame at the moment. Yeah. And I think when you are this much second favourite, you've got to take a chance if it comes. Yeah, and this chance here. I mean, she's not going to get and a chance, she's, unfortunately. Yeah. But if she had a chance of going for that yellow, screwing it across, it, the white would have stuck in there. I think she's missed an opportunity. Okay, it's not here easy for Harriet though. Even if she gets two, it's a little tricky with the balls close together. Delicate little shot here. And enough. As long as she stopped her from hitting the one in the top half of the table, I don't think she has. I don't though. think she has, no. So she's going to have the same problem. Oh. Harriet decides that she can tie this up some more, but the oh, yellow's down. Disastrous. And, and these mistakes that you've just mentioned that exactly. Harriet's making, these are the things you've got to punish. This frame's done. Danielle doesn't miss these. But again, that's well, well, very, that's very... Commentator's curse. I might, be, I might be being a bit harsh here, but that's very poor from Harriet. She's got total control, no reason to risk. Yeah, no, oh, go on, Dan. Just go, go. go. It's got to go. It's got to go. No, it's fine. okay. Perfect. I mean, I've commentated on quite a few of Harriet's games now, and I do think she always starts off very slow, but she does build herself into the match. Did so. I? You said that she was three up on me in 18 minutes. <laughs> well, probably not that time. <laughs> probably not that time. But that. That's, uh, that was a bit of a, an untidy frame there. And again, the confidence for Daniel is that because she she shouldn't win that. She's thinking I'm one nil down. I'll, I'll go again. She's now one nil up. So let's build on that confidence. Yeah, race to six though. There's plenty of pool left in this one. Our first chance here to look at Harriet. She, she does she play the cup break sometimes? She's more head on break, isn't she? I've seen her do both. You see her do both. But yeah. I've also. Her break isn't great this weekend. She struggled. I think she's better than head on break, personally. My, my opinion. Yeah. yeah, she's lying up. She'll go head on. Oh, she's going to have a. Yep, she is. And I think this is her strongest break for me. Yeah, very controlled. Just made sure the white ball got back to the middle of the table. But it's the same as Danielle's. It's dry. I fancy Danielle for these. For yeah, these yellows. I think she, I think I fancy. It's just a shame this pot here, the uh, the opening pot on the yellow, takes her away from the one in the corner. A little hampered. But if she leaves the yellow just over the black to the bottom left, I think she's back in prime. Don't want to rest on that red. Uh, just enough. Okay. That's fine. She's going to have a chance here, and she's uh, she's going all out for these, let me tell you. This is just... Danielle clears these in practice nine times out of ten. It's just a little bit of pressure. Again, because she's so hungry for that first title. It's like the hardest one to win. Yeah. It really is, isn't it? That first title. She's and more than capable. Yeah, and, she it's and she deserves one, without a doubt. Puts a lot of time and effort in, Danielle does. Steady. It's getting a, li a little tricky now because the yellow doesn't go to the middle. Yeah, if that yellow goes to the right yeah. centre, this is easy. Yeah. 
I think she's going to have to stun this pass. Two across yeah, for the, le the yellow to the bottom left. Yeah, that, that yellow you said above the black does yep. go to the bottom left. And That's she's it. played that lovely little control shot. So I'm expecting her to set the two balls in the bottom half of the table first. And go back up table. And it's all about the positional play of that one over the, t over the, uh, yeah. the corner pocket. It's the, black, the black is so open now. She's, oh, I'm surprised she's doing this way, but she's probably thinking, don't want to go up and down. Well, if she can drift this back down nicely, the only problem is this, this is isn't yellow. Easy. Does it go to the right middle? Well, if it does, there's, there's only a little window to, to get your white ball in. I'm not sure about this way. Oh, Danielle's at the table. She's She's looked at it. Needs to concentrate, make sure this pot goes. Oh, she's snatched. missed that one. Snatched a little. Like you said, there's a little bit of nerves out there. And expected. No, be a <sighs> yeah, I'm sure Harriet won't be feeling sorry for her, though. She will to make amends, trying to level this match up. Tricky little pot this one. That's yeah, wide. Again, just a little lax, a little lazy, didn't really play position, just potted it and the barbie on something. Yeah. But again, this is where Danielle, she needs to take this opportunity. You don't get many of these against no. Harriet, so. No, this isn't easy though. So make sure the just make sure pot. the pot natural angles should be coming back for the same pocket. <sighs> Still a little bit of uh, Harriet played work to do though for Harriet. I think she played the cannon already? here. Yeah. And Danielle should feel a little bit unlucky there that she left that cannon, but she's had a couple of chances in this frame already. I don't think she should have took the one over the top corner, Danielle. I think she's missed a trick. I, I really don't know. Like you said, you don't want to be going up and down the table, of course, but because there was so much room for the black... She's guaranteed that, yeah, a You guaranteed a, a shot, so... Yeah. Yeah. Again, I'm... So There's a white ball. Is that Harriet's shot? Because the red above the yellow only goes to the left centre, and she was on it then. Has she tried to dislodge it out then? or But there's no reason why she shouldn't have took that on then, as you said. But now, I think she's struggling. Yep. She's there's a the containing shot. Does it sneak for a double? Oh, no, two times. Yeah, I don't think it doubles. Definitely doesn't treble. Just got to probably play a containing shot of her own. Develop the yellow. Try and yeah, hide the cue ball. Cut, I'd cut it thin and come back the white to where it is now for me, but, but Danielle's playing something aggressive. Yeah. Oh, no, she's done the shot, yeah. Yeah, playing. But she left this one into the left centre. A bit too hard, yeah. That's a fine clip into the left centre, but I think it's uh, an opportunity you probably see how it's going to take. Yeah, she's got that on and had a nice little nudge And a favourable nudge, yeah. <laughs> Again, we all get them. You, you you play aggressive. You do get the nice nudges, you know. Okay, simple clearance, Harriet. But I'm not doing it. I'm not doing comments. It's curse again. <laughs> this is a tricky little stun shot. Got to be careful of the corner pocket. And she has, she's played that very well. So, two balls remaining to level this match up. I think she's just going to be dropping these in. The black into the left centre. I don't think she'll be doing anything uh, nah. extravagant. Yeah, just simple. Simple it is. This black into the left centre to level the match up. Is it, is it there? Oh. oh, wow. 
Off the far jaw. Gravity is on Harriet's side. <laughs> Maybe Harriet's feeling a few nerves as well. Definitely. <laughs> oh, she's looked up to the skies. She's happy. One frame each. And look at look at the body language difference. Yeah, a little bit down there, Danielle. She, I think she knows there's a bit of an opportunity there. They've both missed a fair share of chances, so one one's probably a fair it's reflection. It's fair, yeah. And Danielle, this is what I say. To, I'm good mates with Danielle, and, and she's so good, but she's she's so down sometimes. I think it's got. She's very critical yeah. of herself, isn't she? Just the saunter. Come on, Danielle. Let's get some fight. I like Harriet as well, guys. <laughs> yeah, we know you've got to win you in the commentary box. So you've got to be biased. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you're showing that. It's a great break. Yeah, it is a good break, and that's the best break of the match so far. I think if she's... Again, the women's game is a little negative sometimes. But this is the great shot. Yeah. yeah, great shot. These are the chances now. She has to really just make sure, give Harriet something to think about, sat in that chair, and clear these up. Just, just yeah, just mind her work a little bit. She could have gone either way here. Oh, just that's okay. It's fine. Play this to the bottom, all right? Yeah, she's got choices of the yellows here. Yeah, just how she sees it. Try and keep it simple. Don't try and do too much. Just don't leave yourself straight. How many times do we do that as players? <laughs> lots and lots and lots. <laughs> well, I think she's left herself hampered. And that's not great either. Plenty of room. Pump this in. Come up. Say block. Well, there you are, a bit, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be easy peasy. <laughs> the way that Vicky said that. I've just missed the two foot straight black. <laughs> so don't listen to me. Needs a nice nudge uh, now. I think she's all right. She's okay. It's okay. That was a nice nudge. It's not the shot she's played. But Does the it? yellow go to the bottom left? Well, I think uh, she can take both these yellows into the, the left centre. Yeah, she's just got to put a well, nice little control screw. But this early stage is, there's going to be a few nerves. Just needs to drift this in. She's got the pot, mm. but the white ball's got away from. Probably didn't, it wasn't even possible to hold. Yeah, but that's as you I said, bottom left. Bottom maybe it does go. But how much of the yellow can she see now? Not a lot looking at that angle. Yellow That's safe. the worst that I've come for her, I think. Yeah, she's a little bit down, isn't she, Danielle? Should have played that with a bit more positiveness. I think yeah, it's not great, but maybe just play a whack attack. Just get the Rello out. Make sure now. it doesn't tie up. No, she's struggling. Yeah. And again, a woman of Harbert's, uh, you know, experience, she won't lose this frame from here. And she's got a tough, a couple of tough balls to think about. She'll just yeah. hold off the yellow here to, to play the red and sit back again. She's left-handed though. She's a perfect shot for her. A little bit straight on this one, but as you said, just drift up towards the yellow. She's not next to the yellow. Oh, well, she overdone that then, but she's okay. She's going away from her work a little bit here. And now this is a big pot. I, th I think it's just prime. The fact it's a bit difficult, but she's got a natural angle to just bang this in, come across. 
Great pop. Okay, little tricky little drop in. But one I expect Harriet to get. Oh, she's missed another one in. Well, I say another one. She should have missed a black in that one. Well, Danielle. A chance to uh, regain the lead. Big chance. Got to take. Has to. Play it confident, like she does. Play it, just stun it. Come on. On and off the cushion. Mm. And just leave yourself a straight black. Yeah, just drops it in. That's fine. Love it. You'd like to see it in with a bit more passion, wouldn't you? A, a little bit more punch. I'm it. more of a punch player, yeah. yeah. But that's because I'm rubbish. <laughs> rolling balls. So you me. <laughs> I'm a ticky wing arm. It's black then. Oh, oh it's white. disastrous. And the white's gone down as well. Oh, what an opportunity for Danielle there. Again, going back to that yellow, yeah, she just didn't seem to have the confidence. Oh, I just, I just, I roll it, I leave myself a shot, just rather than being like the Danielle that we know. Bang, bang. It's history now. She's 2-1 down. And she needs to start picking a game up. Oh, just why Harriet just nips out of the arena. We'll talk about some of the uh, latest scores in the Open. We'll find them. So this weekend, then, Vicky, have you enjoyed it this weekend? I've had a great weekend. Do you think the setup and that's been pretty good? The tour has been brilliant. Um, let's talk about the room. The last tour had a bit of criticism around it, and, and like so, but but this tour has been different level, brilliant. Time is scheduled. The, the, the space around the table, the setup has been brilliant. Really, really good. Yeah, it's uh, definitely been a, a lot of hard work put into this one, and uh, it's paying off. So, who's in the quarterfinals end of the Open event? Corey Ree safely in seven one winner of Liam Roberts. Scott Pope, who beat me, he's seven. He won seven two. He must be brilliant, then, Mark. He, he's one of the best <laughs> players on the planet. He's a good player though. He's a tidy player. Mark Boyle, is he going to get back to back Open wins? Imagine seven what one a result that would be. He's won seven one against Andrew Whitfield. And in the other matches, Lynn Davis one frame away from beating Liam Dunster, the world champion, wow. the number one. He's 6 5 ahead. You just see him in the top half of your screen now. Liam's at the table. And is that match going to go down to decide? I'll keep you right up to date with that one. Wayne Fryer 3 1 up against John Herridge. David Adenall 2 1 up against Evan Parry Williams. Craig Marsh, 6-5 down against Rob Donkin. Rob Donkin, one frame away. I can just see him in the top right and part of your screen oh, there. Rob Marsh Donkin. is at the table at the moment. Is that going to go 6 all as well? Kieran Kay, 3-1 ahead against Clint Ianson. That's just on wow. the next table where Liam Dunster is. Clint's at the table. Is he going to be reducing that to 3-2? Lots of pull going off. We are going to be having the amateur final on here at some point, but with Wayne Fryer and Linz Davis still batting away in the open, them two have got to play each other. They're going to have a late night. <laughs> They'll be on a table in the corner on the road. Lights off. How's my, how's my mixed doubles partner going? How's Rob Donkin doing? Rob Donkin, 6 5 head against Marsh. You've got. Come on, Donks. And he's on the table now. I can see him. Yeah. Is that to close the match out? Is that to close the match out? Can't really see all the table there. But we'll keep you up to date with that one. Back to this match. Harriet, big break. Great break, really. 
Generate a lot of power there. One of each. So the yellows, we want you to elect in. Just that one yellow next to that red. That's the tricky one. And landing hampered there. That's not going to help. But this is on and off the cushion. This is awkward queuing. Look how close she is to that red. Wow. There were some nervous moments there for Harriet. This one good shot here. One good positional play. She's going to be extending the lead. I'm surprised she didn't take that position. long, really. But, but she's on this. And these, these tables are playing lovely this weekend. So she floats this in. It will go. But what you're doing here, you're going, obviously playing a long pot now. Then you... Uh, I'm not sure about that one. Pick. Explain. <laughs> Did it not go? Did it not go past the yellow? Obviously <laughs> it didn't. shot I don't know what to make of that one no. we can make what we want of it Danielle's back to the table and she needs to get these misses out of her head pronto if she wants to keep within this match and have a chance of lifting her, her first IPA title she keeps giving herself opportunities she needs to continue to do it Easy, these are these reds. But the reds are easy, it's the black. So she just needs a nice little angle on one of these two reds. It's just a little nudge. Can she drift down into that gap now? I think she's tried to. And that has made, That's things made it twice as hard. It's a bit of a disaster, if you ask me. And, and I think. In this situation, let's be honest, the Williams game is, is not the men's game. So sometimes don't chase it if it's not there. Play the right shot, get yourself back in the frame. You know, we're, we're not Liam Dunsters, we're not Dean Shields. You're welcome, hon. <laughs> <laughs> is he told you to say that? It's, <laughs> not, it's not about. You know, just, just, just play it. You see, for me, with the red that she potted, I'd probably left that there and try and open these yeah. two up. It opens and put it some and pressure on Harriet. Yeah. Now, there's no pressure on Harriet. No, she, she can put anything she wants to Harriet. If Harriet was three up, I know for a fact she'd be rolling this into the middle, taking it to the top left and screwing it into the black and yellow. She would. But this is a final. <laughs> so she's just going to leave... Danielle, nothing. Well, she's leaving Danielle an opportunity here. Especially when I safe I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. I don't know why she's not <laughs> pied that in the middle and then clipped off the yellow near the black. Yeah. Got a yellow out and drifted open. the ball to the top of the table. Because then reds clearly don't go past the black. Well, I think Harriet's missed an opportunity as well. Both of these players are missing glorious opportunities to get the great control of this frame. And now Danielle... And she just, there's one of them. She's got a bit of an angle. She's going to have a shot here. She, reverse, she can play the ball. Reverse back double. She can play the ball to the left corner. Uh, the right corner, sorry. I think she just drops this in the middle and plays the back double. Yeah, sorry, that's not what I mean. Yeah, what as mean, as yeah. we look, yeah. And there's not any major danger to the where the yellow is. Yeah, good pop. Yep. But again, overdone it a bit, I but I think have. I think it's not bad. You'd rather be a bit low, though, wouldn't you? Like I said, to play the back double. But yeah, the only problem is you this. You don't have to punch this now to miss a double kiss. If it's rattled, green. There's a bit of good news there. Is that she's pushed that yellow to the side cushion? What is that good news? 
This is Howard Harris. She'll pop this in, screw it off the right cushion, leave herself on the left. She's missed that by a yard. Has she been lucky? I think oh, she has. Ah, come on. That's the slice of good field. She had all that table and that look where that yellow has landed. I think Danielle, if she can double this up into the top right hand corner, maybe that's the what she needs to do. Crucial times of this match now. She needs to level this match up really, Danielle. No, she's at the black. She's under a bit of shot clock pressure. That black's drifting towards that bottom pocket. Oh, that's, that's also a disaster. I think if that black did go, I think we'd put Harriet under all sorts of pressure. Is Harriet going to be going for these? No, she's she's been nudged this off. Leave it in play. Leave Danielle no shot. Where's a, oh, I thought yeah. she might have got a double kiss then. Is this the leg of lamb time? The cowabunga shot. <laughs> this. You've got nothing to lose, have yeah. you? I mean, you, you, there's not really a good safety shot. You're going to be opening up the yellow. Just get get the black moving. Get it Correct. moving into an angle. Make something happen. Trying a containing shot. I just, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure about that. There's no... Actually, very, very precise with that, but... Oh, oh that's only just dropped in off the far <laughs> jaw. Again, going away from a work. This is tricky. Well... Maybe we'll just criticising Danielle's selection of shot there. But it could pay off. So it's not straightforward. Harriet just used her extension there. Great pot Touch. though. Brilliant pot from Harriet Haynes. And it looks like she has settled right into this match. Opens up a two-frame lead. Three frames to one now. This is going to be a mammoth task now for Danielle to get back into this match. She's had massive. glorious chances. Yeah, I think that's massive. I, I, I hope she makes the game this now, Daniel, and I hope she comes back. But again, look at the body language. Two difference of players yeah. there. There really is. Danielle looking down. Yeah, look it up. She's got a bit of a lift from that. She could easily be 4 0 down. And Harriet is, isn't. She's 3 1 ahead. Danielle, what can she do to get back in this match? Well, I can tell you, your favourite, Rob Donkin, he got through against Craig Marsh, seven frames to five. Uh, Donks, Donks has done it. Yeah, Donks is into the quarterfinals. He plays the winner of the Kieran K. Clint Ironson match, which is currently locked at 3 all. The Dunster and Davis, well, Lindsay Davis, is locked at 6 all. As you can see, Liam Dunster yeah, is at the table there. He has some deciders, that Dunster. <laughs> he really does. He wins a lot of them. So then, Danielle. Side of the cut break. It's looking dry. It is. Look how untidy this table is. What do you go for here? Yeah. This is a uh, uh, thing. You pick a colour set to get gain in the table. Yeah, she's, got that one. she's still got a choice. So. She'll take the red to nib now and then. If she's feeling super aggressive, which she normally is, yeah, she might play in the red in the middle and crash into everything. And three one ahead. She's probably yeah. got not a lot <coughs> to lose, really. I mean, she's relying on this yellow, mm -hmm. travelling down on the cushion and getting that red out. I, I don't think it's on. I think it can come out. No, I don't think it could. 
not bad, but she's running out of balls to get that red out. She's probably going to be left with a possible double. I think she should take this one now on on a cushion, cut it in and come across. Yep, well, and play she, this as a cannon. Yep. She, as you said, she's been super attacking. Yep. This and been attacking again. Great and shot. what a shot from Harriet Haynes. Brilliant shot there. That was a tough pot, that was. And once it's made it look very easy. Imagine if I could play the shots that I talked As good as you can call them, yeah. <laughs> imagine. <laughs> Can't imagine that. This is not a, this is, she'll try and draw this back. Oh, she was asking a lot there of that middle pocket. Now Danielle can yeah, put the hard one, Harriet can. in all sorts of trouble here. Danielle will just play a snooker now off the side cushion. Is that yellow that's looking very close to the cushion? Is it just off the cushion? Here it is. So she nailed this right behind these three. Oh, she should have done better there. <sighs> Missing some opportunities. Careless. I did that yesterday. About 18 times. <laughs> <laughs> so, never chance for Harriet. Oh, she's shot. not good shot. missing that one. It's a brilliant shot. These are the shots that she's good at. These long ones. Plays a lot of snooker, Harriet does, doesn't she? She plays a lot of hockey sports. She puts so much practice and time in. Mm, this is why she's so good. Yeah, three, four years ago when she came on the scene, she was, she was clearly very good. Now she's just a different level. Missed it into the middle and give away the free shot. Little. Commentator's so, curse again. <laughs> so, Danielle. I'm surprised she didn't take that up into I the top mom, pocket. Yeah. I know it was easier to probably pot into the right centre, but there's always risky kissing into balls. Yeah, just the control plant here. That's fine. Yeah, opened the ball. That's all she needed to do. Be a bit disappointed. She's pushed that yellow to the the bottom cushion, but shouldn't be a problem. She can play on it after this next one into the bottom right hand corner. And really, this should be three two now. So she's really punched that one in. But this is the, she put in a bit more effort into that one. Yeah. Better queuing confidence, yeah. Yeah, show a bit more confidence with uh, less, yeah, less punching them in. Yeah. Cue through. Yeah, it's got the Ooh. plant, but the yellow's got away from that. It's got tricky now. I think we've got a double. That is all we've got on. And she's going to be leaving Harriet a tricky pot on the red. Oh, where's no. the red gone? <laughs> oh, that's gone from bad to worse. It couldn't have come out any worse for her, really. There's a white ball. Well, that's not ideal either. She's got the cup into the top left hand corner. Playing a double. Well. Is it a she's good got pace? it. Has it reached? She's, she's got it. She has got it. <laughs> Textbook. Four, four one. <laughs> Harriet Haynes. Maybe Harriet's a break next as well. And these frames are all getting away from Danielle. Another guilt edge opportunity missed. Very lonely in that chair there. Really does. She's just got to let her arm go now. You know, she, she thinks she's lost the match, then just let your arm go and, and just see what happens. It's not, as you said, once Harry gets ahead, she's, she's hard to pull back, isn't she? 
Yeah, because you know, if you make a mistake, she's probably going to clear. So you've got a bit of freedom if you're ahead, but when you're behind, the extra pressure on yourself is suffering. So, have it hangs to break in the sixth frame. Another power break from Harriet Haynes. Such a good break. Ball down. And Every ball in the open. And I think when she does that head-on break, she is she's more awesome with that, I believe. Well, these reds are all there for the taking. I mean, either colour set's fine. But the reds seem a little bit easier. I think she's stepping out of uh, first gear now. Probably about third gear. Oh, is, she, is she on anything? She wants to go past that for red in the same middle, but she'll take this long. She'll nail What's it. She got? Back in prime prime position. Does it, it go? Does it go to the bottom right or I don't think it goes into the centre. Just as we've uh, got disrupted a little bit. Danielle is at the table. This is it for me. She's got to take this frame. She gets this. She's tight. Yeah. Five one down. Maybe her break next as well. Yeah, five one. It's too much. She needs to keep her away from the five yeah. frames as long as possible. She's picked up the pace a little bit now, as I can see. Little straight, she's gonna have to force this, but should be fine. Yep, off the cush. Come on, yeah, these new cushions and cloth they do slide a little bit. Let's see, get another foot, and she's fine. She can drop, she can drop something. This is she's gonna come off. She played twice double, across. double, play the double. It's close, it's close, it's in. There she is, right, come on. That was a great double, that. It really was. Now we'll see how she's feeling on this shot. Because this is a shot he, he was really criticising at making. She wanted to, to punch it in. She can't drop this in. She now has me, to play you, it with you a bit You screw it back for the black in the middle, or you play it with side and take the black to the top, whichever you prefer. Okay. She's left herself a pot. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Don't like this one, though. It's tricky. It's very enough. <laughs> Does it just miss the enough? Does it hit the jaw? We're going to be the first to see if it's in. The black's wide. She's missed the enough, but she's also opened up that pocket. Does that red go? I think it does. If the red goes past the black again, I think it's just frame done. Yeah, it's another chance missed. Harriet's in missing these, I don't think. Oh, 
little shot of pace again. She wouldn't be playing this one first. Stand the rails. She might have to change her plan. Just go for oh. Now then. Now then, Danielle. That was a, a very uncharacteristic miss there from Harriet. This is a thin clip. But it was a chance. Yep, it's there. It's 4 2. Oh, I do you think this is nerves, Mark, from Harriet? Because she's not really a nervous player, but, but it is a final, so. Yeah, I think there's always nerves made on the uh, the TV table. So it doesn't matter who you are or how good you are, how many titles you've won. It's always hard winning another one. Um, to keep up that standard or the expectations of you having yourself, etc. Uh, there's always going to be nerves, isn't there? Yeah. Surely. And it's, she just knew that one more frame, she's going to put her one frame away. That's, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of what Danielle's done here. She nips out for a comfort break, two minutes, compose herself. Come back. Well, the Liam Dumpster Lynn's Davis match is finished. I just don't know though. Who won it? Well, no shock. It's the number one, the world champion Liam Dunster. He's safely into the quarterfinals. He's gonna be playing Corey Reese. Repeat of the Champions Cup it's Grand a, Final. It's a game. Uh, Lynch Davis six five ahead against him, against him there. It's a chance to knock the number one player out. Scott Clint, Pope is Clint's playing just more Clint Iancer was six three up, so he's won seven three against Kieran Kate. So Clint Iancer needs to be playing your favourite Rob Donkin oh. next. Clearly, <laughs> oh. the next match on this TV table is going to be Liam Dunster. Against Corey Reese. Straight after this match, I think, and straight after the presentation. Scotland against Wales. Yeah, so you see the top half of our screen there. Scott Pope, he's playing Mark Boyle. Mark Boyle's at the table with that lime green top on. David Adenall, he's playing that. Evan P Parry Williams. And Evan is 5 2 up and out against David Adenall. So David Adenall, he's got all the work to do. There to the left of Mark Boyle. Oh, it's going through Harriet's mind at the moment then. Looking like 5 1 now, 4 2. <sighs> I think through anybody's mind is you know you should be 5-1. You know you've got so many chances. Pretty much the game is done. Now I think she's like, oh. Chat, this big frame is. Daniel gets this for 4-3. I think she needs to change the break a bit here. Needs to put a bit more power on it. But she's very cut break orientated. She doesn't generate enough power yeah. to what Harriet does. Well then, Danielle, is that going to give you a little bit of a lift? It should do. She should come out of this frame now and be like, you know, down and out. I'm in this. Come on. Does she give her head a wobble? Much better break. Much more power. That's what we asked for, Vicky, wasn't it? Love and the there you see it. The oh, break is not bad. I think she'd like a red. Or a choice. This is this is uh, tricky. She she, she takes the red along the bottom rail and pots that. She's done. Tricky opening pot. It's a tricky opening pot. So. Well, that clock is ticking down. Just called her extension. Well, we didn't hear the clock. I think beat. she's tempted to take. Oh, it's fine. Slightly easier. Red, but 
Of a chance. It's, it's always trying to get back onto that bottom head. You should just tuck it first. I, mean, I suppose Harriet's got the same problem here. Just whether she can get onto mm -hmm. it. No, it's not come back far enough. It shouldn't be a problem. Should probably leave the two reds in the top half of the table yeah, to she, she take she the black out. Through off this red. Take the long one now. Yeah, right. take the long one now, roll down for the difficult red, and, and then the work's done. Oh, this, this one along the cushion is a little bit trickier. Well, it's probably going to do a bit more travelling than what she expected. Can she control this cue ball? It's vital. Yeah, it's a lovely pot there. Still not in a prime little, position. Yeah, a little no man's between the three, so. Yep, yeah, she's no man's land. I don't think she can she, she doesn't back in the middle. really want to be taking the top red, because that's a red for the black, so. Yeah, selecting this tougher pot, and it weren't easy, but it's dropped. She used all the pocket. I still don't think she, has she got an angle on this red. She's got a slight angle, I think. But how do you get back up for the black? She just Does she get far enough yeah, down? Just oh. leaves it slightly low. She can screw back. So this is a big shot. This is a huge shot. She knows if she misses it, Danielle could go within one frame. I don't think she'd do daft it. I think she'll run up and down and leave herself a longer black. Well, what do I know? But I, I think the better shot was to just leave herself a longer black. Because she's right. so good at long potting. Now she doesn't have the cut. She's got a double. I think that's all she's mm -hmm. got. That's not close. Slow down, yo. It's not really threatened the pocket here. Does she try and tie her up or... What, what do you think is best for here, or does I she go out for the? I don't. I don't think. I'd be sure. nudging this off the side, Kush, get that ball into play and snooker. Yeah, it probably needs to get behind it a bit so she can make sure yeah. she gets a snooker behind the the yellow balls in the open. Just drops yeah. that in. She's going to all out for these. There's no safety shot here. Again. I'd just been playing this yet off the side crush. Near the snooker. But Danielle's going all out. And fair play. Yeah, I don't think she's got the angle there to get that yellow. Oh, that's just come off the far jaw. That was a bit nervy. Yeah, nervy, yeah. These balls are not easy. Look at these three on the cushion. She'll cut this across, cover the bag. If she's a pot it, so she should be fine. She needs to make sure she gets the pocket. Has to get the pocket. <gasps> no, she hasn't. Yeah. And we've seen another Miss Black from Harriet Haynes. I don't believe you. Wow. So see you, Mark. I played Harriet yesterday. Never missed a ball. In the winner's round. Five dishes between us. <laughs> I was one. She was four. <laughs> well, I commentated on the last one. I think there was like one ball missed. It was uh, oh, yeah. tremendous. Oh, is that okay? It's okay. She's okay. Well, this is the time. You, you need to try and beat Harriet when she's missing this amount of balls. That black's a bit more safer now. She can get this awkward red, sorry, this awkward yellow out. Oh yeah, play this yellow along the cushion. Get the white up the table. If it goes in, then we can go. If not, I'm safe. Just don't want to leave her the, the double, cross, yeah. the cross double, right? Yeah. Yep. 
I've got oh, the pot of those. He's oh. left Harriet a pot here as well. It's going to be a bit hampy queuing for Harriet. But Yana's going to be in a queue arm, I think. This is an easy pot. Oh, no. Should be going for it. Having the white ball cleaned and uh, every right is so. This is a big shot. A bit wide and there's a steal. And that's a good part. Five, two now, one frame away. From picking up the UK ladies title to add to the collection that she's already got. You're definitely feeling it a bit. Definitely. There was some nerves jangling. Yeah, and if if she does end up winning this smack, she won't be happy. Because she's that type of player that, you know, is criticizes herself and she'd be she'd be delighted to win the tour, but she won't be happy how she's played in this final. Well, it's going to be Harriet Haynes to break as well. We know how well she's been breaking. connect with him that well. And Danielle, she's going to get another opportunity. I don't think yellows are too bad. They're not easy. They're not rollings. Not die, but it's, it's just, there's a two in the middle. But simple kind of be fine. I'd have gone reds. What's the difference between me and you? <laughs> yeah, well, the only reason I, I didn't like the reds is, as you've already said, the two reds at, into the left middle. They're just awkward. And there's not really a ball around them to, to do any, to get them out. I just think she's digging a hole there. Might be wrong. see a containing shot at some point can't see the clearance on I mean I suppose that does that red pass into the top left hand corner the one that's next to the yellow the middle pocket does it is it tight yes, I think it does yeah but maybe that's the reason why yeah. I'm looking at reds then yes yeah, so she, she got a nice angle there now here. she'll have an option red to the left bottom red to the middle red to the top right is key shot. She's going to have a that's choice. It. That's okay. Don't want to be on that yellow. That's okay. Yeah. This is a it's a great. chance. Yeah, it's a chance. This would be a brilliant clearance as well. Be the best of the match. Three reds away. They're not easy. It's just the the black. The black has got to either bottom pocket, so she'll have to screw back to the middle. Yeah, the black goes in both middles. Yeah. Just dropping them in. Uh, I don't think she can afford to drop this one in. I think she does need to draw this back a touch. I don't know. If she just drops it, she's got a nice angle and to screw back for the black to the same left middle. No, she has dropped it. Yeah. I'm a bit hampered now. But That's why I didn't like it dropping. just screw now. Can she get enough into this cue ball with this hampered cue in as well this is a huge shot it's tough very tough yeah 
is a tough shot. Oh, Let's oh. shoot it now. Is that going to be her last shot? Oh, the last shot where she can Harriet. see a red. I just nudge this off, I think. I'm playing snooker. Harriet, no. Yeah, there's no pressure, no. but no. She's going all out attack. Oh, that's gone wrong. She's not on anything, I don't think. She get through here. That looks tight. Could easy get through. A bit fortunate there. Still got this yellow on the right cushion. the closing moments now for the fair.com UK ladies title two yellows away and a black just misses the black perfectly oh. is this going to come out it's oh, I don't think it has it's going to be an easy snooker though it's this way she just pushes the yellow on and off the cushion puts pressure on Danielle but she's let her have a look at this red what Daniel, can Daniel can do here? Yeah. Snooker back here. Yeah, just drop the white to the bottom yeah. cushion. Just make sure it's directly behind the black. You've, sure got, the play. you've got a little bit of a uh, window to get that white ball in. Just make sure this red comes off the cushion. White ball needs to be tight to the cushion. Shot. Travel a bit more. Oh, she I left think it. she's left it. She had to hit the bottom cushion. I think she's left it. She'll be very disappointed, Danielle will. There's a cue ball. It's on the side cushion. I think this is for the title. It's there. It is there. And there you see it. Harriet Haynes is the ladies' champion. And uh, we're going to have a quick presentation. And then Kevin Barton will be talking into the studio with both players. Uh, so I'll be back with you straight after that. Thank you very much, Vicky, for uh, helping me commentate in the ladies' final. See you soon, guys. Thanks a lot, and um, I'm joined by our runner-up, Danielle. Um, tell us your thoughts on that match. Um, well, to be honest, Kev, I think all this weekend I've struggled on the mental side of the game. Um, I felt I could never really get going, and um, it just showed in the final there. I just never kind of got into my usual stride, and yeah, Harriet absolutely punished me in every way, and it's thoroughly deserved. Um, I just felt like I was too attacking, and um, yeah. I should have probably just taken a step back and breath and just uh yeah, just think about it a bit more and it just it just didn't work out. 
I mean, um, to get to the final is a, is a hell of an achievement anyway, because such is the standard of the ladies' game. So, you know, whatever's happening in the final, you must still be delighted with your progress and the way things are going and, you know, and getting to the final. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the standard here is really um, high. Um, I set, like even start of the weekend, I was thinking, oh, if I get to look, if I get to the final, I'll be lucky. And um, just I kind of took each match as it went on. I felt a bit better over the weekends, and then yeah, I, th I just was two one down that match, and uh, I was giving up already. And it just shows if your mental side isn't there, you might as well just quit. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, there was one or two chances there that probably just got away from you. Is that something that you're gonna go away and reflect back on? Yeah, absolutely. Um, to be honest, I've, I've been out of practice. Um, uh, I, like I just felt like I was a bit rushed and just trying to get into my routine and it never happened so I need to kind of practice my composure a bit more, my technique a bit more and yeah, just try and improve in any way I can. Do you think that's the introduction of the shot clock? Obviously you know you play all the tournament without a shot clock and then you're thrust into the arena yeah. um, and you've got to you know, quickly adapt. Yeah I think so. Um, to be honest I didn't feel the shot clock as much as I have in previous finals um, which is good because it's all experience. Um, there was a couple of times it was kind of beeping on 10 seconds and I was like, oh, should I say extension? Then I was kind of focusing on my shot and I should have taken a step back and call my extension. I didn't. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's good though. You get a, a good buzz off, a good adrenaline and yeah, I can't wait to play it again, hopefully. So a bit of a break and then um, obviously maybe go one step further in Coventry? Yes, hopefully. That's the okay. plan. Well, unlucky, Danielle, but you. Um, you know, thoroughly great performance to get to the final. And uh, maybe next time, you just never know. Hopefully. Thanks a lot. Cheers, thank you. So our runner-up, Danielle Randall, and um, delighted to be joined by our winner, the dominant force of the ladies' game. Harriet, tell us your thoughts. You must be absolutely delighted. Yeah, very happy. Yeah, but it was a very scrappy it wasn't as uh, good as a performance to myself as previous rounds, but you know Danielle's always going to be a very attacking player. Um, and to be fair, I kind of mopped up a few of her misses, um, but she's done extraordinarily well getting this far again. Um, just wonderful progress that she's made. It's really great to see. And, and you know your your own game, your own form. You know you just continue just to pick up the silverware. I mean, these are great times for Harriet Haynes. Yeah, I'm I'm very happy and I'm, I'm excited for the future. Um, putting a lot of work in, so you know, the, uh, reaping the rewards finally. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm delighted. You know, that just it, just very very happy to get through. The, you know, I had a really tough quarter final, semi final. So it, at the IPA, you're never going to get easy easy rounds, but I've had especially tough rounds today, mm. so I'm very happy to get through. And it's what people don't see that, like you say, the hard work that's going on behind the scenes. Tell us what you know what that hard work uh, entails. Um, I mean, practicing every day. I play in multiple leagues. I, I'm booked out for practice a month in advance. Um, travel all around all around England. I mean, I'm I'm back going back to Faversham tonight. You know, it's all the travelling that no one really sees as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and uh, obviously Coventry, so you won the first two yeah. two tour events, uh, looking for the hat-trick obviously in Coventry. Yeah, hopefully Coventry should be a very good event. You've done a really good job uh, just do, doing the format this time, it's been fantastic, well done credit to you guys at the top table, it's run perfectly and we've, we've really appreciated the work and listening to us. Well, thanks a lot Harriet, uh, fantastic performance, well played, enjoy the success and we'll see you in Coventry. Cheers, Kev. See you thanks then. a lot. So Harriet Haynes picks up yet yeah, another piece of silverware. She's going to need an extension soon to put all these trophies in. No one can really get close to her at the moment. No, they can't. And like I say, it's probably going to need a few more cabinets uh, putting into her house, etc. But uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it was a bit of an untidy match, really. Probably not the best ladies match we've seen for a final, which is um, not so disappointing. But it, we saw some glimpses of what they both can do. I think there was a lot of nerves out there. There was mm. obviously a lot of respect for both of the players as well and um, I think that's what what's happening in the ladies game now they've all got a lot of respect for each other and they're all pushing each other on and sooner or later it's going to be a, a really really tough school to be in mm. it really is so and it is difficult for them to play all the competition you know on the outer tables and then for the final that they're, they're, they're put into the arena the cameras everything the you know the, the audience watching at home the shot clock as well more importantly and it's it's really difficult to adapt isn't it just you know just flicking the switch basically yeah it is i mean hopefully at, well, at some stage the ipa <coughs> will probably going to have a very sort of um single out um competition for him at some point uh, throughout the 
the coming years and uh, when that comes then they'll probably find it a little bit more mm. natural to come into this TV arena because as you say they're playing like I don't know eight to ten matches on these outer tables coming on here where some of the the, the professional players are probably playing on this two three four times over the weekend and it's quite natural to them and hopefully sooner or later it'll become natural to them too mm. I'm sure it will and uh, in terms of Harriet just why is she so dominant at the moment what is what is setting her apart from everybody else well I was talking to Vicky and comms about that and because um, uh, I, I sort of keep an eye on some of the ladies games etc but Harriet plays a lot of snooker and she plays all the Q sport disciplines and she's obviously getting a lot more practice in than some of the other girls just talking to Danielle just as she left after speaking to you she hasn't been putting a lot of time in she's had some of her commitments etc a new job whatever it was um, and that's probably been the difference here in the final today and it's just about how they need to all put the practice in to try and all get to the same level yeah they've got to try and close that gap otherwise she's just going to she's going to run away with it could she do the clean sweep this year yeah, that's more than possible and uh, who's who's here to stop her I don't think she wants anyone to stop her but the, the Danielle's missed a trick there today. Mm. She had lots of opportunities. She could have been 4 0 up quite easily. Didn't take her chances. And Harriet punishes and Harriet does what she does best. Yeah, and men's all ladies, you've got to take your chances. 100%. At especially this at this level. <laughs> yeah. Well, so that's the ladies' event. That's uh, another one ticked off. We've got a couple more finals to go today, but uh, next up is another mouth watering quarter final between world champ uh, pro number one. Liam Dunster, we know all about, and um, the Champions Cup winner, um, Corey Rees from Wales. I mean, uh, what a mouth-watering uh, quarter-final this is. Yeah, Scotland against Wales, and as you've already said, the uh, Champions Cup winner, Corey Rees. This is a repeat of the uh, the grand final. Again, we didn't see, uh, I think uh, Liam wants a little bit of revenge for that Champions Cup. He didn't produce his best there on that table, in that studio setting. Um, but Corey Reese, he's been he's been a little bit quiet on Friday, but he's here into the quarterfinals now. He's going to have a very tough match against Liam Dunster. We've seen quite a lot of Liam on this table. We haven't seen too much of Corey. Is that going to be a difference? We spoke about it in the ladies' game where they've been played on the outer tables and they're coming in here. Is it going to be too much different? Corey's used to this studio. He, he's up for this. He wants to get another notch on Liam Dunster, he really does. And they've both come on the back of contrasting last 16 matches. Uh, Liam uh, had a final frame thriller against uh, Lindsay Davis uh, and Corey had a comfortable, I think it was 7-1 win. Um, so could that impact on the match? Yeah, it could do a little bit. I mean, um, I was keeping a close eye on the Liam Dunster match. He was 6-5 down in that against Lindsay Davis. I mean, mm. Lindsay Davis, he's got an amateur semi-final. He's going to be playing till like midnight, I think, tonight. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and Liam Dunster, he, he's just never beaten. He really isn't. Even last night against Ross Fernie in the final, he, even though he was 7-2 down, you just didn't think he was ever beaten. No. And he, he never does. He's going to be hard to really brush off. Corey needs to be producing some brilliant stuff now. Right, well, let's see if Corey can produce that brilliant stuff you're talking about or will the uh, pro number one continue his dominance? So let's uh, get over to the commentary box and damn fairway.
Boyle game has been going on a long time, but it is actually 2-1 to Boyle. It's just about run along. In the last 16, there is one match remaining. Wayne Fryer is currently 5 all with John Herridge. And the winner of that will play Evan Parry-Williams. <laughs> In a distinctly Welsh feel to events today. Lots of uh, six Welshmen in the last 16. And we are now down to just the two. And we're about to watch one of them. As Liam Dunster's first break goes awry, Black flies in and it will be a re rack. We have, of course, seen the conclusion of the ladies' event just a few moments ago. And the last thing we have to come for you is the amateur event where Wayne Parker made it through to the final earlier on with a 7-1 drubbing of Liam Clark, younger brother of IPA professional Ryan. And a second semi-final where we're still waiting on Wayne Fryer at the moment. Of course, you may have heard me mention his name a few moments ago in the last 16 of the Open. Well, he's in the semi-final of the Amateur as well. And Lindsay Davis is patiently waiting to take him on in that. So, second time of asking, let's see if we can get this game between Dunster and Corey Reese underway. Oh, oh. Now, the black nearly caused another re-rack, but just about stays out. Now Liam's got a decision to make. Initially, the obvious colour choice looks like reds, but that red next to the black, that's causing real issues. There's no obviously nice way to break that out. You feel like whichever way you hit it, there's every chance it freezes on the yellow or on the black. If you could come into it from the right hand side you might move the black out of the way but you're probably pushing the black into the two yellows. That's, that's a real tricky ball. And of course if you attack it from the bottom end of the table and go into the yellows first you are running the risk of potting the black early so Liam has chosen reds. It's going to take a really intricate shot, I think. But surgical almost to get that red out into open play. And to keep the black in a good position as well. Is this the moment that Liam's going to go into that area? If he is going to attack it from the side of the yellows, that is risky. But he's running out of options. He could a few shots ago perhaps have played the red off the red. Oh, well, that's a brilliant shot and that couldn't have worked out any better, but it was certainly a risk. The risk that Liam Dunster calculated. Tons of right hand side. In order to get round the back of the yellows and nudge those two balls apart. All in all though, a great shot. And a great start from Liam Dunster surely.
through Corey Reese's head when he saw Liam Dodson lining up that shot. He must have thought the black was going to go close, but it was in the end a shot of the highest quality from the Scotsman. And it's what's won him this first frame. He leads by one frame to nil. A superb piece of invention from Liam Dunster to complete that break dish. Corey yet to get his hand to the table in this match. Won't be too bothered by that. He'll just be waiting for his chance to strike. Man in the middle for this one. The man in black, Darren Maidment. carefully placing the cue ball going full on front ball break no cut breaks for Corey Reese. this is pure power look how straight he delivered the cue absolutely rock solid the cue ball came flying straight back towards the tip and this is a superb chance to even the scores at the very first opportunity Yellow is the obvious colour choice, not convinced he's got a particularly easy starter on reds. That yellow just above the black spot looking a little awkward, but ideally, I think he'd like to clear the one above it. And that means that would go in the middle, but he is lining up a plant here. He obviously fancies the reds if he makes the plant, but this is a big shot. This is brave, queuing over the red as well. Super shot. Corey there, getting the hard work done with the very first shot of the visit. Cannon as well just pushes that red out into open play. Got to choose whether to stick or twist with that red on the right hand side. Do you just get right in behind that? And well, I was going to say and, and drop it in, but it looks like he's left himself the perfect angle just to nudge it down towards the corner pocket. quite like this shot, I think it makes the more sense. I oh know, it's just going to drop on it. I did think he might just uh, just nudge into it, just make his life a little easier, but this is still a 9.5 out of 10 for Corey Reese. never going anywhere other than in the pocket. Probably going to have to just screw out from this red. That yellow just below the black spot looking like quite a nice blocker. Screw into it and leave yourself A simple black to reverse uh, to break dish back rather <laughs> in that goes so one apiece between these two I said their previous meetings in recent times have been close run things if the first two frames are anything to go by it looks like room for another nail biter
Oh, so we did. The usual setup on the brake. That top right corner pocket. Right over the pocket liner. I think I briefly thought that that was going to be dry, but that yellow just snuck its way in. looking table that if he had a starter on yellows well I think we'd potentially be chalking up another brake dish on the scorecard but well, the only real option on yellows is the yellow above the cue ball and that is hampered queuing right down the table Exactly, have the ideal start on reds either. It's queuing over. That red will pass to the middle. That probably makes life slightly easier for Liam. So it's all about that red on the bottom cushion. How can he develop that? I don't think that red would pass the yellow to the bottom right it might do if it does then he's only got to move that yellow if it doesn't he's got to move both of them I'm just going to take the pocket that's not the best shot pretty sure that yellow sneaks past the red He's also potentially left Corey a sniff at the red, along uh, the yellow along that rail. If he could take that without moving the red closest to the cue ball into the path of that yellow or knocking it into a position where it wouldn't be potted, I think he'd take that on. I, I just don't know if that's possible. It's really tight. Obviously not, so just the containing safety from Corey. Looks like a pretty good one. It's difficult to see what Liam would be able to do here in an aggressive sense. But Liam is a <laughs> very accomplished chess player. He plays his pool like he plays his chess. And that is a very good shot because now Corey does have a problem yellow on the table. That definitely doesn't pass now. So he's having a good look at the second yellow away from the bottom left. See if that goes. He doesn't fancy it. Looks like he's lining this up as a plant. Needs to hurry. He's nailed the plant. Does he have any kind of angle to develop that yellow over the bottom right? I'm not convinced he has. That looks very straight. That yellow down to the bottom left. He's committed to going game from here, really. He's going to have to find that angle at some point in the next few shots. I think this will do nicely. But just the way that the red and yellow are together, you've got to strike that with a fair amount of pace because if that red's just going into the jaw, I don't think that red's going to come out of the pocket. So you need to try and make sure you get the yellow away from there. Trusting to luck here. 
Oh, and he's got it. Lovely double kiss. <laughs> he will be very, very pleased with that. Trusted to luck, and it worked out for him. And now the yellows look there for the taking for Corey Reese. Looks a slightly awkward angle for Corey. I think if he screwed this straight back, he'd be screwing into that yellow. I don't know if he if he's able to to get past it to take that yellow to the centre top. He might have to come up with something different. Might be able to get into it enough. No, nope, just gonna have to leave it long. Trust his ability to pot this. It's not the most difficult shot, but it's more difficult than it could have been had that last shot come out a bit better for him. Just a little soft screw to hold for the black. And it finds its way in just about off the near knuckle. And the black follows in a couple of seconds later, and it's 2-1 to Corey Reese. Liam Dunster's break, letting him down a little bit there. Came out awkward. So it was Corey who won the tactical battle. And got himself a little break of serve. the quarter-final of the UK Open, the IPA UK Open Championships. Here from the Cedar Court Hotel in Bradford, frame number four, and it will be Corey Reese to break. Really getting down to the business end of this tournament now. Oh, Corey's just kept the cue ball out. Would have been unlucky to be kicked in like that, but that is a horrible position for the cue ball. It's a really nice split as well. The Reds, the Reds all go. They're not the easiest finish, but it's certainly gettable. Just wonder if he can get through to that red on the right-hand side of the ball climb. Doesn't appear to be looking at it. Could certainly pop the one over on the left hand side in the bulk area though. Probably would be losing a bit of control over the cue ball because of the yellow. Wouldn't want to flick off that too thinly. Would want to catch that yellow quite full. To hold for the, the red to the right centre. If he makes this, this, this clearance is on. Oh, there's the flick, and there's the in-off, and that was the concern. Corey couldn't really have done a lot more with that. Couldn't get to the bottom of the cue ball. I think he just thought, like I did, to be honest, that the contact on the yellow was going to be a little fuller than that and hold the cue ball up. Alas, it wasn't to be. And now Liam Dunster has a free shot to do what he wants with. And then one visit to presumably clear whichever colour set he desires. I would imagine he'll just be in some way nudging that red near the bottom right out and taking the reds out. They don't look particularly difficult from here. Playing this as a plant, I think. Well, okay. Either way, really. I quite like that shot, actually, gives him the option. 
reds, all yellows are now comfortably within his grasp. Yellows it is. Slightly surprising colour choice in my opinion, just because of that yellow nearest the top cushion. It's a little bit isolated. The reds look unmissable to me. That I think all these balls look unmissable to Liam Dunster. after that most difficult of yellows now and landing plum on it probably wouldn't probably wouldn't mind a, a fraction more angle just so he could punch the cue ball off the rail a bit more no, he had enough Get nice and straight on this one in the middle Again, it's another shot that requires a little bit of care and attention, this one. He needs to get the cue ball back out for the yellow over the left-hand pocket. Because that red is in the way if he just stunned it. Just rolled it through. Nothing too complicated. No heroics for Liam Dunster. in the eight ball and levels the scores. Corey might feel slightly hard done by after that frame. It was a good break and really the only shot he had on was what led to an in off. And there wasn't a huge amount that he was able to do about it. Liam Dunster capitalised as Liam Dunster does. And Corey Reese is just going to nip off, wash his hands. <laughs> As we can see, there's still a few matches going on in the background there. See on the table directly behind the stream table, Mark Boyle currently in action. Tell you he is 4-2 up on Scott Pope. top left of your screen you can see the the red and white shirt is Rob Donkin at the table just about to break off he is playing Clint Ianson and that is a quarter final two and he currently leads according to my scorecard by three frames to two but there might be another frame to be added on there if Rob's about to break off, so I'll let you know. And the, the last quarter final match due to start is just about to go on. John Herridge has made it through a final frame, final frame thriller over Wayne Fryer. Seven frames to six. So that means that will free up Wayne to go and play his Amateur semi-final against Lindsay Davis. And the 
just saw Black disappear on Mark Boyle's table as well, so he's extended his lead to 5-2. Looking good for Mr. Magic there. The winner of that match will take on Rob Donkin or Clint Ianson. And the winner of this match will take on John Herridge or Evan Parry Williams. Plenty of action still to come tonight. It's half past six now. I would imagine we'll be on your screens until around the 10 o'clock mark. So settle in, get a pizza. Plenty more top class pool coming your way. Interesting how still Leon Dunster is. Just on the left of your screen. Zero energy wasted. Absolutely statue like. Perhaps he's changed his nickname. Oh no, he's moved. moved because Corey Reese has made his way back to the arena so we're ready to go in frame number five Liam will be hoping for a kinder split than that previous frame much more like it. That is a beautifully controlled break from Liam Dunster and well the reds are just almost sitter territory. This is near enough the equivalent of an open goal for Liam Dunster. Lovely natural pattern to get around them. doesn't need to play a difficult shot here as long as he gets the order correct and it's Liam Dunster so he probably will it's impressive to see Liam running so deep in this tournament after the exertions of yesterday all the way through to the final in the professional event before being unceremoniously thrashed by fellow Scott Ross Fernie. But picked himself up, dusted himself off, and was up and about ready for his half past nine AM match this morning. <laughs> and hasn't looked back. says a lot about Liam that he was out on the practice tables well, when I was in the room at about quarter to eight and I think Liam was in there at that point there is not a more dedicated player in Paul in my opinion Need to be a slight change of plan there for Liam, thanks for that shot. I think that Cubal was stuck on that yellow. But I don't think it's going to help Corey because Liam can just drop the one in the centre. Take the red down table first and then go back up.
just wants to screw this back probably roughly to where the cue ball is now that would give him a perfect angle just to stun that brass red in just pop the cue ball across for the blacker two or three inches yeah that would do nicely I think might be a might be a fraction straight actually I just have to leave the black slightly thinner Didn't fancy leaving it thin, so just wants it straight into the left centre. Which is achieved with some comfort. So Liam Dunster, another break dish for him. Leads by three frames to two. Corey Reese once again forced to sit and watch his opponent without getting a hand to the table. Of course, the last time Liam did that to him, Corey responded in kind. Can he do the same again? Not a single dry break in this match yet, interestingly enough. Corey will not be hoping to buck that trend here. In the other matches, Scott Pope's just got one back against Mark Boyle. That's 5-3 now. Rob Donkin, Clint Hansen is still 3-2 Rob Donkin. And John Herridge, Evan Perry Williams really has only just got underway so that one's still at nil nil Corey Reese gets that cue ball flying back up the table once again and once again he makes a ball look at the way those balls have moved so ten balls nine ten balls in the top half of the table you could be forgiven for thinking he'd broken that from the wrong end that said anything he's probably moved them a bit too much it's it's not the nicest of clearances this the, the reds are okay once you get into them but I don't know what he's got to start off with he has a very thin clip to the center but your guess is as good as mine as to where the cue ball will end up I don't think there's a gap through to one of those reds in bulk could possibly be forced into yellows but Two yellows on the right hand side, they're very awkward. Yellows it is. And Corey's got far too much side into that one. And he is in no man's land. I think it might be time for Corey to shut up shop here. Just to try and contain Liam. Is he trying to drop this into the middle? This is thin. No. Safety it is. Well, Liam really with just the one ball to play with. That one down in the bottom half of the table. Tough to see how he pops that and gets back out nicely for another red. It is quite a tough pot. Could be tempted just to find some sort of relative safety with the cue ball. Maybe just knock the red out into open play and try not to leave Corey too much of a shot. Well, that hit a fair way down the rail. So 
it still dropped in. I, I think, if I'm honest, Liam was trying to cover the pocket there, the way he hit that. Hasn't worked out that way, though. And maybe this will force his hand. Because these reds aren't horrendous. He's had one go at getting... Well, he's, he's got one of those reds out, but the way they've gone together on the cushion is awkward. However, he does have a lovely ball right next to them. He's a little thin clip on that one. He's bound to be travelling into those two reds. Liam just quickened his pace, getting around the table there. You heard the 10-second beep. Didn't have a huge amount of time to work with. The key shot. Probably worth leaving that red in the middle of the table because that will go up to the top left as well. So if the cue ball does spring away from this attempted development shot, it does leave him another option. Oh, he's played one off the other, that's superb. quality piece of vision from Liam Dunster to work that one out. Looks like this is going to be another frame for Liam, stolen from a very good Corey Reese break that didn't really leave him very much. Obviously, the black isn't a formality. Pretty straight on this last red. Might have to leave a bit of distance on the black. Possible that he could stun up table either past the two yellows or through the gap, but it's tight. Oh, just about got past. Good shot. Manufactured a little angle there just to bring the cue ball back. And drops in the black as well. For good measure, Liam Dunster leads by four frames to two. Corey now has to begin to hope and pray that he gets enough chances to win this game because it's out of his hands at this point. Liam, four, two up and breaking next as well. Still no dry breaks. In this match so far. Both these players got the measure of the table in that regard. Another good break from Liam. Another table that's not without its problems. Really just the one e on either colour set. That red and yellow over to the left hand side of your screen at the moment. 
wedged in nice and close together on the bottom rail. Whichever way you go, that needs some dislodging. Ian has, as usual, used his extension straight after the break. Just going to drop this yellow in the centre to get himself on yellows. Nice angle. That yellow directly below the cue ball. Just to drift into that yellow. Got to be a bit wary here. I think if he hits this too hard, he potentially flicks into the red and wouldn't get into it. But also, doesn't want to hit it soft, too soft so that the yellow doesn't come out. Well, there we go. It was closer to that red than even I thought. Certainly closer than Liam thought because you saw him throw his arm up in frustration that was his chance to get that yellow out and now uh, he's only going to have one more and I don't think he's going to have any, any other yellows on the table when he takes it on in fact he's not going to take it on just wanted to cover the pocket but Flicked off Corey Reese's red. Can Corey find the key to unlock this frame? Can he get his red out? in a bit of a predicament here his, his natural game is obviously to attack but that red is in a really difficult position to get to there's three reds that he could use to dislodge it they're all sort of in each other's way there's tried to pot any of those and get into that of the red, the difficult one. I feel like it would be quite tricky to get there because the other reds are in the way. So if he is going to attack this, he's going to have to leave that quite late on in the finish. Oh, has he given himself half a chance here? I think he can get through to the left of those two reds around the black spot just to clip that in and go into that red he's not taking that on interesting now, he might have the angle to top this through I, I wonder if he was thinking about playing the red off the red to bring the red back out Entirely convinced by that shot. I think this is very straight. And if he is looking for red off the red, I don't know if the cue ball's going to be on anything. Well, that's what he played, and he brought the cue ball nicely back up the table to make sure he was on his other red. And actually, I think he's got a nice angle now screw back down wants to finish somewhere in the middle of that left hand side rail just about where his arm is now and that is a little piece of magic from Corey Reese. absolutely on a sixpence this has been a very good finish Not often that Liam Dunster will play a containing shot and someone will come to the table and clear up. So hats off to Corey Reese.
keeps the game alive. Is there a little hand of apology there from Corey? I'm not sure why, if there was. It looked like that went roughly to what he was intending. Doesn't look entirely happy with himself, but he should be, because he's pulled it back to 4-3, and the difference between 4-3 and 5-2, <laughs> raised to 7, is night and day. William still cool as you like. As Corey saunters over to the table, break cue in hand. His break has been excellent so far in this match, if a little unlucky. Massive splits, made a ball, hasn't come out nicely on anything in his last couple. Once again, gets that cue ball coming right back down the centre of the table. In plops a red, and this is his breast break of the match. This is a beautiful chance. Looked for just a few seconds like it was going dry. Yeah, I fully expect the scoreline to be back to levels. In no time at all, to be honest. Can't see Corey taking too much time over these ones. needs to guide against here is complacency because there are absolutely zero problems with the reds <laughs> we'll just have a quick score update while he mops these up Mark Boyle is our first semi-finalist looking to win two opens in two tours he is a 7-3 victor over Scott Pope Evan Parry Williams, currently 3 0 to the good over John Herridge in the second quarter. Of course, you know the score in this one. It's about to be 4 all, barring some kind of uh, miracle for Liam Dunster. And in our final quarter final, Rob Donkin is 5 4 up over Clint Ianson. Rob, it's been a long time since he's been in. The winner's enclosure. But perhaps back to his sparkling best. And it would be a very good weekend's work. It's already a very good weekend's work for him, really, getting uh, getting to the quarters. It's been a little while since Rob's gone very deep in a tournament. One more score to tell you about. You see there in the top left of your screen, Wayne Fryer just racking up the balls against Lindsay Davis. That is in the IPA UK Amateur Championships semi-final. The winner of that game will be playing South Africa's Wayne Parker. I can tell you that Wayne Fryer is leading that game by two frames to nil. I think that might be 2-1 because I believe Lindsay had just finished off that frame when we were looking at the table. Or perhaps has forgotten to update the tablet. Or maybe I'm seeing things. Who knows? Liam Dunster to break in frame 9. Red. 
just nipping into that right centre pocket once again. Liam Dunster hasn't quite got the breakdown to a fine art, but he's probably come as close as anyone. And well, this is role reversal because in the previous frame, Corey Reese had a set of reds that was near enough unmissable. Liam Dunster is, I suspect, about to return the favour. The only real thing he's got to guard against is that red on the right hand side, but that does pass that yellow. So as long as he gets nicely in behind that with a, an angle just to screw back two or three inches. A little bit like that. Screw back two or three inches. He should be nicely on the red to the bottom left. With an angle to come back up table and mop up the rest of them. Possibly not quite a full pocket for this shot, but certainly three quarters of one. Possibly wouldn't have minded coming a foot further up the table. Now I'm going to have to. the red in the bulk area first, come back down the table with some left hand side. Not the greatest of angles that. I thought he might have tried to, to hold for the right centre to just drop it in. But there are plenty of ways to go around this. He could go around the black and take it to one of the left side pockets, to potentially stun past it and back off the cushion. Don't really foresee any issues. There you go, the stun off the side cushion it is. Real precise work, considering how close that cue ball was travelling to the centre pocket. A fraction lower on the cue ball than that could have found its way in, but it didn't. And now, <laughs> as the referee's head pops in the way of the camera, but we do just about see the black drop in. Liam Dunster leads once again. It's 5-4 to the Duster. It's just interesting, every time, every single time Corey's got back into this match, Liam Dunst has come up with a big break and a big break finish. And as we edge closer to the winning line, those break dishes become more and more precious. We are still yet to see a dry break in this match. Nine frames in a row so far where a ball has gone down. Very good match, a very high standard. Oh, cue ball. It's the first time in this match Corey Reese hasn't got that cue ball tracking where he wants it. Just a fraction off of perfect. But the split's pretty perfect and that's going to hurt him even more. Salt in the wound for Corey Reese as he watches Liam Dumpster approach 
another easy finish. Reds or yellows doesn't really matter because of the free shot. Obviously the if you did want yellows, the yellow further most towards the bottom of the table is moving, but he's got a shot to do that. If he wants reds, maybe he could develop the one on the side rail. There's options are plenty here for the Scotsman. Oh, I suspect Corey will just slink back to his seat and sit and watch as Liam gets himself to within one frame of victory. Interesting shot there from Liam. He did, did a similar thing earlier in the match after Corey Reese went in off and left an open table. He, uh, he essentially opened both colour sets. Gave himself the choice of either, really. It is going to be the yellows. Marginally easier, thanks to that red on the right-hand side, probably. little flick there from Liam again just keeping his options open just opened up that pocket in case he needs it for the yellow in the middle of the table later on in the finish he really is making this game look easy at the moment Spotted something there on the cloth. Doesn't want anything to impact this cue ball. He's just left himself the absolute perfect angle here. Got to punch this one in. Probably enough to comfortably come back past the yellow, but oh, it's slowed down a little bit. This is a bit thinner than Liam Dunster would have liked. And that cue ball is. Oh, it's travelling very close to that red. It's welded on that side cushion. So, possibly trusting to luck a little bit. And he doesn't want to catch that yellow, uh, that red rather on the right-hand side. Well, actually, he caught it quite thin. The cue ball caught the middle jaw. You could argue that's a stroke of fortune for Liam Dunster. A, to not go in off. And B, to have a shot on the black. But it's not the easiest shot. I don't think that black goes up past the red to the top right. So it might be a thin clip back into the middle. You can see from that camera angle, it definitely doesn't. Middle it is. And in it drops. And a hand of apology goes up at the end of the frame from Liam Dunster. I suspect for the second last shot. As Corey Reese nips off once again for a comfort break. Oh, 
just while he uh, sorts whatever needs sorting out. We do have the UK Ladies Cup going on as well. You saw the, the Ladies Championship earlier. It's uh, essentially a plate event. Kelly Egan through to the final and Michelle Brown and Deb Birchall are fighting it out to join her in that. In the amateur, it's still going on. That semi-final between Lindsay Davis and Wayne Fryer. That is currently 2-1 to Wayne. Could have an all-Wayne final in that with South African world trickshot champion, Wayne Parker, awaiting whoever wins that semi-final in the amateur final and in the remaining open matches told you earlier that Mark Boyle had made it through with a 7-3 victory over Scott Pope well no one else is quite into the semi-finals yet but there are three players who are one frame away one of them is Liam Dunster and the other two are facing off against each other Rob Donkin and Clint Ianson are in a final frame decider that match the very top left of your screen you can just see the red and white shirt there of Rob so Rob's at the table it looks from here from this very limited vantage point that I have because I have the same view as you viewers at home. Like it's quite a congested looking table, but Rob is a very aggressive player. If he sees a finish, he will take it on. There is one more match going on to tell you about as well. The, the last quarter final in this event. John Herridge trails Evan Parry Williams by five frames to one at the moment see that game is the uh, on the table just behind Corey Reese there as the two gladiators return to the arena for what could potentially be the final frame Liam Dunster to break, leading by six frames to four. Still not a dry break in the match yet. The only failed break, if you like, was Corey Reese's previous one where he was screwed almost straight in off. He was kicked in off, but uh, Keeble was certainly tracking that way anyway. Ball. Uh, second ball down rather into the into the right centre pocket Liam Dunst has got that part of the break again but not for the first time in the match it's a messy table this is one of the messiest of the whole lot difficult to see a clearance from here especially as Liam has a three frame advantage in this match he might feel that it's just worth winding Corey up and letting him go and seeing if he makes life easier for Liam Corey now staring down the barrel in this one with Liam just needing the one more frame The young Welshman not going to be drawn into a firefight just yet. Mm. A 
that's a lovely cue from being able to dump stuff. Really well controlled shot because not only has he got a good white, he's also he's, he's managed to open up the yellows without leaving Corey a yellow to go at. He managed to open up the reds as well near enough. Corey trying to put Liam straight back in the same position and has done a very good job in doing so. Once again, hasn't left anything on. And Liam kind of running out of balls to to do that with. Is he just trying to stun on top of that yellow hit there? He is. Corey really has run out of balls to to wedge up behind in that part of the table. If anything now, the way that that shot's come out from Liam, probably the red to favour. He probably needs to stop Liam getting on a red. Oh, two and one. Tied the whole frame up once again, that shot. Could be a long frame, this one. players just looking for the way they can stop the other at the moment. Liam once again baiting Corey has left him a red uh, left him a yellow on. There is surely no advantage in taking it. You see those two yellows above the cue ball there. They're in all sorts of trouble. Interesting that Corey's used his extension on this shot. It suggests to me he's uh, he's looking at something aggressive. I wonder if the red to the left of the cue ball goes up to the top left. Looks like it does. It's a big shot but if he makes it, the Reds are favourite at the moment. Mm, the pot's there, but a little angry swipe of the cue from Corey Reese. He's overhit that cue ball by two or three inches. If he could get to the bottom of the cue ball here and it was almost on top of the yellow, he'd be very happy. But now he's bridging over the yellow. To pop this one into the right centre. Which made it missable. It also meant it was much more difficult to get on that red. I think he wanted to get into it and break that out. He didn't push the boat out completely there though, Corey. He made sure that Liam's yellows on this right hand side were still safe, so... Liam's got things to think about now. three remaining quarterfinals are now potentially down to their last frame. Evan Parry Williams has extended his lead over John Herridge. He leads by six frames to one. It's remarkable to have a well three amateurs made the quarterfinals but there will definitely be one in the semis and that that doesn't happen very often on the IPA Tour. We talk about the strength and depth of the amateurs a lot, but to be honest, you don't see that many go deep in the Open. So it's, uh, it's quite refreshing to see a new name amongst the last four. And it looks like it's going to be Evan Parry Williams, but it could be John Herridge still. Oh, 
Oh, Reese goes for a slightly outrageous double. <laughs> he hasn't got it, but actually, that's probably a better result because I don't see how Corey was finishing those three reds in one visit. However, he has just made another problem for Liam. is well in control of this race. I do feel like Corey Reese at some point is going to have to go for broke. Liam on the other hand, pa patience of a saint. He'd play this frame for an hour if he needed to. Liam's just really itching to find a way to develop those two yellows on the right hand side in such a way where it's not going to leave Corey anything to go at. And now that Liam's just given himself a bit of added insurance by covering that red that Corey's just pointed his cue out there. I was going to say it might be time to do that soon for Liam, but it looks like Corey's going to get that red back out to, to scupper Liam's plans. Well, that's a bold move and an excellent shot from Corey Reese. Now, he can clip that red into the centre, and the cue ball is travelling towards that other red. He also has the red over the top left as a bit of insurance. So is it possible that Corey Reese has outfoxed Liam Dunster for the second time in this match? It'll depend on how this shot comes out. That will do nicely. Bit of a cut back here for Corey, but nothing he can't handle. this cue ball to slow up and it has so Corey Reese has hung in there superbly in this frame I think you could regard this frame as a steal from the Welshman because it looked at one stage like Corey had him beaten all ends up he will be going one further frame at least in this match because Corey Reese pulls the score back to 6 5. Superb from the Welshman. Outthought Liam Dunster in that one. And we must have another semi finalist ready because I can see Rob Donkin in the top left of your screen with his coat on. So. The fact that he's got his coat on doesn't bode particularly well for his chances, I wouldn't have thought, but I will just double check the scores. Uh, well, <laughs> it hasn't updated yet, so I will let you know as soon as I know which of Rob and Clint will be going through to play Mark Boyle in the semi final. Looks like that match will be featured on the stream. That may well be our next match. I suspect it depends whether the amateur final is ready or not. Um, but that one is three all between Wayne Fryer and Linz Davis, so fair bit of run time in that one yet. That's 
Liam Dunkster. Takes his extension after that break from Corey Reese. Another foul off the break from the Welshman. The last time that happened, Liam Dunkster capitalised. If it happens this time, then it will be the last time because Liam Dunkster will be through to yet another semi final. His second of the weekend, of course. Have, uh, well, it is confirmed that Evan Parry Williams is through to the semi final. Uh, beat John Herridge by seven frames to one. A superb run for the Welshman, including victories over David Admiral, Matty Rowland, Dan Davy. Oh, he beat Dan Davy 7 0 in the second round earlier this morning. Astonishing victory. Sorry if you're watching, Dan. So yeah, he's uh, he certainly caused some ripples in the uh, tournament today. He's the biggest one yet to come. And he conquer Liam Dunster. Providing, of course, that Liam finishes the job here against Corey. balls away from the semi-finals this would represent an excellent weekend's work for Liam Dunster still do have the prospect of an old Scottish final and that would be two all Scottish finals this weekend as Mark Boyle is through to the semis and one more decent positional shot probably just flick off the right hand side of the red if you can little bit like that and Liam Dunster well that is game over Corey Reese can hold his head high he played his part in a very good match but in the end he had no answer to the Scotsman Corey can start the long drive home to Wales Liam Dunster will have to hang around quite a bit longer he faces Evan Parry Williams in the semi final. Uh, but before he faces Evan Par Parry Williams in the semi final, he will have to have a quick chat with Kevin Barton. So we'll hand over to the studio. Thanks, Dan, uh, and I'm here with Liam um, in the chair again after another victory. 
Um, tell us your thoughts on that match, Liam. Uh, usual script, 30 seconds is too short. <laughs> um, nah, it was a good match. Um, a few mistakes for us both. Uh, I mean, it was a great, great finish he took out uh, when I was 6 4 up. I was pretty pleased with my safety shot. I just tried to sort of cover his red for going up the cushion. I didn't even look at it. Obviously, he's, he's dropped in off the, the ball in the middle and then just flicked it enough so it, the red sort of still stays near the middle bag and put that and kick out his bad ball, etc. Good finish. Um, yeah, I, I felt actually felt good throughout the entire match, yeah. Um, always great tussles with you and Corey. There's um, a lot of history starting to develop between you two, you know, Champions Cup and now here and other matches as well. So. Yeah, I'm sure if uh, if that match could have resulted in a draw, it would have been one. So yeah. yeah. Another final, uh, no, semi-final, sorry. Semi-final. Um, you'd be playing Evan Parry-Williams, who you may or may not know. Do you know anything about him? No. <laughs> So he's uh, obviously one of the amateur players who's had a storming run and uh, got through to the semi-finals, which he'll be playing on one of the um, outer tables um, in, in the next few minutes. Tell us your thoughts on that one. I, I, I don't even know who it is, so that's, that's not a good thing, not a bad thing. Um, obviously, he's, he's, he's done well to, to get this far, um, unless it's his first tour. I, I don't know. Is it his first tour? First year on the tour this yeah. year, yeah. Mm. Um, so I think he's done well in the amateurs as well. Um, well, not as good as this. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's, he's obviously pretty handy if he's getting to the semi-final open too, especially in your uh, first year. Um, so I can't really comment on how, how the game's going to go, etc. I've, I've no idea if he's ultra attacking, snooker player, tactical, slow, fast. I don't know. Well, you soon find out. Anyway, yeah. it won't be long to wait. Anyway, we better not keep here because um, we're, you know you need to get ready for that semi-final. Cheers. Well played, Thanks. and uh, we'll see you later on. So Liam makes his way, 7-5, it sort of felt comfortable but never was because it never will be against Corey. No it won't be, I mean Corey's one of these up and coming players that we've always said about. 6-5 uh, down, Corey would be disappointed to go in off on last break mm. and with uh, these rules, back ball rules and against the number one, the world champion, you expect to be punished and uh, Corey sat in his seat and that was the last shot he played. Yeah I think he went in off twice, off his, off his break did uh, Corey, so twice that I saw. And uh, you just can't afford to do that against someone of Liam's quality and the form that he's in. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, he, he got punished on both occasions. And uh, and if you think if he'd have reversed that, kept the white ball on the table, it could have been a different outcome of the way that the match gone and probably a 7-5 win for Corey Reese. But it's history now and uh, Corey's on his way home. Liam Dunster <laughs> safely in the semi-finals. Yep, Liam. Um, Liam, um, Corey will be uh, you know, the, the key will be in the uh, in the car very shortly, and you can reflect on a yeah, pretty good a good tournament, you know. But um, these guys, they want they want to be in the winner's circle, don't they? Yeah, they do now. Especially Corey, he's got a taste mm. of it after winning that champion, you know, that superb Champions Cup grand final. He wants some more of that. But I think before you come to a tour, if you got to a semi final, you've always bite their hands off if you, you have been offered a semi-final but as you know these players are just hungry for success and uh, and Corey's no different to any of the others. So before we uh, just talk about the semi-final coming up um, just a word on Liam's semi-final against uh, someone who um, maybe only a few people are aware of Evan Parry Williams um, what a fantastic achievement from Evan to, to get to a semi-final of an Open yeah absolutely I mean we had eight amateur players in the last 16 and uh, Evan still flying that flag for the amateur players there's still a possibility an amateur player could win this Open event it's happened before there's no reason why it can't happen again um, but yeah I mean I just watched the, his, his final few balls on the clearances there against John and it was a fantastic clearance it, it just smashed him in like it was over the pockets and it was a brilliant clearance yeah, it was a, a very convincing 7-1 win but when you get to a quarter final of an open event they're not going to be an easy match but he's made it look easy and uh, here he is in a semi-final against the current world champion and IPA's number one player it's going to yeah, be a difficult one well that'll be the biggest challenge that he's ever faced so um, uh, best of luck to Evan and um, no doubt what, uh, the uh, commentators will be updating uh, on the scores on that one throughout this match but this match coming up this is the tie of the semi-final Mark Boyle against Clint Ianson tell us what uh, your thoughts are on this one well the Scottish against the English is, there's going to be so much rivalry in this one at, right from the very off uh, these two have played each other oh, thousands of times and uh, I'm sure they're going to play each other for a lot more times coming this is going to be a fantastic semi-final Clint he was, you know, he won the professional event the last tour Mark Boyle won the open event last tour it's the battle of the champions I know 
someone's got to lose. Someone's not going to be winning the trophy or not going to have a chance of winning the trophy. I know there's still the other semi-final, etc. But this is, this is good enough to beat any final. Yeah, and Mark had a fairly comfortable uh, quarter-final win. But Clint, I just watched the end of his uh, match with Rob Donkin and Rob Donkin was so unlucky uh, putting his last ball and somehow the whites stuck to one of Clint's um, yellows and snooker, snooked him on the black. And, um, you know, um, yeah, I felt sorry for Rob because he was so unlucky because he played an unbelievable positional shot to get on his last ball. But it's Clint who was here. And uh, like you said, they're both coming on the back of success from the last event. And these will be keen to keep that run going. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of respect out there. So don't be uh, don't be surprised if there's a little couple of misses here and there. Well, a bit more safety than normal. But these two are quality players. There's one I cannot wait to watch. Well, I'm not expecting much safety. Uh, I don't know about you, but... Uh, uh, anyway, let's go over to Dan in the comms box. Over to you, Dan. Cheers, Kev. Mark Boyle, Clint Ianson. I was in the commentary box yesterday with Luke Sanges. He tipped Clint to win an event this weekend. We will wait to see if he has proven correct. But up against Mark Boyle. What a battle. Clash of the Titans. just uh, be leaving the commentary box for a moment but I will leave you in the very capable hands of Mr Mark Pickworth and uh, he will be starting off this match between Mark and Clint thanks Dan and, and uh here I am back again in the commentary box. Dashed from the studio. And here we are. What a classic this is going to be. Scotland against England. Mark Boyle against the Clint Ianson. Clint's always very... He's, uh, he's pretty happy so far. Especially with Nottingham Forest getting through to the, for the Premiership. As uh, Kevin said in the studio, Clint Ianson came through a terrific battle against Rob Donkin. And to be honest, Clint Ianson probably should be on his way home now. But he's not. He's playing a semi-final against Mark Boyle. Started off with a cut break there. We might see in this match that Clint, he changes his break throughout. It's not something that you normally see... Uh, professional players do they normally keep with one thing and keep with it oh, if it works it don't matter so Clint elected the red balls this is a tricky one on this left hand cushion he's probably going to be able to either move the red out or, or cut it into the yellow Got a choice of either shot here. He's elected against that. He obviously must be thinking about dropping it into the left centre. Yep. There's no, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Sh I think it's just a shame he's a little bit straight on this one. So, draw it back on and off the cushion. Pace needs to be good. Probably a little bit short of pace, but it looks okay. Tricky little shot. Just dropped in at the far jaw, that's fine. He's held that lovely. So, this is a... Uh, Pretty straight on this one, so he's got a bit more of a, a longer black than he wanted, but should be no problem for Clint Ianson. And he 
There you see it. That's the black down. And the perfect start for Clint Ianson with a break and clearance. Exactly the start what the Englishman wanted. As I said in the studio, both of these picked up the titles in the last tour at Coventry. Clint winning the professional event and then Mark Boyle winning the Opal event. There's Mark there. Not had a shot yet in this semi-final. But Mr. Magic. Absolute gent on and off the table. These two are probably the two most well liked on the tour, to be honest. And probably people shouting at the TV screens now have said that. No, he's not. Yes, he is. <laughs> Always sort of comment on uh, Mark Boyle's break. He uses the, the cut break, but the amount of power he generates in the, into it is incredible. Power has he got a ball? He's dry. So a little bit of a cluster in the top half of the table. Yeah, I'm assuming he's going to take yellows here. With them yellows all together in the top half. I think that makes things a little bit easier. So, looks like he's going to take the one just above the brown spot. Just above the bolt line there. Oh, he's elected for the other one. That's fine. Can into the red, clear it out. Oh, does that yellow go into the top left now? The way he's played that, it definitely does. Don't look like he's got all the pocket. But if this goes, this would be a glorious chance to go 2 0 ahead. Yeah, played that at a lovely pace on and off the cushion. Now, just one final good positional shot here that he needs. Can play this off two cushions, maybe one. There's your two cushions up. Ooh, that got a big, a big bounce. Got a hand pick you in now. Well, again, I don't think it's going to be a problem for Clint. And there you see it, no problem, 2-0. It's going to be Clint to break next. There's Clint, he'd love to get another title under his belt for this season. Had a terrific start already. The man from Nottingham. The man from Scotland, Mark Boyle. Not done a lot wrong yet. One dry break and he's found himself 2 0 down. I'll keep you up to date with the uh, the other semi final store. I don't think they've started yet. Just in your top half of your screen there. You can just see Evan just getting ready now. I'm sure that's going to be kicking off very, very soon. So, Clint, cut break again. 
Got a bit of power on it. And he's bought the ball. Again, a little bit of a cluster in the middle, but he'll be happy with these. These yellows surely should be gone. I've got a feeling he'll probably make light work of these. It's going to go up table to come back down table. It's not a, not really a bad thing. Just keeping it nice and simple. A little bit of awkward queuing here. It looks quite comfortable. And a very well controlled stun shot there. As you can see, Clint has really settled into this match now. So this this cut down the cushion for three nil. This could be an break and clearance. There you see it drop. Three nil. Clint I answer now. What can Mark Boyle do? Well first things first, he's got to get a bit of ball off his bag. Happy with the start, is that it? Oh, we know how good uh, Mark Ball is. Power generated again. But he's, oh, he's just got the yellow in there. Thought that was looking like a dry break again. Yeah, they don't look too easy. Not the yellows, anyway. I suppose here we haven't really got a an opening yellow, so definitely reds. Just use this extension. Oh, he didn't really touch that red. Did he play the cannon? I'm sure he did. Yeah, and I think being three 0 behind. That's ruffled him up a little bit. Well, shouldn't be a problem. And there you see, he's back in prime position now. He now should make easy work of this clearance. These reds are here for the taking to get his first frame on the board.
Uh, and these last three reds and the black just should be a formality now. Don't going to have to do too much with the cue ball. These two do break and pot a ball off it. They clear them up. This is the quality of these two boys. But the way Clint's been breaking, surely it's going to be 4 1. Nope, it's going to be Clint to break next. So, 3-1. This break's been working for Clint. Is that going to continue? Couple of balls out in the pocket, but it's gone dry. It's exactly what Mark Boyle wanted. I think that black just passes the red into the top left. If it does, probably makes these uh, yellows quite easy. He will have a choice of either colour set. Just down to the player's preference. So yellow as it is. Yeah, it's all about that black now. Does it pass? Looking at the overhead shot there, I'd say, yeah, it probably does. Just off the far jaw. Sure we'll find out in three or four shots time. A little bit shorter pace there, Mark. So is he just going to try and nudge this out on the uh, far cushion? Yeah, just pop it out in the open. Played that nice. Remember Mark Boyle, former professional snooker player. So them little cannon shots are very easy for somebody of his uh, skill set. Yeah, just drop that one in. Apparently, this is should be a very easy finish here. Black must go, otherwise he'd have been into it at that uh, opportunity. So 
sort of angle has he got here? Is he okay? It looks a little bit off straight. Can he pinch out? Oh, he was fine. He was fine. And there you see it. That black down. 3-2 now. It's going to be Mark Boyle to break next. exactly what Mark wanted to see a dry break from Clint can Marks continue get with his break potted the ball last time Again, he's got three yellows. Now, will he take these yellows? There's no reason why he shouldn't, but he's just getting to that one on the bottom cushion. Did he leave that for his last ball? Possible. Needs to be careful with this red. If he does clip it, no, he's fine. So that yellow that's just in the middle of the table there, I think it goes in both top corners. So that'll make things a lot easier. So you're going to see him go down now. Put him on the bottom cushion. Playing it with run inside. Don't want to be straight. Looks about perfect there. Yeah, from that angle there, it definitely looks like that yellow passes into the bottom right that's on your screen now, top right on this screen. Oh, he's got a bit more angle than he wanted, just got into that a little bit too much. You have to come on and off this side cushion to get back on this black. Or can he hold it? Yeah, on and off the cushion. Played it perfect. This black then to level this match up at 3-3. Three, three. Here's 3-3. Three, three. We've got a, a game on our hands here. So as you see in our top left of the screen there, that's the amateur semi-final. Wayne Fryer, who's at the table, he's playing Linz Davis. It's currently 6-5 to Wayne Fryer. Race to seven. Looks like Wayne's got a one yellow left. There's Mark, he'd be glad to get back on uh, level terms with Clint. Not had much opportunity in the last couple of frames. That dry break, let Mark in. And punished him. So, as you can see, top left-hand screen again. Wayne Fry, I think he's taking the black on. He is. They're shaking hands. So that means the amateur final is going to be Wayne Fryer against Wayne Parker. So I think that's going to be going off on one of the outer tables. Would have loved to put it on here. 
Obviously, time is really ticking on for us. As time ticks on, Clint pots a ball off his break. Yeah, and on the two occasions that he has potted off his break, he's cleared up. These yellows are here at his mercy. Taking this plant now. Yeah, clever little shot there. He's got this cue ball on a piece of string. It's a great positional play. Needs a little angle on this yellow so we can get back up the table. That's simple black. And there you see it. He's taken the lead again. 4 3. And when Clint does put a ball off the break, they're clearing up. Just as Mark is. So then, Mark's got his break working. Set power again. Is there anything down? No, there's not. Second dry break now of this match for Mark Boyle. And we've split open. Yeah, as it is, this is going to be a tricky little shot in one of the middles. I think you'd like to take the yellow that he's close to now. I think he's just going to get Rick 
to clean this yellow. It's going to be a delicate little shot, this one, this. So uh, Clint's just had the cue ball clean there. He's got a delicate little shot here. And just as Rick was cleaning that cue ball, somebody sneaked back into the comms. <laughs> it's your very favourite commentator, Dan Fairway. Here he is, back in the building. I don't think anyone's ever accused me of being sneaky before. Yeah. There is a couple of doors to this com commentary box. <laughs> It absolutely isn't. There's one door. There's no windows. There but is a very high ceiling. Though. We don't give all the secrets away, Dan. Mm. Anyway, bit as, of, bit as of you're looking so around. Far, isn't it? it has. It's, well, Boyle's had two dry breaks. Clint's had one. And that's how the frames have been won for the opposite player. So is this from a Boyle dry break or is this a... This is a Boyle dry break. Wow. Clint's cleared up on every time he's potted a ball. And same as Boyle. And then every time they've missed, they've cleared up. Been some standard. Been taking on the double here by the looks of things. It's the first ball I've seen miss. <sighs> Just as you walked in. I have seen so many players miss doubles on that short side this weekend. I actually had this conversation with Wade Morley earlier in comms. And um, he was saying... We know that this is a brand new cloth, so we know that this brand new cloth slides. I don't think this cloth is sliding as much as the players are used to. Right. Um, I, I couldn't tell you why, whether it's a slightly different roll of cloth. I know it's the same cloth, but you know whether there's something in the manufacturing or something. But I feel like a lot of players are allowing for the slide on a double, and it's not quite happening. Because that's probably six or seven doubles like that I've seen miss this weekend on the shorter side of the, the double. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, answers on a postcard, really. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we'll ever work it out, Dan. It just might be one of them mysteries. But, yeah, you're right. There's been a lot of uh, them doubles missed near side. But that's the first miss we've seen. These two are human. Barely. Not barely, but yeah. But it's been a very good standard. Definitely worthy of any final. Worthy for sure, but not a final. This is still the semi. Yeah, that over semi final. That had only just kicked off, what, 10 minutes ago? Have a quick look and see what's going on. As Mark Boyle punches that one in, a bit further would have been nice. Still on, but he's um, he's got a fair bit of work to do with the cue ball here, probably. A Fair old whack of bottom left just to bring the cue ball up that left hand side of the table. He would like to finish somewhere sort of halfway down that left hand rail on the bottom half. But somewhere in line with the black spot would be quite nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. But he's enough to play this off like three cushions then. He's just going to drop it across and take it long. Yeah, That's keep it option. simple. Keep it simple. A bit far. Can he just screw past them yellows on the left-hand side and play the black in the right centre? Possibility. Yeah, or maybe not. That shot might be worth taking on if the black goes to the top right as well. Because then he could potentially screw into that yellow. If, it, if he didn't get past it, he'd still probably have a shot. 
There you go. It's gone past it, like you said, off the cushion. That's a peach. <laughs> it certainly is. I think if you're going to put it anywhere with your hand, yeah, probably be there. Four all. Best of five. Best of five. Well, I had a message off Wade Morley <laughs> a minute ago, actually. He said, uh, I stand by what I said earlier. Clint is going to go on to win this after getting lucky to go through his earlier match, which we commentated on together. What does that Morley know? Mm. He doesn't know a we'll, thing. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. Yeah. He might be a soothsayer. You never know. I don't know why he's trying to predict stuff. <laughs> Does he, who does he think he is? hope he's watching. I hope he is. He'll give you some stick next tour if he gets it right. If we let him come back. <coughs> There's Mark, though. He'll feel a bit better. Maybe it's 3 1 down in this match. And Clint was just break and uh, could have been 4 1, but that dry break let him back in. Got back to 3 all. Clint Great match. Has Clint been cut breaking the whole break? Yep. Mm. Yeah, and I said, and I have warned our audience that he might change. Well, yeah, I, it, again, he's got something his we noticed break earlier, cue, he? he uses his break cue for a front ball break, but he's playing cue for a cut break, so he did change it up earlier, halfway through. I mean, oh. there's only been one break where he's been dry. Yeah, no need to uh, change a winning formula. Let's well, that. he's got a ball off this break, but look at the opening pop. It's going to be a difficult one. It's going to be very difficult. I mean, really, you want to be yellows here, don't you? <laughs> well, they don't look easy. They don't, but the reds are worse. Um, he has got a long yellow to start off with. And if he, cl if he clips that in past the black, he would be breaking out that other yellow as well. Big shot. Crucial stage of this match. And he's gone middle. Yeah, I think he's just trying to keep it simple, but he's still got this problem up here. Yeah, and that's a horrible leave with the cue ball. Whichever yellow he goes for next, he's bridging very awkwardly over that one. You feel he's probably going to just drop the one into the left centre. But this is a tricky little shot. One that he's up to, though. Like it was over the pocket. It was easy. It's a thin cutback, but I do wonder whether it's worth taking that one on. It goes past the black now. Well, he would get into the yellow. I know he's got another opportunity later on, but well, the I think he's got an opportunity into after this. Yeah, I just think the earlier you go into the work, the better. Yeah, but he's guaranteed to be on this one in the bottom right now. So cannon into the red probably leaves the yellow into the where the black black is. That would be ideal, wouldn't it? Yeah, you can full ball into that red and hold for it rather than moving the yellow. It's a big shot. Must get the cannon. He's got the cannon. It's okay. It still passes the black. He's got a long-range, difficult shot now. It's not what he planned, I don't think. I think he did plan just to make sure he hit the red. But cannon into the yellow and the red. Yeah, that, that was the only reason I wondered if he might take that on the shot before, because if he'd taken that sh shot before, he still had a yellow in this half of the table to go at. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a super pop. The way he's cued that. Cued that like a dream. Well, I know he missed that double in the last frame, but Clint Ianson is looking very, very solid here. Yeah, I'm not going to say Wade Maul is right. So well, of course you're not. <laughs> can't be having that. <laughs> well, I can't be having that on, on this stream. Jeez. So, it's black. 5-4 ahead. 5-4 to Clint Ianson. He is two away. Mark Boyle sat grinning in his seat. In that green on green number. Sort of emerald on mint. Is that right? Is it's it? Uh, I, I don't know if it's right, but that's what he's it looks told like you that Wade. Oh no! <laughs> there you go. There he is. It's Mr. interesting Magic. though. You don't often see um, a shirt like that with two versions of the same colour. It's quite an unusual choice. I imagine he's a Celtic fan. 
Yeah, we don't have any uh, I know colour regimes here. We like players to choose their own colours. Shows their character. Actually, of all the shirts in the arena at the moment, I quite like Lingham's the most. I quite like the purple and black. That works for me. Mr. Magic getting down to break. So this cut break, not a power he generates. It's berserk. Wow, oh. what a break that is. Look at that. Glorious. One red, two yellows. It's got to be yellows. Yeah. Just that yellow on this, below this left centre, well, the right centre. Bottom centre is what we're looking at. I think you get right behind that. It's it's actually quite easy to drop it in, but you want to be right behind it. I don't think it's... Um, it's a bit of a small window to get there. Is yeah, that's the problem, but... I do think the camera makes that shot look more difficult than it is. Yeah. That, that little clip into the middle. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. Oh, something's going off in the arena. Clint's laughing. I think there might have been a oh, double beat from Marcus. the shot clock. Oh, a few gremlins in the shot clock. Well, this is an interesting choice. Mark's going red. Oh, and he's missed the skilly. If he got that, I could nice. understand it. Where's this cue ball? That was mighty close. That looked for all the world as if it was heading in for a moment. Is he going to take the red to the right centre to try and dislodge that corner out? I mean, he's perfect on this one in the top left. I think he's got to take that first. Yeah, the thing is, he can play the one top left and stun and give himself roughly the same angle to try the skilly second time round. So I think you're right. You take this one when you're on it this nicely. Yeah. Surprised he's run that through. Well, I think the problem is... If he does go cannoning in into it, what else have you got? So I, I think he's going to be leaving the other ball over the right centre and drift down into that area to play the black into the opposite corner. Yep. So that'll be his last ball, that red to the right of the cue ball there. Look at the, the speed that this table's been playing at. Needs to make sure he gets reasonably straight on that last red. You know, just off straight in the right way, but you don't want to be sort of clipping it in and and having to hold the cue ball up off the bottom cushion. You want to just nicely drift down there off it. Yeah, it just needs to be a little bit off straight. Just like that. Something about there. It looks okay. Yeah, I think, think you can just pinch it. Yeah, the thing is, the, the middle pockets are quite big, really, aren't they? He pots that into the right-hand side of the middle and the left from this angle obviously yeah they're quite big when you're directly behind them Just trying Ooh, to use the side. the side oh maybe he was a bit straight this is very tough now I feel he got a little bit more stun on that more than the follow through didn't get the uh, the reaction he expected but this black mighty thin to level this match up again Another big shot in this match. That's a beauty. That is a glorious shot from Mark Boyle. Under all sorts of pressure. If he missed that, it was almost certainly Clint Ianson's six Mark Boyle four. But as it stands, it's five apiece. We head into now a best of three. Yeah, it's hotting up here. Here with Bradford. Getting right down to the business end now. Only three frames so far played in the other semi final as well. So Liam Dunster is leading Evan Parry Williams by two frames to one. You can actually see that just if you're eagle eyed on the scorecard in the middle of your screen that Liam Dunster's have wandered in front of. Yeah, on that iPad there, do you see it? broke this last time he'd love another one he'd love another two because then it doesn't matter what Mark Boyle does Clint is <laughs> in the driving seat at the moment he is all he's at the table all that could change with this break this has been working for him Ooh, it looked like he pulled out of that oh, the black's oh. not in and nothing's out nothing else is 
he didn't go through that. No, the he worm. just looked like he pulled out of it last minute. The worm has turned here as well because, okay, I know that black's over the pocket you would want to use, but yellows are a lovely chance. Reds aren't that bad either. No, he's going to have options of either colour set. I, f I feel that he, he's going to probably take reds just because of them yellows in the top half of the table, but there's yellows there to get on each of them. So there's arguments for both colour sets here. Yeah, reds it is. Look at this for a positional shot. A bit under. A little bit under. You'll be really critical, Dan, you are. I'm horrible, man. You are. The worst commentators I know. <laughs> <laughs> so critical. Oh, I feel that he's played a great shot there. Probably overdone this one a bit. Yeah, I would argue that's because. Because the of the shot. The you, yeah, because, yeah. Okay. All right, Dan, point taken. Um, on to the next one. They're still on, the Reds. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he is, he's chasing this finish now a little bit. The, the red to the left of the black spot there. Now, it doesn't go bottom right, so he's got to come... Is he going to go round the angles now? Try and get on that again. He is. Oh, that little flick on the yellow is not helpful. Or has it slowed it down? It might well have done. Yeah, he's on it. He's on it. I think, if anything, it probably slowed it down. Yeah, it took it out of its direction, but it definitely slowed it down a touch. It, it was important he was on that now, though, because failing to get on that a couple of shots ago, he left that red quite isolated in that bottom half of the table. That's it, it, this isn't perfect. He, he hasn't come quite far enough on this. He can see that one to the left centre, but the cue ball's running away from the angle he'd want because he'd like to finish with the cue ball just about in the sort of bottom half of the table with the next shot. That's why he's taking the one on the rail now. It in and, and this is fine now, isn't it? Because you can just stun him to that yellow to hold. It's been a good finish, this, but it's not the route that he would have planned initially, I don't think. Yeah, he's fine now. This is going to be the first time Mark Boyle is going to be in the lead. Simple black to go one frame away from getting into his back-to-back -back open finals. Yeah, one frame away, Mark Boyle with the break, with his hammer blow cut break. Is there going to be another twist? He's already had two dry breaks. Can, there be, can he get another one? You wouldn't have said it was likely, would you, to be honest? The way he hits those, it's he doesn't get many dry breaks. It's one of Mark Boyle's real strengths in his game. Liam Dunster has extended his lead in the other semi. Now leads Evan Parry-Williams by three frames to one. Liam's at the table now as well. Boyle breaking for the last time in this match. Whatever happens, will it be the last break of the match? Oh, I think it might be, you know. Glorious chance on yellows. No developing to do. Just got to get round them nicely. 
Probably a bit like an angle on this first yellow, but just screw it back into the red. He's going to have to take the one over the corner pocket next. As long as he just brings the cue ball nicely off the cushion, back up the table. Anywhere with an angle on his next yellow, just like that. I think uh, Clint Ironson may well be fearing the worst at this stage. Both these players have played their part in an absorbing encounter. Hardly a miss between the two of them. Well, 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 what has Mark Boyle done there? Clint Ionson's BPM may have just gone up a notch. Mark still is on this yellow. They will go to the right centre. It's extremely tough. I don't think he's... Uh, Close enough in that I think he's got too much angle to be able to see the pocket when he's taking the shot. So it's a blind pocket. Yeah, certainly a blind pocket. These are very missable. And it hasn't even caught the near jaw. Clint Ianson lives to fight another day. And now it is him who comes to the table with an enormous chance. Clint goes favourite again. He is, of course, breaking in the last. So my co-commentator, Mark Blickworth, asked, is there another twist in the tale? Well, there could well be. I think it's fair to say that Mark will kick himself if he doesn't go on to win this game, because he had he had it wrapped up. He Clint was dead and buried. This game was over in my mind. I'm sure it was in Clint's as well. two reds and the black still to go perfectly positioned the stun up table huge margin for error with this shot but as you would expect he has finished plumb in the middle of it a straight black takes us to a deciding frame it's six all Don't care how much pressure was on Clint Ianson. He was never missing those reds. But I have to say, I would have said the same about Mark Boyle. I wouldn't have thought there was any way that that clearance could go wrong on yellows. But it has. It's evaded him. Is Clint Ianson going to continue to trust his playing cue on the break? Is he going to continue with that cut break? Certainly looks like it. Towel in hand. Making sure that that cue slides smoothly through his hands. The customary handshake and a smile from both players. Lovely to see. Before we see the concluding frame of this epic semi-final. Oh my word, there are balls flying in 
all over the place. And the reds, the reds are beautiful. As long as he can see enough of that red up to the top left from our overhead view to pot it, and I am 99% sure that he can. Then this is Clint Ianson's chance. He surely will not get another one if he doesn't take these out. obviously very confident that that red does go comfortably past that bottom left pocket because if he wasn't the obvious choice was to take it first so that it wouldn't have been a foul had he just grazed the yellow unless of course he can't see enough of it at all and he plays into it which he has like a dream I don't think I don't think he was trying to get it on the way back. He would have been very pleased to have seen that cue ball spin off the cushion. And he's just about nudged it far enough. Surely, surely this is over now. This is Clint Hansen's victory lap. Two balls away from securing a place in the UK Open final. There's one. And number two will shortly follow a superb performance from Clint Hansen. Has hardly put a foot wrong in this match. Mark Boyle hardly put a foot wrong either. But in the crucial previous frame, he ran out of position. And since then, Clint Ianson never looked back. The handshakes between the pair and our referee, Rick Lloyd. Clint Ianson moves one step closer to that trophy. Just to the left of him. As the two exchange some words about the match. Terrific from the both of them. just being asked by head referee Scott McMillan, senior referee rather, to uh, head over to the interview area. So we'll uh, give him a chance to get mic'd up as Rick cleans the table. Just I believe the score is 4-1 in the other semi-final now. So we'll just double check that. It is in fact 5-2 to Liam Dunster. So he's moving very close to joining Clint Ianson in the final. Talking of Clint, let's have a few words from him with Kev Barton. It's the red. Thanks a lot, Dan. And I'm here with our first finalist, uh, Clint Ianson. Clint, I spoke to you earlier and um, you said the wheels fell off a little bit midway through the match. Well, the wheels were definitely back on there. Yeah, I put, I put the wheels back on. Um, yeah, I played really well. Mark played really well as well. He was just a <laughs> He's one of them games... He probably didn't really deserve a loser, but someone's got to lose, and 
Thankfully, it was Morgan, not me. Yeah, I mean, you both played your part in a, in a fantastic match, and that doesn't always happen, does it? Sometimes, you know, one, one person can sometimes run away with it, but for both players to be firing on all cylinders, just a great spectacle and great advert for the game. Yeah, we both we both played really well. Um, I think we, we made one mistake each. Um, I missed a double, and Mark made the mistake. Well, he was a bit unlucky, really, because the white slid off the cushion, left him right behind his other yellow, but... Yeah, it was it was a good game to be involved with. So, what do you think? Um, what was your, your, the difference between this match and your previous match? Were you, was it the focus? So you just got you just got going, or what? Yeah, what was I think it, what, what I think the change? yeah, I think focus because obviously Forrest was playing in the playoffs, so I was kind of trying to think about that, and yeah, that was going on. That was in my mind, but obviously, luckily, Forrest won. So I think that's probably gave me a little bit of confidence then winning because it's put me in obviously in a great mood. So hopefully, I can uh, I can win the final and it'll be a great weekend so I, I'm not sure the score on the other semi-final but obviously Liam's in it and he's, he's a heavy favourite I think he is ahead if it is to be Liam we've been here before quite recently um, the, the last event in fact um, a, it'd be a, a great end for you to if you can beat him and just start to narrow that gap on him and is your quest for that number one spot obviously. yeah that's it obviously playing Liam if I beat Liam then like you said it's he gets me one step close to that number one spot obviously it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough game. Obviously, he's, he's classy. He don't really make mistakes. He's well, he's, he's probably the best player at the minute. But yeah, I've, I feel confident, after, especially after that performance. So if I can play like that, then I think I win. So. And if you do play Liam, you can obviously take the confidence from beating him in that final um, in, into that as well. Yeah, I don't think that'll come into it too much. But like I said, obviously I played pretty good in that semi-final, so that'll give me a lot of confidence going into the final. Cool. Well, uh, well done, Clint. Uh, I know you said you're uh, a bit peckish, so you, you, might, <laughs> you might have a chance to uh, grab yourself a bag of crisps or something. Yeah. And um, we'll see you in the final. Well Perfect. played. Cheers. Well, Clint Ayanson, the momentum just keeps going. Yeah, it does. Um, you know, credit to Mark Ball, though. What an incredible standard it was in that mm. semi final. I did say to the players in form at the moment have a lot of respect for each other but they just went pound for pound they're like two massive boxers they really did they, they just threw a punch at each other every time incredible standard brilliant to watch yeah no no one was taking a back step at all in that match really it no. was just you're fighting fire with fire and as you you know you said earlier you know these players here at the IPA they just want titles they're, they're not happy with a semi-final they want to go on and pick up that trophy mm. it's going to be a, a very interesting final and if it is Liam in the final against Clint I mean what a match they put on uh, back in Coventry uh, seven or eight weeks ago it's probably just going to be the same again yeah it was I mean that was another epic clash and that I mean Clint got the, the better of him didn't he just and uh, yeah, I mean, Liam's 5-2 up currently against Devon, so it is looking like a Liam and Clint final, and uh, that's going to be a tremendous one. I mean, he's still Liam, he's still not over the line yet. Evan is, is a good enough player to get back at him, but 5-2 against Liam, don't see, you don't normally see him lose many matches from 5-2 ahead. No, no, he's certainly a big favourite there, but just a word about Evan, what a performance to get to a semi-final of, of an Open with this field. Yeah, absolutely, and remember, the, you know, Liam doesn't come into this till the 1-2-8. Evan's been playing in the yeah. prelims with it with a, a bit of much of it. It's quite a, a brutal, like sudden death group stages. It, it, it's horrible in there. I remember the years that I used to play in there. It, it's brutal, and uh, it, you're going to have to play like four or five matches, sometimes six matches in there before you even get to the one to eight. And he's had a terrific tournament, one that he needs to be very proud of. He certainly has. Uh, and just a word about the amateur final. Unfortunately, we're not going to have the time to show that one, and uh, which is a real shame. But uh, you know, time constraints and the production crew have got to hit the road. And but what we are going to do, we are going to be recording that, and uh, we will have that up on our YouTube channel uh, this week. Um, and just a word on the final between two Waynes, Wayne Parker against Wayne Fryer. We've got Wayne Parker, who's made the trip from South Africa for this event. He's come all the way, however many thousands of miles that is. So certainly been worth the trip. And Wayne Fryer, one of the legends from probably before before you were born, Mark. I mean, he's, um, not before you were born, but uh, before he started playing, you know, 20, 30 years ago, he was in his prime. He's uh, had a go at the IPA. And look what's happened. He's in the final. Yeah, I mean, we'll talk about Wayne Parker first. I mean, he's, he's from <coughs> South Africa. He was messaging me back in November. He wanted to come to the World Championships. He had everything all planned and that. 
and he just he ran into some visa problems unfortunately couldn't make the trip to Bradford here it, where it was anyway uh, due to uh, some delays in the visa passport department but anyway he said look I want to I want to still come I'm going to come I'm going to come to the one in May and here he is he's in the in the amateur final he's played some terrific players he's played some terrific stuff and deserves to be in the final and then you've got Wayne Fryer and like you say he's, he's probably been back in your years <laughs> you've known him from I don't know not a little boy but you know some years ago and uh, I mean I don't know him from that regime because he, he played on it was it the 3PO or a little yeah, bit like that yeah. he yeah. was London based and played a lot of tournaments around there and stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. so I didn't really know the 3PO sort of players etc but th- there was obviously the Rob Ross McInnes, the Pat O'Kanes, the Wayne Friars, and mm. there's many more to name, no doubt. And uh, and here he is, back on the IPA tour, and he's producing some great stuff. Had a great one in in the Open as well. Just lost mm. out in the by, by that very odd frame to Evan, and uh, he's in the amateur final. Yeah, certainly. As so said, that's going to be going ahead uh, in the next few minutes, but uh, we will be recording that. Um, but the final coming up um, probably in about 15 minutes. So we're going to take a very short break and um, give the camera crew a time to get a cup of tea and a packet of crisps and a, maybe a few hobnobs. And uh, we'll join you again in about 15 minutes.
A very warm welcome back to the Cedarcourt Hotel here in Bradford for the last match to conclude a fantastic three days here at the UK Championships. I'm here with my colleague Mark Pickworth. Uh, Mark, before we talk about the final, uh, let's just sum up what uh, a fantastic three days we've had here. Yeah, you certainly have and uh, I know I've worked here for the first day. I think the whole team has done an incredible job with uh, the new TV company on board. They've been absolutely tremendous throughout. Everybody, part of the IPA team, have done a terrific job. Even the players, you know, they've all enjoyed it. Everyone you talk to, they've, they've really loved it. They've loved the setup. We've got a bit of a different setup around here, it's one that we're not used to. Different arena. There's lots of new things happening here at the IPA, and, uh, and it's got to be a big well done for everyone. Big pat on the back. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly been a, a big team effort, and um, we're going to conclude tonight with an absolutely mouth-watering final. The top two players in the world just define the seedings, seeds one and two, Liam Dunster, Clint Ianson in the final of the Open. doesn't get much better than that. No, it doesn't, and uh, there's, there's obviously a reason for that, and here they are, battling it out for a trophy. Clint got the, uh, the better of Liam last time round, and uh, Liam, he's going to be wanting a little bit of revenge. He's just weathering now, he can produce it on this table. He's not had the, the best results on here, he's already lost in one. Can he, can he come back and beat Clint in this one? It's, it's going to be a big old match for him. Yeah, I mean, it's an it's a incredible achievement from Liam, and really justifying why he's so far ahead in the rankings, reaching both finals this weekend. Yeah, he's accumulated probably another 40, 50 points and uh, that gap seems to be getting a lot bigger than uh, they just keep the chasing pack behind him. Clint can uh, obviously close the gap a little bit if he does take this title. He's playing some really good stuff, Clint. This is going to be some match. Yeah, and we saw Clint uh, absolutely up his game and up his levels in that uh, semi-final victory against Mark Boyle and he's going to need to maintain that level if he's going to dethrone the champion. Yeah, absolutely, definitely that. He's got to maintain that level. It was a terrific stand there against Mark Boyle. We just, and everyone knows how good Mark is and uh, you know, I, th I always see on social comments about I can't believe that the last 16 matches Liam Dunster against Mark Boyle. It's because it's the number one seed against the number 16 seed. That's how tough it is in the IPA. And uh, Clint, he had to be on his game to beat Mark Ball. Mm. And you saw that, what he's capable of, even under pressure, he looked like he was going to lose that match. And the next minute, it's twist again. And that's why we love this sport so much. Yeah, absolutely. That was an incredible performance there from Clint. And um, do you think that final defeat that uh, Liam suffered at the hands of Clint, is, is that going to be on his mind at all? He, he'll say not. But I guarantee it's somewhere in there. He's going to want to get it out there quickly and try and bury the hatchet and uh, get the win under his belt. I cannot wait. Yeah, and just a word about the amateur final that's uh, commencing on one of the uh, on the second table. Uh, we are going to we have got a camera on that table. We are going to be um, going to that match as and when we can um, at any in intervals during this final. Yeah, I mean, between that Wayne Park and Wayne Fire, that's going to be a terrific amateur final. I mean, that could be one, part of the, a pro final at some stage or other. Two incredible players, and uh, when we can get over to that, all depends on how this match goes. This is our priority tonight, <coughs> and um, but that's going to be an incredible final as well. We'll keep you right up to date, trust me. I'm going to be in the comms. I'll be keeping a close eye on both matches. Yeah, and what odds of two Waynes getting to a final? I don't think we've ever had two Waynes get to a final, have we? No, there's been quite a lot of Waynes in, in the tournament this weekend. I've been getting confused with all of them and that, so uh, we're just sort of learning uh, about the Waynes, and uh, there they are, both in the final. Yeah, we're just, we're just waiting a couple of minutes till, oh no, Clint's, Clint's back. I, I thought he'd um, he just nipped out. But yeah, Clint is back. I think that's enough from us, then, Mark. I think it's time to get over to Dan Fairway in the commentary box to get the action underway. Over to you, Dan. The players are ready. The arena is ready. The referee is ready. And the trophy is shining just behind the table there. That's what these two are playing for in this final. The IPA UK Open Championship of 2022. As has been previously mentioned, up there in the top left of your screen, the UK Amateur Championship trophy shining bright as well between the two Waynes. Wayne Fryer currently at the table. And Wayne Parker of South Africa. Trick shot world champion sat patiently waiting for his 
visit to the table. And we will, as has been said, keep you up to date with that throughout, perhaps even cutting to it if we get the chance during this open final. But for now, we're going to focus on the action in the arena. Liam Dunster taking on Clint Hyanson. IPA number one taking on IPA number two. In terms of blackball pool, it does not get any better than this. As is customary, it's a race to seven between these two. Liam, we've seen a lot of Liam this weekend on the stream table. He is looking for his first title since becoming world champion to cement his place at the top of the rankings but to be honest his place at the top of the rankings is very well cemented as it is however it's not the best of starts that break is very dry and uh, even though it's quite a congested split into Anson, straight into it. With a glorious opportunity on yellows. And just as Liam dealt that blow to the pack, into the commentary box walked Mark Pickworth. Evening, Mark. Yeah, I was just waiting for Liam to break, and then I sneaked in, just as you did previously. But yeah, these uh, these balls are opening up very nicely now. Perfect start, what Clint wanted. Is it worth me putting you on the spot now and asking who you think is going to win? <sighs> well, Clint beat him last time. Uh, it's got to be cards, some maybe? revenge, I think. It's got to be. But if one thing that uh, if Liam wants some revenge, he's going to have to get his break working. Well, it's your prediction up against Wade Morley's prediction from earlier on. Well, he's gone for Clint, so of course I'm not going to go for the same as Wade Morley, am I? In fairness to Clint, he predicted. <laughs> in fairness to Wade, rather, he predicted Clint all the way back at the last 16 stage. So it's, um, it would be quite an impressive prediction if it came right. Yeah, a lucky one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, both of these players. <laughs> Horrible man. Yeah, <laughs> it's because it's Wade. If anybody else, but Wade. Nicest anyway. man on the tour, according to our fellow professionals. No, I never said that. No, you're one of the few that didn't. Yeah, exactly. I know. <laughs> He's horrible to me, that's why. Yeah, well, I'm sure you bring it upon yourself. Anyway, <laughs> moving <laughs> swiftly back to the yeah, action. Very swiftly. Clint Ianson is making light work of that dry break from Liam Dunster. Yeah, both of these players very much in form. Yeah, I mean, Liam, despite, you know, I mean, he's he's now had three bites at the cherry of winning a winning an event after his world title win. He's come very close, but he hasn't got over the line yet. Do you think that's been weighing on his mind at all? You know, especially after losing a final last night. Yeah, and uh, it's probably the style he lost in that final. Uh, Roy Mosfer, and he's, he, he was just on fire. He annihilated him, yeah. I, I, I don't think I've ever seen anyone do that to, to the uh, Ross was unplayable. Yep. Yeah, that's the best way to describe it, definitely. But Clint's another one of them players. He can also be unplayable. Little hand of apology from Clint there, because I don't think he was playing for that black in the middle. I think he was playing for it into the corner and he overran it by a good foot um, actually ended up finishing quite nicely on it but I think that explains the hand of apology and Clint will be breaking in frame number two so a chance for an early lead for Clint Ianson and a reverse dish to start us off the perfect start for the Englishman the man from Nottingham I don't know if he's... Is he, he is from Nottingham, isn't yeah. he? Is yeah. Is he a Nottingham Forest fan? Yeah, he was watching it earlier on. Well, he's, he's I was shouting Huddersfield. Go on, Huddersfield. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm a Huddersfield fan, but there was a few Knotts boys watching it, weren't there? So. This would be a, 
this would cap a very, very good day for Clint then. Not yeah, even for his return to the Premier League and an open title as well. Yeah, he's playing some good stuff. But he's done the, the same as Liam. He's not caught the cut break at all. No, he hasn't. And is Liam going to return the favour here with a reverse clearance of his own? Well, it's not as it's not as easy a finish. Um, Clint, you know, Clint was left not quite drop-ins, a little bit of precision required, but nothing too difficult. Liam has more work to do here. He's got that red isolated in the bulk area, right tight on the cushion. And I was going to say, he's got that red touching the yellow in the middle of the table, but a superb opening shot dislodges that one. So they are all there for him now. Yeah, they are. And, uh, I'm not sure if he's nudged this red enough out for it to go into the bottom right. I think he, he, it might go. Looks like it does from this angle. I think that flies, big man. Yep, nudging into that black, keeping his options open. He's got a choice of reds now. I expect him to go up to the top of the table. Yeah, Thank I expect it. him to take the left centre and go go up. D just wants to avoid that yellow on the cushion. Yeah, and he's also going to need to make sure he gets an angle. Does not want to be straight on that one on the top. No, I, there's an argument for both. There's an argument to take the one up to the top right and go that way. But um, I think I like that red that's more in the middle of the table as your link ball to come back down. Yeah. It's personal preference. Yeah, he's got. I mean, he's Going got a lovely way. angle on, on the left centre, but he's straight on this one as well. He's yeah. got options. But you don't have to do a lot now with this red. Just make sure the pot, the position's natural. Again, just wants to come far enough up the table that he's not too thin on that red to the centre. Of course, he doesn't have to take that next. He could leave himself in the window to go down to the bottom left as well. Yeah, I think it's one of them where you don't want to be too short, too long. It needs to be pretty much on point. That's absolutely ideal because he's actually landed on both of... Well, he's landed on all three of his reds. <laughs> um, so he can pick and choose now. Hasn't committed himself to anything. No, but I think he played for the one in the middle. Yeah. He can just drop this in off the far jaw. Maintaining that great position. This is what it's Liam does. Is that great position? It's not bad, but he's bridging right over that yellow now. Yeah, he is. Um, but as long as he gets on and off the cushion, he'll be able to do like things with the white ball. Yeah, just doesn't want to dig into it too deep and get too close to those other yellows. He's just going to drop this in, I think, dead weight. Oh, what a shot. He is going to return the favour, Mark. He will, he will be doing if he uh, pops this final red and the black. Ah, they're gone. They're gone. They're gone. That's it. He's already written it Liam, down. Liam Dunstan doesn't miss these. 1-1. One, one. Yeah, it's in my notepad. It's 1-1. One, one. There's a big area, though, for this to get on the black. Oh, enormous. It's over, wasn't it? By what? Two he's foot? overrun that a long way. He's still going to get the black, but he has overrun that a long way. Yeah, that's a, that's a little bit careless from Liam. He knows how quick this table is. But then I think that goes back to leaving himself hampered the shot before he... He couldn't bring the cue ball back because it was a little bit dangerous and he would have liked a bit less angle on that last red. Yep, absolutely. I mean, where you said that was the careless shot, I think the one previous was probably the careless one. Yeah, possibly even two previous. Yeah, sorry, the one. Yeah, yeah. You knew what I meant. I did, but I like to get one over on you every now and then. Liam Dunster levels the scores. It's one apiece. And that will settle the nerves of the Scotsman. Clint will be disappointed with that break because he caught those really badly. Well, dry breaker, Pete. Mm. 
yeah, neither of them, neither of them caught that. I, I don't know exactly what went wrong with the brakes, but they didn't. I don't think they caught the second ball down cleanly. Um, and that's why you saw that very clustered split from both of them. Yeah. Providing Liam goes for his normal break here. Just keep an eye on that second red down, the one that's touching the black on the right-hand side. He has got that, I would say, 70-80% of the time. That ball, the ball he's hitting, has flown into the right centre pocket. Not quite this time. Off the jaw. But plenty of other balls have made their exit from the table. has the chance to take the lead it's a tricky chance that cluster around the black spot that's not easy that, that yellow in there is wedged right in there also the yellow in bulk very difficult but then the three reds in that cluster they're, they're not easy either because there's, there's some working out to be done here yeah there is but is this one of them tables where a couple of shots and they all open up. He'll be looking now, working it out. He's took his extension, which is the normal routine of Liam Dunster. I, I think if he just drops this in, then he'll have the red into the left centre, I think. Oh, he's going round. No, that's fine. Quite like this way, because I think the, uh, the red are left of the black spot. I think it passes into the bottom left. Yeah, possibly, and of course the difficult red in bulk. He's got the perfect red on that right side cushion to drop onto that. So it is all about these three reds. Is his angle good here? Doesn't look amazing to me. Oh no, it's spot on. Of course it is, it's Liam Dunster. He's just got a magnificent touch. His yeah. positional play is it's superb. Because this again is spot on to just drift the cue ball through into that yellow above the red. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely the ideal shot. I mean, it looks a little bit straight on the angle we're, we're, we're looking at here. Yeah, he doesn't fancy that. Ooh, now then. Now then. I don't think that's gone well because I don't see how Liam Dunster can clip that red in the middle and get anywhere close to nice on what I would expect to be his penultimate red on the right hand side yeah I mean if he clips his into the left centre cannon into the yellow he's Mr Red though I mean, he's definitely got the cannon he didn't want it I mean he's got away with that a bit hasn't he like that's he's had a real result there he's left Clint no easy pot He's put his red over the centre pocket. I mean, it, the cue ball, yeah, like I say, he didn't want that cannon, clearly, because he's nowhere near where he wanted to be with the cue ball. No, he's not. I think Clint needs, needs to get him in this bottom left-hand corner somewhere. I think he might be trying to get him in behind that one on the bottom rail. He doesn't have to make sure. Anywhere on this bottom left-hand corner, it's a bit more percentage. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, I don't think he had the shot to get behind any of them yellows. No, I wasn't sure. The one he hit, I wasn't sure if he caught it three-quarter ball on the other side, if it might just drift through there. But um, either way, played the low-risk shot. Yeah, I think Still it's got effective. The reward. That is a long way off. Um I'm not entirely sure what Liam's thought process was there. Cover the pocket, I think, was oh, one I'd of them. Cover the pocket, yeah, but... Um, 
I mean, even if he'd have left the white on the jaw, yeah, he was leaving clean I mean, in the that, balls. That flew in the centre pocket. And just manoeuvring that red out of the way. Well, Getting on with it. Clint won't mind. Slightly surprised that the pace couldn't play that. I thought he might have been able to skill those two reds and um, which would have just given him a bit of insurance later on in the frame should something go wrong. Because that way Liam wouldn't have one sitting over the pocket, but not that you expect anything to go wrong from here. Yeah, I see what you're saying. You probably should have bought them both in one shot. It's just if you do that, in my opinion. I, I suppose some people might say it's negative, but the thing is you can't account for, for example, a kick. Something going wrong that's out of your control. And these things do happen. I just think it's best to guard against that sometimes. Yep, I agree. But it won't matter. It'll be forgotten about if he clears these all. Oh, there's no reason why he can't. No reason in the slightest now. Two rollings. Clint Ianson punishes the mistake from Liam Dunster and leads by two frames to one. Two one, Clint Ianson. Like I said, there is another final going off at the moment. That's currently two one to Wayne Fryer. Top left hand corner of your screen. And you see Wayne Park has just come to the table, the South African. A few people watching that. Yeah, I believe he's live streaming that back home, isn't he, to, to South Africa? Yeah, he is. I think it's on his Facebook page, James, I think. <laughs> well, we can talk a bit more about it now because there's a re rack. So <laughs> yeah, that's going to take our referee, Darren Mayman. And, and here this, you go. Yeah, this is actually live footage of that amateur final. So a miss there from Wayne Parker and Wayne Fryer will get an opportunity to come to the table. Scott McMillan there refereeing that one. I haven't seen him on the stream table this weekend, Pickers. He's doing the shot clock on the stream table. I think that's all he's allowed to do now. That's oh, all okay. he's authorised to do. Yeah. Not really, Scott. We're but only kidding. So he's got business. such a good team behind him. He does. He certainly does. Spoilt, really. Oh. True professionals. That was a glorious pop from Wayne Fryer. Looks like he was in control of that. Frame in the amateur final, but back to this one. Clint Ianson. Can he keep the black out this time? No, he can't. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Two in a row. So, looks like we're going back to the Wayne Way <laughs> match. Here we are. Wayne Fry at the table. As you say, looking in great position now. These Reds. That's to take a 3 1 lead. You see, careful. Look, watching from the. Uh, Watching on the sidelines. Yeah, on the sidelines, yeah. Not doing a lot. Uh, Wayne Fryer at the moment leading by two frames to one in this one. Um, well, the reds look nice, but I don't know if that black goes, so I think there's still some work to be done in this frame. However, Clint Ianson's ready to go again. I've never seen three in a row, Mark, have you? Nope. You've called it. Can't we do it again, surely? No way. Oh, <laughs> it was on its the way, white. but so's the cue ball. Disaster for Clint Ianson. Oh, I bet he wishes it gone in for a third time now. That black was definitely tracking to that left centre again. Oh, 
It's a loose white. I mean, well, you've got a bit to feel sorry for, I mean, massively unfortunately. It's kicked all yeah. over the place. Got some power in that, he did. Again, I've said it before and I'll say it again. It was Mark Boyle esque. Yep. Now, Liam Dunster, I suspect, will be eyeing up these yellows with great interest. Just that, that red over on the left hand side is causing a problem. And even though he has got a free shot to develop, I'm not sure it's worth taking too much time and attention over that. I think he's trying to free up that bottom right pocket for a run at the yellows. Yep, I do. And I think he's just going to try and drop that in, the, in that gap. Take the one over the bottom left, possibly. Don't want that yellow ball in. That's exactly what he played, but is he on this yellow? Yeah, I, th I think so. Bit of a reach. Going to be awkward queuing. The thing is, because he's put that yellow over the bottom right, he, he'd only got to drop it in. There's, there's no need to do anything. Well, perhaps he's not on that yellow. He's used his extension. That clock is ticking down. It certainly looks worse from this angle, doesn't it? When you look on the overhead, you think, yeah, that's got a chance. But um, yeah. he's got a second bite at the cherry now. He could stun up on this one in the middle, get right behind it, and then it definitely will go. Has just lost his insurance policy having to take that one over the pocket, though. Yeah, he has, but... It's it's so important to make sure you get the right position. That's better. I should say you'd like to probably take the one directly above it next. Really, I love options, but you'd like to clear it out of the way soon. Yeah, I think he's got to be a little bit careful here. I don't think he wants to leave an angle on that one to the bottom right, where he's going to be going into the black and red. Certainly not into the red. The clock, though, ticking down. Oh, that's nice. Now to draw back out onto the, the second of those two yellows that were sort of covering each other. These are the shots of uh, these delicate shots. This is what Liam's really good at. Oh, what's he done there? You think he's swinging his cue like he's got a kick? I think you've put the mockers on him there, Pix. Well. Now, this is this is real trouble because if he can he cut this back? I mean, it, awkward as anything in terms of bridging. Look at this. Sat on the table. This is about as far as he can reach. Hasn't got enough on that. In fact, well, I was going to say it's made a big pocket, but I think it's just rolled far enough that it isn't. So Clint Ianson will get the chance in this frame, but it is not an easy one. But these are these are the frames when champions are made. These are the opportunities that the half chances, even the quarter chances that you might get in a final, that if you take them, these can be the difference between winning and losing. Yeah, oh, yeah. stop it. Great double. Going to yeah. need another great shot. Is that a big pocket for the red mark? It's so tight. Yeah, when we look at the other camera, I just don't think it's possible. You see I that one there? It just looks tight. Down. Is he going at it? He's got to try something. Oh, what a shot that is. Clint Ianson, take a bow. That's two doubles of the highest quality. Yep, yeah, he certainly is, but he's not out of the woods yet. This black, how is he going to get on it? Well, I think if he just draws this back roughly to where it is. That's not bad. Go up the other side of the table, but... I think he'd like to have a bit of a deeper angle so he could come off, like, Two cushions to a side. He's going to leave himself a double. Uh, the he's way he's smashed in two doubles already. He'd just be happy to leave himself a shot, won't he? 
And he's happy to go and have a chance here. Oh, this is spot on, isn't it? Is it going to keep running? I mean, it's, a th it's an awkward one into the centre, but you back him to make it from this angle. Yeah, especially the way that he's uh, got them doubles. The style he's got a bit of it as well. So, this black. Open up a two-frame lead. Got it. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant from Clint Ianson. That is a stunning clearance, and that has hurt Liam Dunster. He is sat in his chair. He, perhaps there was a kick there. It certainly wasn't the greatest positional shot in the world from Liam, but, well, I mean... You can't take anything away from Clint there. That's an unbelievable finish from where he was ended up. Yeah, it certainly was. And as you said, Dan, there the clearance you've got to get if you want to pick up these silverware. And that would, as you said, that's going to hurt Liam. Because you saw his, his pose, had his arms folded. And, uh, well, still Liam to break next. Yeah, got to compose himself for the break now. Get that out of his mind. And move on. He says as if that's an easy thing to do. Took a bit of pace off that one. It's worked. But there is a problem. Bottom cushion. Red and yellow together. Yeah, it is, and it's a probably he didn't want. Not being 3 1 behind this race to seven. If he wanted to go yellows, I don't think he can here. I think he's forced into reds. Can't see an opening yellow on. There is the, the red over on the left hand side at the bottom of the table is a nice ball to be able to break that out but you're only really probably pushing the yellow over the pocket which isn't a good idea yeah and even if it rattled out it could even like cover the one that's on the right and cushion it's got a lot of danger about it so he's been forced into the reds here going to take this one down the right hand side next can he can he manufacture an angle to try and get into that awkward red with his next shot this looks very straight just covering the pocket isn't he has he reached yeah, yeah he has. good shot I did wonder if he was going to do that because <laughs> Like I said, I don't see how he could possibly have got that red out easily. Yeah, he's got a bit of an insurance policy at the moment. Any problem, though? Them two yellows in that bottom part of the table there. They're prime for breaking that out. Oh, Clint, he ain't got a pot on here. Well, I think he's going to have angle, a chance he? here. Yeah, he's left him an angle on that one to the middle. A little bit careless there. He should have definitely made sure that yellow got over to that far cushion. Yeah. Give him a little bit of insurance. He's got a free shot of this now, Liam has. Well, electing against it. Or is he playing the big pocket and going into it? Like the shot. Oh, missed it's it. Mr. Pop. with you I like the shot but you've got to make it and Clint really is one tricky pot away from being well on his way to another finish because he's just got to drop this in the middle and then they're all there for him again but this this is acute this angle 
Well, it just, it just looked like it was over the pocket. Yeah. He is playing well. Dunst to last night was involved in a final against an opponent who took every chance and just ran away with it. Is it deja vu for the Scotsman? Well, the way this is starting off, this is looking exactly like that. that. Thing is, if this does go 4 1. It's a long way back for Liam, but it's hardly beyond him. I think he'd like to be a bit further off the cushion taking this one. I've just got to guard against running your cue ball too close down beyond that black. Cutting it fine. But when you're curing like a dream. Oh, he's played it perfect, but um, yeah, a couple more inches and he's in a little bit of trouble there. And he is certainly curing the ball very nicely indeed, Clint Hansen. He takes a 4 1 lead. Everything that Liam Dunster has tried has turned against him. And Clint Ianson has gleefully mopped up in his wake. It's Liam Dunster well under the cosh for the second final in two nights. Clint Ianson breaking next as well. He could be almost out of sight before Liam sees the table again. Liam's been so solid all weekend, Mark, but in the two finals that I've watched, his level's just dropped that little bit. Yeah, I can't work out why. It's, um, it's obviously producing some brilliant stuff to get to the final. You don't get to finals easily. No, you certainly don't. Clint, well, the black's out. Then there's a yellow in. I'm talking about yellows. <laughs> yeah. Look at them. Briefly, briefly looked as if that break was going dry. A, a huge cluster of balls migrated towards that left centre pocket and none of them went in. And then you just saw that yellow come out of nowhere and pop itself into the right. And yeah, now, it was like he chucked it on the table. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> yeah maybe he just flicked one out of his pocket. Literally well. the ace in his sleeve. <laughs> what a chance this is for, for Clint to... Get a 5-1 lead. 5-1's a really long way back for Liam. Yeah, it is in a race to seven. And these yellows, the ploppings. Delicate touch with that one. Yeah, it's 4-1 in this match. Yeah. It's also 4-1 to Wayne Fryer in the amateur final against Wayne Parker. I feel a little bit for Wayne Parker in that one because he's probably gotten quite cold in terms of his pool playing. W Wayne Fryer's had a very good run in both the Open and the amateur. And um, that run has meant that Wayne Parker won his amateur semi-final a long time ago whereas Wayne Fry has been continually playing must yeah. be difficult to get back into the swing of things at that point yeah I mean it can also work against you because you can burn yourself out etc but Wayne Fry is a former professional player one man who isn't burning himself out in any way shape or form at the moment is Clint Ianson he's burning he's red hot and he's 5-1 up 
Liam Dunster just doesn't have an answer at the moment. <laughs> it's actually, um, you don't often see Liam's body language the way it is at the moment, that sort of side lean. You often see him sat up straight, cue ready, you know, almost um, statue-like. At the moment, he just doesn't quite look himself. No, he doesn't. And that over match is also 5 1. Yep, there's a. Couple of uh, seriously good performances going on at the moment from both Wayne Fryer and Clint Ianson. the Scottish and the South Africans that are suffering right now. But there's there's a way back for both of them into these games. And for Liam Dunster it starts right here. This break needs to be good. Oh. <laughs> That's come to his saviour. And well, these yellows. Yellows are glorious. Yeah. So if anything that can go wrong is just position on the black. It just well, there's plenty of room. Yeah, just anywhere, no anywhere on the right hand side of the table. I mean, yeah, there's there's a chasm between the the red and the black in terms of Liam Dunster positioning. Having said that, he ran out of position earlier on. I've seen him run out. I've seen a few people run out of position in unexpected ways on this stream table. Um, thinking back to Mark Boyle in the semi final. That big, big slide off the cushion he had. Yeah, and I feel he's probably under hit, under hit this one a little bit. I think he played the one on the uh, middle of the table. Oh, he ain't got the right angle on that now. Yeah. Have to take the tougher pot of, of the two. Not necessarily a bad thing because it's still quite a nice route, isn't it? It's, um, you know, you can take this on and then take the two at the bottom. That one in the middle of the table that you said is actually an ideal ball to land on the black, so. It's a nice, confident pot there from Liam. And this really now should be dot to dot. Can't see any problems here. And it should be 5-2. level for Liam Dunster not to get these ones are we still at 5-1 in the other final picks yeah I think uh, Wayne Fryer just nipped out for a comfort break yeah still 5-1 and this one is looking like 5-2 yeah. the first break dish of the match for Liam Dunster follows a first break dish of the match for Clint Ianson. Back to within three frames. Very important frame for Liam Dunster to win that one. But he may have absolutely no control over what happens next. Clint's break's been actually not that great in this match. He's had one dry, one foul. And a couple of good ones as we watch what is happening on, well, I don't know if it is table number two, but it might as well be now because we've only got two games going on. The other table, we'll call it. <laughs> I believe that is Wayne Fryer at the table. And it looks like he is mopping up once again. Remember, that's going to be a race to seven. There's a cue ball. Oh, it's fine. I'm sure he's on the black now. It's assuming there's no other yellows. I haven't seen the entire table yet. But, um, yeah, I think he's uh, got the black. Look, look like the black. 
is the remaining ball. So this for 6-1 as well. Oh, he's rattled it as we cut seamlessly back to Clint Ianson. So, is that going to be a 5-2 as well? No, you never know. Well, we'll keep you up to date. Oh, Clint. Oh, he's made a ball. Oh, they're, they're sitters, aren't they? Well, this is looking like 6-2. I mean, there's no, there's no colour sets blocking each other. No, I, I think he'd love to be on a yellow, but I'm not convinced that he is. Um, I think he's going to be forced into red. So he's very straight on this first one. Yeah, reds aren't a bad option because the, uh, the red that's in the middle of the table, sure, that passes into that bottom corner. And then from there, he's got a choice of reds. Yeah, I, th I think this red is pretty much the only ball that's on nicely for Clint. Um, which, in a way, is a shame for him because it's the only red in the same half of the table as the black. So it would have been the nicest ball to get on the black. That little flick, is that going to cost him? No. Nope. No, we'll take that nicely on the next red. Yeah, well, he pinched the pocket on purpose uh, just to make the, the angle so he could get down the table. And now he's at his mercy. Another little flick there. Yeah, I don't know if that was quite as helpful, that one. But he can take the tough ball now if he wanted. Yeah, the problem is he's queuing over that red. So he can't stroke it in in the way that he'd like to be able to and bring the cue ball, cue ball back. So he's got to punch it a little bit because he's bridging over. And I have seen those pop back out this weekend. Um, so he's going across the table first. Yeah, he was under some shot clock pressure there. Now, next time. I think he does want to be back on the rail because he wants he wants a bit of angle, doesn't he? If he's going to have to take that one in the centre last, which I think he is, he needs to have an angle to get across the table with that. Oh, he's going to nudge into it, is he? No, he's going to have an angle. This is tricky. Yeah, it is because he, he can't. I don't think he can get a particularly nice angle on that last red. Maybe it's a little bit easier than the camera looks and he can stun it across, but um, from that angle, it, it looks quite tight. Yeah, it's just got to drop that in. It looks like he's straight on this. I think that's as good as it could have got. I think he, I think he can get across a little bit. I just don't know if he can get fa across far enough. Obviously, the black doesn't go to the right centre. Well, I think he's oh, stunning he's it. Stun across. How about that? Oh, perfection again. One way traffic. There is nothing you can do when your opponent is in this sort of form. And Liam Dunster is finding that out for the second night on the trot. Clint Ianson moves one away from yet another IPA title. And Liam Dunster, he's just pushed him one step closer to another runner up spot in 2022. So, first things first, Liam. He's got to clear off this break. Or at least have control in this frame. So Wayne Parker did clear up in that last frame. That's 5-2. But I did see that Wayne Fryer was at the table. So can this uh, match this score again and go 6-2? So I'll keep you up to date as long as I can. He doesn't want this dry. He does not want it dry. Unfortunately for Liam and all of his fans, it is. So what has Clint got to start with here? Not a great deal. Possibly the uh, the yellow, yellow rather nearest the bulk line off the red into the left centre. Right, he's seen something else. Oh, he's oh. 
That's an expansive shot. Very you extravagant, afford, that one. Though. You can afford to be expansive when you're 6-2 up. Yeah, you can, and, and then it comes out like that. Yeah, this is the thing. I, I mean, he's played that to pop the red, and to a certain extent, I suspect, see what happens with the rest of the reds. As it turns out, it's not a perfect result, but it's not a bad one. Nicely on to his most difficult red. That one's stuck on the bottom cushion. And a very nice angle as well to just drift up table and take the other one in the bottom half. Yeah, and all we see in the closing moments now of this match. Amateur final, 6-2. Six 6-2 two. Six two to Wayne Fryer. So, Wayne Fryer, one frame away, just as Clint is. Yep. Clint Hansen. He's four balls away now. Can taste that trophy. He is that close. one of four angle looks good bridging over the yellow cushions there just to raise his hand which is uh, helpful no heroics here just drop the red in Bounce that cue ball off the cushion a few inches. Take it into the left centre. He's landed right behind it. Clint Ianson won't have missed many of these in his long career. Once again, he makes no mistake. A fist pump from Clint Ianson. A fist bump between the two players and the referee. Clint Ianson is your IPA UK Open champion for 2022. It's been a wonderful weekend of pool. And Clint has finished it in some style. There is the trophy that he will be lifting in a few short moments time. A word for his opponent, Liam Dunster, made a couple of slight errors, but realistically, Clint was absolutely unbeatable today. Kevin Barton is ready in the arena, so we'll hand over to him for the trophy presentation. Thanks, Dan, and uh, welcome down to the arena for the uh, final presentation after a mammoth weekend and a fantastic final there from two of the greatest players in the world right now, both ranked one and two. Unfortunately, there has to be a loser, and that is Liam Dunster. <laughs> Liam, two finals, two defeats um, at the start of the week. Would you have taken that? Absolutely, yeah. I'd have taken the quarterfinals, to be honest. I have not played at all. Um, so I was fully expecting to get beat early, so I'll take that, absolutely, yeah. And um, does it give you confidence knowing that, you know, obviously you've got your new business and uh, the practice time has been limited, you know, going into the rest of the season that uh, more silverware is just around the corner? Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, I think this is probably, it will be the only sort of IP or two that I've, I've come into not playing at all. I obviously put a lot of time in most days, um, but like you say, new business and stuff, but um, that's just... Um, temporary the, the amount of time that I've been putting into it obviously once once you get everything set up it's uh, it's pretty routine and you don't need to put as much time into it so um, yeah um, I'll definitely put into practice for next time. Uh, and what about Clint um, pretty flawless? Yeah absolutely flawless yeah um, even if I was even if I was playing good I'd, I'd struggle to beat that as well he was breaking so good and 
I was breaking poor and yeah, he, everything he just kept on mopping up. Well, Liam, uh, commiserations, but congratulations on the get great weekend. Liam Dunster, our runner up. <laughs> but our winner, he's the UK champion, it's Clint Ianson. Clint, it's the end of a long, long three days. Tell us your thoughts at this moment. Yeah, it's been a long weekend, to be fair. I'm just over the moon. Um, one of the best weekends of my life, Forest, um, go, going up to the Premier League. So, And obviously winning this, unbelievable. Bit of a double celebration tonight, then? Well, I'll be sleeping well, that is for certain. I'm knackered. <laughs> um, probably celebrate next weekend. Um, and the quality of the pl you play, in particular the semi-final or the final, I mean, that, you, that just must give you so much confidence going into the rest of the season. Yeah, well, I've, I've been putting a lot of work in, so... Um, it's like last last year, I didn't really <coughs> practice too much, to be fair. But this this year, I've, I put I've put in a lot of hours in. So, them kind of performances are well. That's how I'm playing, like when I'm practicing. So, it wasn't so many years ago that you won the three tournaments on the trot um, and the IPA circuit uh, back when you were pro pro number one. Um, obviously, Coventry um, six weeks away, um, looking to uh, match that. Yeah, do one better four this time, hopefully. <laughs> Right, OK, we'll hold you to it. Uh, Clint, uh, Matt's going to present you the trophy and it gives us great pleasure to announce you as the UK champion. Congratulations. So, Mark, we'll just um, wrap things up here. Um, a fantastic way to end what's been a, a superb event. Yeah, certainly, and it's been a magnificent weekend. Both of these players are credit to him. Liam, you know, making two finals, that's an incredible achievement in his own. But what we've seen from Clint Ianson in both the semi-final and final has been magnificent as well. Superb performance and a deserved winner and uh, unlucky to Liam, but sooner or later Liam's going to be picking up one of them trophies, or well, I'm going to be handing him one of them trophies. And then it's going to be any time soon, really is. Uh, just a, w a word about our other winners, uh, Ross Fernie and Harriet Haynes. Yeah, Ross Fernie played tremendous, unfortunately, against Liam as well. And uh, Liam's run into two pretty much machines, if you want to call them that. Harriet, one-sided affair again against Danielle. I'm sure sooner or later we're going to see Danielle pick up a title. But while Harriet's playing like that, it's going to be a really tough one for her to do that. But there is another final going off in the uh, the background there. I think it's currently gone 6-3. Wayne Fryer is one frame away from picking up a first uh, IPA amateur title. It's been an incredible weekend, Kevin, and it's going to be a credit to everybody. Yeah, well, we all need to lie down now after uh, a phenomenal three days of, of action. We hope you've enjoyed the coverage. We'll be back again in July for the uh, International Open, I think, uh, from Coventry. Uh, well, I'd like to thank um, our new streaming partners, High Viz Media. They have worked their absolute socks off uh, over these three, four days, uh, done a fantastic job, and uh, congratulations to them and all the staff and officials here at the IPA who have put on a fantastic performance. Uh, so that just leaves us to say, hope you've enjoyed this coverage, and we'll see you in July. Thanks for watching. Good night. <laughs>